A very good morning and welcome to Bristol uh, Seat Unique Stadium, the venue for Gloucestershire versus Yorkshire in Division 2 of the County Championship. And I'm so pleased to say we've got cricket, not just because Gloucestershire's first game was completely washed out due to the weather, but this fixture, likewise last year, and in fairly similar circumstances actually, in that it was the outfield that was the problem rather than the actual weather itself. I seem to remember we turned up on the first morning last year and it was not too dissimilar to this actually. Hazy sunshine and we couldn't play because the outfield was just too wet but we are playing here. I can tell you that Gloucestershire have won the toss and they've decided to bowl first. We'll try and rattle through the two teams in a moment but my name is Ed Seaborn. Alongside me is Jonathan Doige. We're presenting BBC Radio's Bristol, Gloucestershire and all those Yorkshire stations which I'm not going to list now but <laughs> morning Doige, how are you and um, prospects for Yorkshire in this game? Morning Ed, yeah pretty good thanks and the prospects are, are good I think you'd have to say just by glancing down even the first half of the team sheet before you even get onto the second half Adam Lythe, Finlay Bean, Shan Masood, Joe Root, Harry Brook um, and plenty more quality in addition to that. They said, or Shan Masood said to me in a little video I filmed with him just after the toss, that he would have done the same and fielded first uh, had he had the choice. But um, he's got to back his, his batters and uh, there's some some real quality there. So, yeah, look, it's just great to, to see the sun shining and play starting on time. None of the four days last week started on time. There was no play at all on one of them at uh, Headingley. So great to see cricket breaking out yes. when it should be. I know. it's it's been, it's been so frustrating, that first round, a lot of the pre-season getting rained off as well. But here we go. This is Gloucestershire's first ball of the season. It's Josh Shaw running in to bowl it, and it's an in-swinger to the left-handed Adam Lythe, and Lythe pushes it into the covers for a single. So Yorkshire are underway straight away, the two lefties. At the top of their, in fact, three lefties at the top of their order. Gloucestershire line up thus. Cameron Bancroft and Chris Dent are down to open. We'll see. Uh, Ollie Price at three. Miles Hammond at four. James Bracey. Then Ben Charlesworth's listed at six. So that would be a move down the order for him from last season where he opened. Graham van Buren down at seven. So there's plenty of depth of batting. And then four seamers in De Langer, Actor, Sing Dale and Shaw, who's running in once again over the wicket to bowl to lie. That one comes back sharply, pardon me, to Bean and strikes him on the thigh pad, loops off into the gully, and there is no run. I don't think there was any bat on that, but there was a strangled shout anyway. Yeah, it, uh, it's certainly a bit of swing there for Josh Shaw earlier, formerly of um, our parish, as it were. Yes, Wakefield North. lad. Mm hmm. Son of Chris, of course, who uh, certainly carved out a good career as well with Yorkshire. Shaw is in, bowls. This is played by Bean back towards the bowler, not timed. So three slips in for Gloucestershire. And then, of course, new coach this year with Mark hmm. Lane taking the reins, club legend as he is. That was never going to go down badly, I think that appointment but Dale Benkenstein leaving to take up the head coach position at that other county Lancashire here comes Shaw bowling now and oh he's bowled him what a ball that is it's crept between bat and pad just a shade of in swing and Finlay Bean propped forward and didn't get to it and those red bales that we've got this year that we can actually see a scattered on the floor, and that is just the second duck of Finlay Bean's career. Yorkshire are one for one. Yeah, he'll be I'm clearly very disappointed about that. Um, there was swing, as I said, in that uh, previous delivery, and it was not dissimilar, was it? But he got it absolutely right there. Full credit to uh, Josh Shaw for what he's produced with the ball, and he's found a way through Finlay Bean's defences, uh, which thus far in his career have been superb yeah just uh, shy of a thousand runs last year so although yeah clearly he wouldn't be the headline name of a Shan Masu, Joe Root, Harry Brook he's still yeah. showing himself to be uh, a quality player in uh, the early part of his career so uh, well well Josh Shaw and uh, first blood to the hosts yeah I was looking last night at Bean's career so far 
28 innings, I think it was, and he'd only been out in single figures twice. So if you're doing that as an opener, consistently getting off to starts, I mean, that's usually a, a lot of the issue. And he's been going on as well and getting big scores. But that's a real rarity to see him out that quickly. And it gets Shan Masood in against what appears to be a swinging new ball and a pitch which you'd imagine would contain a bit of moisture, given that I think it was something like 800 millimetres of rain was quoted by the Gloucestershire ground staff that they've had here over the winter. You would expect the ball to do something up front. So despite the fact that there is some sunshine out there, Gloucestershire winning the toss and bowling and getting some rewards straight away. Here comes Shaw bowling now to Shan Masood. It's another in-swinger. But it's a little full this time, Masood, able to dig it out towards Gloucestershire captain Graham van Buren at wide mid-off. Fresh off a contract extension, van Buren, to the end of 2026. So really, he's not going to play for another county. I think we kind of knew that anyway, but great reward for somebody who's been a magnificent servant of Gloucestershire cricket. Shaw bowls, Shan Masood a little tempted by that one, but it was too wide in the end, really fully to draw him into the shot. And a round of applause from the spectators who've made their way in this morning, as that was a very tidy first over, one yeah. for one. Yeah, great start for Josh Shaw, that final ball, the only one I think that didn't swing, whether that was intentional or not, it was started a bit wider, and maybe he did something different, um, could have been seam across. Who knows, but Shamasu did chase a widish one last week and was caught by Peter Hanscom at third slip without scoring in uh, Yorkshire's uh, first innings. So um, maybe he just thought, let's just try him again. Looks to be Ajit Singh Dale to take the new ball from the Ashley Down Road end. And he got four wickets in his first innings in his career against Yorkshire and bowled with pace and certainly he's got plenty of people talking higher up now because apparently we, we only care about pace and he can bowl quick he was clocked at 90 last year here comes uh, Singh Dale and for his first ball of the season to the left-handed Adam Light who punches it back down the pitch no run so three slips and a gully uh, there's a point with hands in pockets at this moment in time. Van Buren has just gone in towards Ajit Singh Dale who might have uh, felt a little bit of a slip there because immediately after that first delivery is bowled sawdust has been called for and uh, then there's a mid wicket and also a long leg who'd be about five metres in from the boundary down to our right. Got a good, uh, good sit in the commentary position here up on the third floor, floor below for the commentary that we didn't do last yes. year. Just kept going on on a morning last year, didn't we? Saying hi, how are you? Oh, good, thanks. Yeah. Which right. races are you I'm off just to pop today? The Taunton yeah. races today. <laughs> There's no cricket. <laughs> <laughs> so lithe weights, and then comes Ajit Singh Dale. It's wide of off stump and maybe a little bit of nip as well. And uh, through to the keeper. There's no run. Car park is more or less full. And, uh, yeah, a good number have turned up this morning. Plenty of them sitting at this pavilion end of the ground, down at ground level. Lovely morning as Ajit Singdale turns again, running towards where we're situated. And it's full, and Lithe has got uh, an outside edge on this, wide of the cordon, and will pick up the first boundary of the day. It was, won't be the most convincing shot Adam Lithe will play if he's out there for any length of time, but he'll uh, take the four. Yeah, I mean, the first delivery seemed to angle, at least angle across Lithe, if not move, but that one, the way that he's been squared up, suggests he was expecting... The ball just to, to hold a bit, and it's just nipped a bit on him. So encouraging signs, even if it does count as four runs to the title. I asked, uh, following yesterday's arrival, and, uh, obviously the lads go out and have a look at the pitch, and then they did the usual couple of hours in the nets. 
um, what the thoughts were on the surface and I think they all thought it looked fine but maybe we'll just play a little bit slow it you know a little bit on the soft side and uh, completely understandable given the sheer amount of rain we've had for some time a ball short of length this time and lines playing from the crease again not quite got the timing there with it he timed some superbly last week can imagine in, in any other match first match of the season somebody gets a hundred in 101 balls or what was it 101 in 100 yeah 101 in 100 balls 17 fours and two sixes I mean we said plenty of uh, good things about uh, Adam Lyth's knock don't get me wrong but then Harry Brook comes in and gets them in 60 odd balls and uh, it, it would have been lead story on another day perhaps as Jeet Singh Dale is in again and Lyth this time choosing to leave one wide of off stump he, he does very often Adam Lythe start the season in great style gets out of the blocks quickly and uh, yeah he looked really ready last week at Headingley it's an impressive ability to be able to do that consistently I think because you know it can't be easy starting you're starting your, your your season off in April having to be ready in March effectively yeah here's Sing Dale again this time down the leg side. It might have caught the hip of Adam Lythe. It's gone for four down beneath our commentary position. Ooh, he signaled dead, dead ball. ball. Do you think he... That's an interesting call, isn't it? It, it? We might have to look at that again. Whether yeah. he was actually trying to get out the way of it in the end, I think would probably be his argument. Like you say, it, I don't think he could claim that he played a... No. I don't know. I don't know if he could claim he played a shot I at didn't. it, but he was trying, sort of trying to get out the way of it in the end, wasn't he? Well, if he was, that's why, presumably, that, that opinion is shared by... Um, umpire Hassan Adnan, who I think is at uh, the Ashley Down Road end. Yeah, that's an interesting call, that, because you don't see that called for a delivery like that very often, do you? Because no. normally there's a flick mm. at it attempted, so there's no question at all. And then are you taking evasive action if you're just yeah. trying to sort of hop inside the line? Does that count as evasive action? Yeah. Already some intrigue, already two overs in. Here's Shaw, running into bowl. And there's again some appreciable in-swing there as he bowls on a good length to Shan Masood. But it's a watchful leave through to James Bracey. Yeah, we, we've only seen it once and we were behind Adam Lyde at the time as well, so not, not able to get a, a front-on view at all um, for radio commentary purposes, that is. I know many of you have been watching the, uh, the pictures but uh, it sort of felt like he was flicking at it, but maybe not. Maybe he was pulling his bat out of the way. Short in bowls, prodded into the offside. This is a quick single. Van Buren doesn't manage to get a handle on the ball. And Lythe was so quick out of the blocks there. I thought possibly Shun was the batter in more danger, but then Van Buren would have had to have thrown across his body. Six for one. Yep, he's, he is quick between the wickets. Is uh, Adam Shun is also quick. Sometimes you do have to scratch your head at the decision making um, on occasions but uh, hopefully no issues in that regard today that was sort of a first run of the Kevin Peterson mould hmm. I would say I'm going to push it into the offside and I'm going to run doesn't you're, matter you're what, going yeah, with me you are, you are running at the non-strikers end you are running to the danger end you're coming through short to lies that's a good delivery that's come back in towards his off stump gasps from behind the stumps as if to suggest that that was just a coat of varnish away I think it was a little bit further away than that but still it's it's caused enough concern for the batters that they are going down for a prod so that probably tells you that it did a bit more than Lyth expected hmm. so there's it at the moment there seems to be enough pace in the pitch and Gloucestershire have got quite a lot of pace in their attack as short bowls, this is attempted to be turned through the leg side, but will only find the hands of square leg. Marchand de Lange and Zaman Akta will be the first change bowlers and uh, certainly don't lose anything in pace when they come on. In fact, Shaw's probably the slowest of the four quicks that Gloucestershire have got. The potential issue comes as 
Shaw's past the umpire and bowls. This is played neatly towards point by Live in defence and no run. The issue may come, as we know with these kookaburras, after the first even, what, 10, 12 overs, something like that. They don't really do a whole lot. So Gloucestershire will, will, I'm sure, hope that the extra pace can still provide something to try and skittle some more wickets in what is an absolutely star-studded top order for Yorkshire. Shaw bowls, played up the pitch, and nicely fielded by Shaw with his left hand and his follow-through to end. Over number three, Yorkshire six for one, with the man out, Finlay Bean, who had one sneak through his defences, was bowled by Josh Shaw without scoring. But but you look at the balance, and it's very much four seamers. You've got potentially an extra seamer if Ben Charlesworth can bowl, but his shoulder's been an issue through his whole career so far, really. You never know quite how many overs you're going to get from him. And then your spin options consist of Captain Van Buren and Ollie Price. Van Buren has, has taken useful wickets, as has Ollie Price, but neither of them would be your kind of primary spin option, as Zafa Gohar would have been, who's missed out from the squad selected. So if Yorkshire can see off this new ball, I'm sure they'll be thinking tire this attack out because you know they're, they're likely to want to bowl in short bursts and then can make some hay later on Ajit Singh Dale to bowl here to Shan Masood who's taken a delivery just a short of length punching back down the pitch no run Finlay Bean is not the only man to have been dismissed around the grounds this morning because Feroz Kushi unfortunately for him of the distinction of being out first ball, the uh, the fourth ball of the match between Essex and Kent at Chelmsford. Essex 10 for 1 there uh, in the third over. That's Division 1, of course. Hampshire 11 without loss. Early doors against uh, Lancashire at Southampton. Nottinghamshire playing Worcestershire at Trent Bridge. The hosts 19 without loss, having chosen to bat as Ajit Singh Dale is in. And uh, Masood tucks it into the leg side, but straight to mid-wicket. No run. 18 without loss for Somerset against uh, Surrey who stuck him in at the Oval and then also in Division 1 at Edgebast and Warwickshire 17 without loss having been put in by Durham there is no play at the moment uh, down in Cardiff mm. so we're quite Derbyshire fortunate really. inspecting at 11 o'clock there we are quite fortunate given its proximity Leicestershire 16 without loss having been put in by Sussex at Grace Road not a bad delivery from Ajit Singh Dale, but not good enough to get Masood to play at it. Through to Bracey. No run. And then uh, also a wicket now has fallen as well at Northampton in this division, of course. Northants 5 for 1, having lost the toss there. And uh, Justin Broad, LBW, for 1 in the second over. That's an early update as uh, Ajit Singh Dale is in. It's wide of off stump and Masood shoulders arms. Should also say this is not a hybrid pitch, this one that they're using. There's talk that the next home match against Middlesex might be played on a hybrid because this is one of the other new things that teams can do this year. I, th I think, is it something like four times they can use it as anyway there's a there's a trial on this year where they can use hybrids and they are thinking of doing it here but this one i believe isn't yes that's in dale again and that's just uh, whipped backward of square leg masood is uh, down the other end and score moving on to seven for one in the fourth over as you heard, the man out, Finley Bean, fourth ball of the match. Josh Shaw getting some purchase on the ball. Might have even been a bit bit of nip back about it again. Only well, seen it as it was live. But it got through Finley Bean's defences. He was out for naught. Lithe on strike, he's on five and just uh, gets one thudding into the thigh pad. Dropping into no man's land on the leg side and Masood is uh, not out on two so the end of the fourth over seven for one early inroads for Gloucestershire Yorkshire well 
given that uh, Shah Massoud wanted to field first, you know, he'll know that it's clearly not going to be easy out there with the bat in the early part of this where the ball is uh, given to doing a bit more and there's definitely been plenty of moisture around. So maybe slow progress, uh, any progress that Yorkshire make in this uh, first hour or so. Yeah, Gloucestershire will certainly hope so. Uh, Accuracy-wise, in terms of their bowling, sure uh, to Masood, and that is let go wide of off. So, yeah, again, that would be another potential concern for Gloucestershire in terms of can their attack keep the boundaries down? Because that is going to be... If, if Adam Lythe gets going, if, oh, if any of this top order get going, then anything offline is going to be punished. We've got slightly shorter boundaries here, especially towards the car park side of the ground. The boundary has been brought in a little bit from where it might be sometimes. Shaw bowls. That's a good looking delivery. It's driven by Shan Masood, but sort of inner half of the bat, really. It was another one that not too dissimilar to the ball that got Finley Bean. He, he got plenty of bat on it, but you can tell that's what Shaw's trying to do. Just swing it back through that gate and play back to the bowler. It's the first time really into the fifth over that anybody's actually tried to play a drive at a ball. There's been a few pushes, but yeah. that's the first time it, they've really got either bat attempted into trying to play a drive. And he does like a drive, does Shun. Not this time, though. Gets in behind it and plays it to mid-off. He averaged about 60 last season for Yorkshire, and he was in and out of the team because of his trips back to Pakistan. Um, so clearly that's not going to help with your fluency, but he sort of built towards the end of the season he came out with a big hundred um, late on when he did look a real class act but he was first to admit that even though he'd averaged 60 he felt like he could have produced more as you do it's a little concerning Shaw is in and bowls head over the ball from Shan Masood and once more it's Van Buren called into action at mid off I think possibly because of how ridiculously prolific he was the previous year was it two double centuries mm. in April mm -hmm. he got the year before for Derbyshire you just kind of expected him to go out and score a hundred every time but it doesn't really work like that it's quite hard despite how easy some of them make it look especially the man batting at, at five today in terms of the championship recently that's short that's why it's clattered for four by Jean Massoud that is absolutely where you cannot bowl to him and four runs through the covers makes it 11 for one he, he does score his runs pretty quickly as well mm. people talk about Joe Root who obviously we're going to see at some point the way that the board's always ticking and I'd say Shan Masood is not dissimilar in, in the sense that yeah you look you glance up and you glance up again a few minutes later and without really noticing him he might not have, not have played a big shot but he's got a few more yeah, I mean, the reason I mentioned Brooke as well is just that it's, it's more in recent memory that he's made championship tons for Joe Root. It's been quite a bit longer. But Root due in next, Brooke at five, and then George Hill and Johnny Tattersall, followed by the more bowling inclined as Shaw bowls to Masu. This has flicked off something down to fine leg, and it's a leg by to end the over 12 for one uh, Yorkshire in the early going Lythe has five Masood has six Jonathan Doidge will be stepping aside and very shortly we'll hear from the third member of our broadcasting trio and uh, it's magnificent to be able to say eventually welcome to Shah Faisal because he was supposed to be with us for four days at Derby, and we turned up every day, not expecting to see any play, and we didn't. Here comes Ajit Singdale bowling. This is down the leg side as Masood tries to turn it away and misses it, and it goes through to the keeper. Very good morning to you, Faisal. It's great to be on air with you at last. Absolutely good morning to you, and good morning all. It's just a brilliant sight altogether, especially if you're coming from Derby where you saw that rain and 
it just kept falling and we couldn't get any play but it's just beautiful here and to see the star started Yorkshire in the middle I mean a lot of the neutrals would have hoped for that and they got their wish Singdale over the wicket bowls this is jabbed at by Shan Masood down into the gully well stopped by Dent who's almost more of a second gully now they had three slips to start with but now it is much more like two slips and two gullies and dents the second of them and good work to prevent runs yeah, they've tinkered with their slip cordon it started off like you said with three slips in a gully and then two slips and two gullies there is a bit of a gap between those two gullies as well mm. but Jeet Singh Dale has really not been consistent with his lengths and lines Runs in past the umpire bowls, and there's a strangled shout for something, which I'm not quite sure why they're so excited there, because unless it was a... I mean, the way that they've reacted, there was a bit of inside edge onto Pat, but I'm not entirely sure whether that would have pitched in line anyway from first look at it. Squeezes out into the onside for no run. Yeah, the angle that he's bowling in from where he's bowling at the crease. I mean, there was very little chance it would have pitched in line. That's what I was saying about Ajit Singh Dale. His lines and lengths haven't been that consistent to challenge Sean Masood or Adam Lythe. Runs in bowls, that's much better. Fuller and targeting maybe just outside off stump, really, but forcing Sean Masood into playing it. And it's well fielded by the bowler. I think his natural movement Sing Dale would tend to be more into the right hander. He's, he's got quite a different action from a lot of bowlers on the circuit. He's, he's kind of a bit sort of skiddy in terms of his pace and he does tend to bowl from kind of wide at the crease and, and really try and sling it in towards the stumps to the right hander. Oh this is nicked and gone! He's got a wicket, has he? No. They, they're saying it's gone off the pad. Apologies. I thought I saw a deviation there. <laughs> there, was a, there was a deviation, but it was clearly just a bit of uh, movement as it passed the bat. I do apologise, but it looked so plain from where I was sitting anyway. But yeah, the, the umpire's saying, I think he's brushed his pad with his bat, and then it's just deviated. Yeah, the celebrations were as if they heard the noise and they all went up. But like you said, the noise came from the bat hitting the pad but a couple of deliveries in good areas and all of a sudden you see that it's not that easy for batters you just got to find that consistency as a bowler you hit the right areas there is a bit of movement he's bringing the ball in and that last one just left Sean Masood off the seam there is a challenge for the batters if you can put it in the right place Singdale bowls played off the back foot through what is a pretty vacant leg side and they put deep square leg back for that delivery. It's allowed Shun a pretty easy single. And I'm not really sure quite why you would change it for that last delivery after you've just <laughs> beaten the bat and beaten it well. 13 for one. Absolutely. And that's the inconsistency I was talking about. It's too early to go to plan B and C when you see there is movement from that fuller length. You've already seen the rewards that Shaw got. He pitched the ball up and got the wicket of Bean. And that's the right kind of area at the moment. Tempt the batters for drive. Even Adam Lyde's got, got a boundary in, in that second over. Where he was trying to play it on the onside. And the length was so full and tempting for the batters that they have to invariably push out at it. And that's the chance where you create as a bowler. First delivery from Shaw. Again, this was a fuller. He's got that inward movement again it was slightly off target and Sean had all the time in the world to let it go but if you look at the way Shaw is bowling at least he his lengths are fuller but he's predominantly moving the ball in which the batters of uh, lights quality and Sean's quality you don't want to be too predictable he turns back again runs away from us full Sean Masood looking in good order despite his duck last week and that would not be a good sign for Gloucestershire no well you know it, I think you've got to just try not to in some ways think too much about the opposition because if you do you're going to see test cricketer test cricketer test cricketer test cricketer <laughs> come one after the other now that they've got the early wicket have been and and you've just got to realize that 
the lengths and the lines that you need to bowl are still the same, regardless of who's at the other end at this point. Shamasud just tears that ball. Nicely fielded by Dent in gully. That was well stopped there. Shan Masood tends to stay inside the line of the ball and creates his own width or room for himself. That's he's developed just in the last couple of years, I think, where it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad ball where Sean can convert it into runs. Like Doji was mentioning, his scoring rates are pretty swift too. Three slips in a gully. Shaw once again runs away. Scramps Sean for that room. Probably realized that he can't give him too much room. Of course, he's somebody we're talking about lies in terms of how he starts a season off. But in some ways, Sean's been so busy over the winter that he's still, you know, he hasn't, hasn't really needed to, to warm up too much and we've been playing PSL and then out in Australia for a, a test series not that long before that next delivery from Shaw once again that inward movement and that length too full and Sean got tempted again got that inside edge towards mid wicket really as a batter when you see that full length it was just drivable length you have to say but that's where Shaw has been really good He's tempting the batters. The batters are pushing out in front, looking to hit that fuller delivery. And he is uh, causing some trouble. Once again, he runs away from us. Ooh. Oh, that one Jack back in off the seam this time. It was slightly back of a length. And Sean really was hurried to get his bat down just in time to play it out onto the offside. That's the end of the over. It's 13 for one. And also quite gratifying, changing tack a little bit, that Gloucestershire have got through seven overs just within the first half hour because the over rate is going to be something which is going to be a little bit of an issue. Obviously, they are behind because it's supposed to have bowled eight by now, but they're not behind by a massive margin. When you've got quick bowlers, then you're, you're going to need to watch that because it's still the same as previous years if you're down one on the over rate then you're going to lose a point and Gloucestershire did a slightly better job of not losing points last year than they did the previous year but it was a bit of a problem here's Singdale running in bowling and looking to turn this one fine as lies but this seems to be quite a running theme at the moment we've seen a lot of attempted brushes off the pad, clips through the onside, and so far, I don't think we've really had proper connection with one of them. Yeah, that line is just cramping the batters up. That That's what he's doing. But I think at this stage of the innings, the batters are more conscious about their fourth off stump, so any time that line comes towards them, they're faulted on. It could be easy runs, deliveries. Singdale in bowls and there's a firm push through the offside. Gloucestershire are asking the question as to whether that's hit some pad first. Hassan Adnan is not in the slightest bit interested. And they've come through for two out towards extra cover. Seven to Lythe. He joins Sean on that number. Good stride in from Lythe, which means that he's settling into the crease. And that stride... Ajit has been pacey this morning. It's just that his control hasn't been there. But that length, the last one, was fuller mm. and just tempted light to come on to that front foot. That is a minor success for the bowler at this stage to just drag the batters out onto their front foot. And Ajit has to do it consistently. Singdale bowls. Left on length as much as anything else that time by Adam Lythe. Nicely judged. There was no way that was going to hit the stumps even if it did come back in towards him yeah. as a batter at this stage you would like that length because it allows you that time and although the hands went up in the air from the slip cordon but that is not going to tempt life and Ajit Singh Dale we'll have to be keeping an eye on him because the way he's running in probably with that older ball as well he will have some role to play like we've yes, discussed definitely reverse swing is something that, that he would would count among his attributes as Lythe plays 
comfortably enough in defence this time to mid off and there's no run Ben Charlesworth at first slip playing a gorgeous cover drive just with his hands they always work well when you're doing that don't they I mean nobody ever mistimes a, a cover drive when you're just doing with the hand signals uh, Bancroft at second slip so he's slotted in there Ollie Price who in general had been Gloucestershire's best slipper is the man at well, they've, they've now narrowed the gap a bit. It was very much a first gully, but now it's more like a fourth slip. Singdale bowls. He's had a bit of a push at that one as lie the way from his body. Almost did too much, actually, that delivery. And through to the keeper. It's interesting also that there is some seam movement as well. We've seen plenty of swing, but that was back of a length, and it did jag away from Lyth, and that he's just pushing out away at it, and lucky he didn't get a touch. So there is something in the pitch. Gloucestershire having won the toss, they would really want to make some inroads early doors because that will push Yorkshire back. Here comes Singdale in bowls. Just squares lithe up a fraction there. He managed to get some wood on it, but that was far from easy to negotiate that delivery from Singdale. That is the end of over number eight. Yorkshire 15 for one, so not quick progress, but so far they're limiting the damage. And as we were talking about, really, if you can get through that new ball spell, especially only having lost one, then, you know, it's going to be go time later on, potentially. And it, I, I will be quite intrigued to see how long these spells are from Gloucestershire's bowlers. Will they say let it rip for four overs or will they try and stretch it out to five six overs for especially the likes of Delanger and Singdale who, who would want to be bowling as quick as they could Shaw with a fresh over straying down the leg side Shan Sud missed out I guess over there because that was a freebie couldn't put bat to ball but yeah and it's also very short for those who don't know the ground, maybe Yorkshire listeners, it is, I mean, you, you can probably even see it if you're watching on the live picture feed, but it flies down towards the flats to the Ashley Down Road end there. It's very difficult to protect that boundary. You, you, you've you got to make sure, really, that you don't drift onto the pads from this pavilion end, especially. Sean, so on to the front foot with the next delivery. And you're talking about Sean's winter. I mean, he was busy but with not a lot of success because Pakistan, although they played well in Australia, couldn't get that victory that has eluded them since 1995 in a yeah. test match. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, you had that, you had New Zealand, who haven't beaten Australia at home since 1993, and coming very close to doing it, only to get done on the last day. It's, it's, it's amazing to think that how long some of these sides have had to wait for victories. There's an interesting story about that as well. I'll come back to it after this delivery. Let's show once again to Sean Masood. That fuller length. That mid-off is pretty straight. So Pakistan, in 1999, Pakistan introduced the Kukhara ball into their domestic cricket in order to do well in Australia. And before that, on the tours in 95, Pakistan was able to win a test match in 1990. They were pretty competitive, came close to winning two test matches. But since that has happened, Pakistan hasn't won a test match. The reference being that we're playing with a Kukabara here with a different mindset, though. I'll come back as jo trying a short delivery. This time, Shan Masood got up on his toes, not from the middle of the bat, and it will just be pulled inside. S three runs to Shan Masood, trying something different. Shaw, who's been bowling predominantly up to the batter, this time tried Shan Masood with a short one. Slight element of surprise. Yes, it was more kind of trampoline bounce, I think, than anything else. And then it rather looped over the offside from Shan Masood. He, he would, I don't know, perhaps he's, he may be thinking, perhaps I should have gone up and over the, the sort of gully region with it. It was safe enough in the end, but it was three rather than the four runs. It certainly looked as if it would be off the bat. Good chase from Miles Hammond to the boundary. The outfield actually doesn't look that slow and it usually is quick here that shows you even there it, it threatened to go for four back to his usual fuller length shot to Adam Lyth 
was on the walk, playing that front foot defensive stroke towards Madoff. A quizzical look from both the batters to the pitch after that shot when Sean, pl- uh, Sean played that shot. And like you rightly explained it, Sean probably was looking to go up and over, but that ball kind of never arrived and it bounced high enough. Sean, being a tall man, was able to control it just enough to get it away from the fielder. Three slips in place. Off the toe end of the bat, it wasn't that short for the cut shot. There was width on offer. It went straight to Gully, and that brings us to the end of the over. 18 for 1, Yorkshire. Yeah, I've been talking about Shun's test series down under. It was, you know, there were some 50s and 60s, weren't there? But you just. I hope he, he probably wouldn't mind me saying, I don't know, but you just, you, you look at him and you think, gosh, that should be somebody averaging at least, at least late 30s in test cricket, and, and it's late 20s at the moment. You watch him in county cricket, and you watch him, or you even you watch him play when he's in full flow at, at test level, and you just think, oh, some of the shots are just out of this world, but then he just have a bit of a lapse and have a flirt at one outside the off stump out of nowhere. Singdale bowls. This is tucked off the hip by Shun down towards Shaw. That fine leg and a single is added. 19 for one. That's a good point you make because Shun has really, like in the last three years, I think, changed his game plan to being really positive, ultra positive, even in first class cricket. I saw him score 192 three years back in Pakistan. Since then, he plays first-class cricket like that. And in county cricket, like you mentioned, for Derbyshire. And then even last year, he didn't quite hit the heights that he did the year before, but still averaged 60. But I just wonder if that is possible at test match level because he gets where the... He gets the fielding side where he wants them after getting those 30, 40s and 50s. But then, you know, test teams being more relentless... This is let go, uh, wide of off stump as the ball once again angles across the left-hander, this time Adam Lythe. The test teams and test bowlers will be more consistent and you can get off to a start, but you cannot just play in the same gear. Sometimes you have to take a step back when you've got 14, 15 fielders back. Just give them that half an hour and then by that time you're already moving from 50 to 70 and then you can just just play with with the field. Yeah, and I think really you've just outlined exactly a lot of England supporters' frustrations with that test series <laughs> in India in the winter as well. Singdale bowls edged and pouched. Low down at second slip by Bancroft and Gloucestershire had their second wicket. It was on a good line, a good length and it tempted Lyth into a poke at it and it just about made it through to Bancroft at second who was diving in front of Charlesworth at first and I don't think that that would have carried through to Charlesworth if he'd left it. So good reflexes from Bancroft to take the catch and that's his first contribution back in Gloucestershire colours as Lythe goes and Yorkshire 19 for two. That was a brilliant catch, absolutely brilliant. Low to his right and he rightly said it wouldn't have carried to the first slip. Again Ajit Singh Dale finding that length and he's, he he's, has been getting the movement but his lines and lengths haven't been consistent. That was in a challenging area and that movement Lythe just poked at it and got the edge and Bancroft did the rest. That was a magnificent piece of cricket from Gloucestershire and they got the reward. They've had Yorkshire 19 for two. Right, so we're just going to have a quick commentary change and we'll just swap seats. So I'll uh, maybe just do a a delivery or two. No, no, Doidge is in. You're fine. Quick change, Broadway at style. At ease. Uh, sorry, Faisal, he's shuffling from right to left as uh, as we make the change. But uh, quick breather for Ed. And uh, very good catch indeed by uh, Cameron Bancroft there. As the boys were saying, at uh, second slip has brought Joe Root out to the middle. Now I talked about uh, the promise at the top of the day's play of uh, looking at the scorecard Seeing the names Lithe, Bean, Masood, Root and Brook. We're already down to the uh, fourth of those five. 19 for two. Finlay Bean bowled by Josh Shaw without scoring in the first over. And Adam Lithe now also back in the dressing room. Singtail has been pacey. This one back of a length. 
trying Root outside that off stump. Root had plenty of time to have a good look at it. Let that one go. Ripple of applause went around when Root walked out. One of the very, very best that England has ever produced. And would love to make a contribution here. First appearance this summer for him. And it's only his second match against Gloucestershire in county championship history. The previous one, 2012 at Scarborough. Long time ago. Singdale. Root on to the front foot. This is good area from Singdale. He's really charged in. He's run in. You cannot complain the effort that he's put in this morning. Like I earlier said, he wasn't consistent enough. But when he hit the good areas, the kind of pace he has, he will surely trouble the batters on this pitch. Yeah, I totally agree. I think I think Josh Shaw's been the pick of the pair just because he's bowled a little bit fuller and he's, he's made him play, hasn't he? There's been quite a lot of leaves from Ajit Singh Daly, just a fraction too short. So quite a lot of the deliveries, had they even been straight, would have been over the top of the stumps. Three slips in a gully as Root settles in, pushes it back to Dale. Once again, that effort from Dale as he dives across the pitch towards his right to save that delivery. And that will bring a close to his over, a successful one, which he got the wicket of Adam Lyth as Yorkshire are now 19 for two. Yep, nine, uh, Lyth out the third ball of the 10th over, so uh, it's been an eventful 10 so far. Clearly looking like uh, it was a good decision to uh, put Yorkshire into bat on winning the toss by Graham Van Buren. Finley Bean and Adam Lyth, such a potent partnership for Yorkshire last year. Lyth making over a 1,000 in the championship and Finley Bean just short of. And they put on a number of uh, 100 opening partnerships. Certainly Yorkshire's best opening pair since the days that Lyth was batting with Alex Lees quite a few seasons ago now. And here's Josh Shaw continuing. At this pavilion end here to Shan Masood, who is pushing rather than driving at that one but you can tell that that's what he wants to do Shan just been not been quite there to do so the shot he played when I was off air that looped up over into the far side was it carried its wrist didn't it Faisal it did and he was surprised by the spongy nature of that bounce because he got up on his tiptoes when he saw the length but that ball never arrived and there was not enough width for him certainly got lucky in that one Here's Shaw again, still getting some shape on the ball. Good leave by Masood this time. Kind of in too far away from off stump, but again was probably going over the top. They've retained at three in the slip cordon. There's a man down at long leg. Uh, Shan Masood has prompted a move as well of a sweeper back at uh, sort of just in front of square on the leg side. And a catcher who'd be three strips away a sort of straight mid wicket about uh, probably 15 16 yards off the bat mid on mid off who's a little bit closer as well and fielding now to that drive by Masood that was a little bit more of an offering from Josh Shaw who's been good so far this morning it's a clever piece of bowling though because the first delivery of the over it was kind of a loopy delivery that he just let go and helping for that fuller length but you know it's still you want to ball that fuller length but you you want to put some oomph into that delivery as well even with that length and the rest of the deliveries in this over has been with more effort and still getting that movement good consistent bowling sure and again this time just just back of length Masood playing from the crease punching back to the bowler uh, Adam Lyons finished with seven by the way folks so for the record 22 deliveries and that one boundary off the outside edge down to our left. Talking about the, the Kukubara ball, one of the reasons that it's been employed here, like I just said, the first delivery of the over, you just, after 10, 12 overs, this is over number 11, you can't just put the ball there in one place. You have to put a lot of effort behind it. As he's changed the angle now. Shaw coming around the wicket. Yep, and uh, making Masood play, just... Tightening up lines maybe slightly. That's dropped into the offside and there's no run. Great to see uh, the sun shining. It's not shining brightly at this moment in time. But there are some shadows being cast out there. Sort of ha hazy feel to it. But we'll take it. We will take it after what we had last week. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. This is a much better sight. 
So 19 for two. As uh, Shaw turns again, White to sweatband on his left wrist. That offers a bit of room to Shan Masood, and he's taken full advantage there. Really good shot over the top of it, and he's cut that away. Backward of point for four. Shan doesn't need a second invitation. Just stays inside the line. It just allows him to free those hands, and once you give him width, he'll jump all over. And that's exactly what he did. Finding the boundaries now will give confidence to Sean. It's Yorkshire now 23 for 2. 11 overs done. And at Seabone made a point earlier on in, in commentary that will be interesting to see that how many overs are given to those fast, fast bowlers on in their first spells. Shaw has bowled six already, seeing Dale five. And there is a bowling change as we speak. I think Marshan De Longa. Or is it Zaman Akhtar? Yeah, Zaman Akhtar. Just going through his uh, practice run up, so first change of the day then. So they've both got through fair spells, the opening pair. And that's fair enough. Um, Although, as I was saying, I thought maybe Josh Shaw's been the pick of the pair so far. They've both got a wicket apiece. And uh, neither has bowled uh, much in the way of loose stuff. So it's a challenge out there with the bat. You've got two international cricketers. A Pakistan captain and former England captain out there together. Loads of experience for Yorkshire. First delivery back of Holland. Root runs it down with an angle face. That outfield is not as quick as it normally is. You can understand that. The amount of rain we had. A couple of runs for Root. Saman at first instance also looked quite pacey. But huge challenge, like you said, against two international stars. I mean, like I said, Root, one of the very best that England's ever produced. Sean Masood, the current Pakistan captain. So the challenge for the youngster is enormous. And not only his skill will be tested, but also his character. Three slips in a gully. Short back of a length. Root lets it go. Early doors, but that's not baseball style. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he complies? Yeah, well, Root did come for, for some stake the way he played. Mm. But then the last two test matches, he showed everyone what he's made of. And champion cricketers always do that. His root settles into his stance. Nice firm push. Good effort from Zaman after off his own bowling. There were runs in there if it had gone past because that mid-off was wide. Root finding the middle of the bat. Yep, there's plenty of time for, for that other tactic that you're talking about. But I'm not quite sure. First day of the second match of the season when you are... 25 for two that you'd you'd endear yourself to too many if you hit one straight up in the air wrapped on the pads shouting big the fingers gone up root departs this is massive Zaman Akhtar makes an instant impact as Joe Root was looking to play it onto the onside got squared up and the finger went up pretty rapidly that is a massive moment in the game I told you I should have tried to play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just uh, he, he's just come back in at him, hasn't it? And he's kind of slightly, just slightly lost his balance towards the offside. Uh, not quite sure, really, whether or not he looked that worried when it hit him. Uh, or if it was a genuinely worried look, because, again, he has his back to us. He did have a look around um, at uh, umpire Hassan Adnan. And he was... Yeah, more than happy to raise the finger. The Gloucestershire boys are saying, yeah, yeah, it was out, it was out. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, well, it was out, wasn't it? Because he's raised his finger and, and Joe's had to go. But uh, I, th I think basically, um, yeah, um, Zaman Akhtar has just robbed us of a great opportunity to see a great player. So, um. <laughs> Well, that also gives us the opportunity to see Harry Brook walking out to the middle. Practicing his shadow drives. Joe Root, the superstar for a decade. Harry Brook is the superstar, I won't say in making, because he's already made huge impact in international cricket. That would be some fun watching him bat now. 
because we know that he only knows one way to bat and he's not going to change that is for sure three down though Yorkshire just 25 on the board Gloucestershire really making good use of the toss that they won and the bowlers vindicating the skipper's decision very much so yeah I mean getting back uh, back to recap Finlay Bean without scoring Adam Lyth for seven the pair of them putting on lots of runs for the county last year and then one of the greats gone for two LBW to the man actor Joe Root two off seven deliveries so modern great Harry Brook over to you after a hundred last week not not much change in terms of the field placings three slips and a gully onto the pads Brook pushes it to mid on sun is shining more brightly now see the shadows very clear and this is a beautiful sight here now the home side has got their tails up early wickets and the crowd are really into the game as well and like I was saying Zaman Akhtar's character would be challenged in, in the face of adversity he's done well it's again probably got away with it next time half volley that Brooke pushed straight to mid wicket you will hear the applause because it is the end of the over a very successful one from Zaman Akhtar as he dismissed Root here and Yorkshire 25 for 3 yeah super start then for the hosts and uh, looks like Marchand de Langer is going to come on at this pavilion end for over number 13 First time we've seen him in the match, number 90 on his back, former Somerset, of course. Always reminds me of a javelin thrower, the way he charges in and uh, lets the ball go. I know he was a javelin thrower, yeah, yeah. That's why it reminds me of one, I think. He's got that, he's still got the, the same sort of um, the same sort of feel about his run at that, hasn't he? He runs up to bowl the ball. Pretty similar to what Steve Backley or, or Marsh on the Langer would have done. Here he is really does throw at that front leg and uh, that's short of length banged in Shan Masood drops it out into the offside and there is no run 25 for three and again if you're just starting to switch on and think what's going on down there at Bristol Finley Bean bowled short naught Yorkshire one for one Adam Lythe caught Bancroft well caught as well at second slip off the bowling of Ajit Singh Dale for seven off 22 and the score on 19 at that stage and then 25 for three Joe Root in the previous over LBW to Zaman Akhtar for two from seven balls Shan Masood waits in comes De Langer and that is a uh, you know, bit, little bit of in dip turned to mid wicket by uh, Shan Masood no run the quality of Shan Masood is that he doesn't spare you outside the off stump even if it's back of a length four off fourth off stump he doesn't need a lot of room so the bowlers will really try to tuck him in and bowl at his pads and that's also one of his strength here's uh, De Langer again and Masood compact just drops it into the offside and once again there is no run just an indication of the sort of moisture content if you like given that there's been no rain here in the almost 24 hours or so that I've been down here. We've still got a pile of sawdust at either end, and there is sawdust down at the wicked end from which De Langer is bowling here. So definitely moisture down there at pitch level. Now then, short of length, and Masood, he hasn't mastered that stroke on this occasion. He's going to get four runs through third man, but that is an edgy stroke going to the left of Ben Charlesworth in the slip cordon. It's a pretty familiar stroke from Shan Masood where he gets up on his toes and creates his own room. But that extra bounce this time surprised him and he couldn't control it all, it, it at all. I mean, this was once again a lucky escape for the Yorkshire skipper because there's a couple of occasions now that ball has gone in the air. But it has gone away from the fielders. Shan Masood collects runs. Lucky runs. Here's that De Lange again. This one a little bit more of a tempter but Masood not tempted shoulders arms so you've got quality players you know high class county players like Adam Lythe good young player Finley Bean Joe Root world class player and these two as well and they're not finding it easy out there which just gives you an indication 
of uh, what the conditions are like. There's De Langer again, herring in from this pavilion end. That's a more assured push square on the offside by Shan Masu to complete that over. Uh, he's the only man so far in this match in double figures. 19 runs to his name from 42 deliveries. If anybody's getting used to what it's like out there, then the uh, Pakistan and Yorkshire captain is. Three fours against his name, but uh, thus far, it's not been his most convincing either. Exactly, that's the point. And some more sawdust has been brought onto the field. Although the sun is shining brightly, Gloucestershire really making good fist of this first session and this first hour. And they need to continue to do that to keep this strong Yorkshire batting under pressure. Actors fresh over Harry Brooks once again finding the middle of the bat. But very athletic Zaman Akhtar was able to put his right hand out and stop that ball. Three slips in a gully, and one thing is pretty evident about the the bowling of Gloucestershire that they have pace. We saw seeing Dale ball from the far end, as this one has been driven straight down the ground. Beautiful stroke, that fuller length, asking Harry Brook to have a go at it, and that's exactly what he did. Found the long off fence for four. Yeah, easily the best uh, stroke of the day so far. Unquestionable. Uh, I was at a, at a word with him at uh, breakfast this morning about his knock last week, and I kind of knew before we even started the, the little conversation as it was that his 100 last week in 60 odd balls, he was probably going to say he could have played better, and sure enough, he said, Yeah, yeah you know. It's not, a very didn't quite time it as I, <laughs> as I would have liked. <laughs> I've seen him uh, when he. He played in Pakistan. He had a wonderful series, but every time he came on to talk about his innings, as we watch him get ready again, pushes forward to the field at square of the wicket on the offside. Every time, he's pretty modest about what he does, although he's played some extraordinary innings. And he's a young man, but he's not flamboyant at all. He's, he's very calm, and as if he just takes everything into his stride. Slight field change has been prompted by that previous drive. There's a short mid-off catching. There's a mid-off on his left shoulder as the next delivery has been prodded forward exactly to that fielder who goes across and picks up the ball. It's tinkering in the field also, Yorkshire have done it with their slip cordon and now with a close catcher, catcher on the offside. Just a just be in Harry Brooks' face. That's that's exactly what that fielder is meant to do. Tempting Brook and knowing Brook, if there is an opportunity to drive, he will. Just walks down the pitch at Zaman Akhtar. Harry Brook pulls the length. And just that short bit of fielder was back in the action again. One of the one of the obvious features about that knock last week was the the sheer amount of time that he had to to see and play the ball and he, he found they dropped the field out very quickly did Leicestershire I mean very quickly for you know he'd not got many on the board and they were on the boundary edge he was still finding the gaps Akhtar to Brook darted it it was a good length just a little bit of movement off the seam we've seen that all morning and Harry Brook was very very lucky there brings us to the end of the over, 33 for 3 as we approach the first hour. We've literally gone past the first hour of play. And it clearly has belonged to Gloucestershire. Yeah, very good start uh, for the hosts. Um, who, as Faisal was saying, the uh, decision made at the toss fully vindicated. It was a decision that uh, Shan Masoud said he would also have taken had Yorkshire... Been uh, lucky on the uh, the toss stakes. Short ball here from Delanger first up, and that's uh, well controlled by Shan Masood. And nothing more really than just helping it on its way with some lovely timing there. Probably just slightly top side of the middle of the bat, but it's uh, raced away. And to say it has been wet down here, as Ed was alluding to earlier on the outfield. I think it's just got a bit wetter up here as well. 
I've just spilt Has some water. Really? Oh dear. Well, watch, uh, watch out with that laptop, old boy. Yeah, my laptop's so he's fine. Heading, he's heading it, it, everything it. else might be a bit dodgy, but my laptop's fine, so that's good. It, it's certainly running towards it. That's all. Um, so four more to uh, Yorkshire and to Shan Masood. Who's on to 23, 37 for three. Try and give you some scores from elsewhere. You can get in touch, of course, on at Sporting Lives One for yours truly or BBC West Yorkshire Sport at gmail.com. Four more to Shan Masood here. De Langer, well, he's uh, pretty quick, but he can be a little bit wayward as a result of that, and uh, that was just too short and wide. And uh, the one player who has been out there for any length of time so far today, Shan Masood. Uh, 46 deliveries now and he's into one into the 20s 27 and a fifth four now for the Pakistan and Yorkshire captain that's it I've used up my one tissue I have to to keep the water at bay this is like the sort of you know what the ground staff have been having to do just up here in the box <laughs> <laughs> here's De Langer again what has he got in response that's a fuller length delivery and better for it Masood has to treat that with respect. Turning it into the leg side, and there's no run. So uh, let's have a look elsewhere. Essex 61 for two now against uh, Kent down at Chelmsford in Div 1. Hampshire 33 for two against the Lankies down at Southampton. They chose the chose to bat, having won the toss, the host down there. De Langer in again, and Masood half forward and punching back to the bowler, no run. But Trent Bridge, Knotts 48 for two as well. So wickets tumbling around and about. They're playing Worcestershire, uh, having chosen to bat. And at the Oval, Somerset 52 for one against uh, the champions, who put them in. At Edgebaston, well, the most progress so far made by Warwickshire. 77 without loss there, having been put in by Durham, who might be uh, regretting that decision, the way things are looking. As De Langer's latest delivery sees Masood have an easy leave. Glamorgan playing Derbyshire as well. Pleased to say down in Cardiff that has started. And uh, the host 27 without loss, having also been put in by Derbyshire. 63 for three Leicestershire at uh, Grace Road. They were put in by Sussex. As De Lange is in and Masood. In that compact fashion he has watches it all the way onto the bat close to his body and just pushes into the offside but there's no run last uh, score to update you with is uh, at Northampton where the hosts are 50 for one having been put in by Middlesex so that's uh, where we are at around the grounds after the first hour or so of play on this uh, first morning of the second round of county championship fixtures of 2024 and uh, yeah it's just been very pleasant to have some cricket going on out there. And Yorkshire 41 for three at the end of that 15th over. And we've got the super sopper up here as well. <laughs> Thankfully. Sorry. I'll try not to do it again. It's one of my favourites, though. I stick the, the cup of water behind the laptop, and then I just push it back a little bit, and then over it goes. Anyway, 41 for three. As Zaman Akhtar runs in from the Ashley Down Road end to Balterbrook. He's a little bit turned round by that one. He kind of spooned it but along the floor back towards the bowler. We've got 100 in the first innings last time we actually managed to play this fixture here in 2022. A marvellous 100 it was, and 60-odd it was in the second innings as well to see Yorkshire home alongside David Milan as they got home by six wickets. Actor Bowles flashing outside the off stump is Brook. Good grief, he was looking to welly that one. He threw everything at it and missed it. And threw it goes to the keeper. Hmm. Unusual. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, he's been timing the ball, hasn't he? So far, actually, he's so possibly timing the ball even better than Sean Masood on occasions. But that time he just looked to flail at it. It was as if he was trying to carve it up and over the, the cordon. Act to bowls, that's down the leg side. And Bracey across fairly comfortably to take but a slightly wasted delivery there but what a scalp for Zaman Akhtar I mean he's had to watch Kashi Valley getting all the headlines in terms of South Asian Cricket Academy graduates Kashi Valley getting that
pair of centuries in the pairs bears clash last week but he's certainly going to grab some headlines himself here for getting rid of root actor in bowls brook back and behind the ball and it bounds towards the bowler now oh, there's no run but really you'd have to say early career that's got to be the biggest scalp of Zaman Akhtar's career and his first I mean you mentioned is his first a championship match against Gloucestershire since 2012 for Root it's his first domestic game on this ground Akhtar in bowls this is tapped away towards Gully they go for a quick single Ollie Price up and throwing but Brook is home at the non-striker's end and moving on to has that scoreboard moved already? No, it hasn't. He's on to 5, 42 for 3. He's played five ODIs on this ground, his route, and his top score came in 2017, which was the game against the West Indies where Moeen Ali broke the record for the fastest ODI 100 on English soil, which was probably slightly overshadowed by events that happened after it. Um, I'd, I'd say more, but... I fear I might be embargoed. Here comes Zaman Akhtar over the wicket bowls. This is looped up in the air off something, but there's no short leg. And in fact, there's only a fairly deep square leg, who is Dom Goodman, who's on the field as a sub. And that's the end of the over 42 for three. Yep, interesting uh, times in this one so far, I think you'd have to say, with those three wickets having fallen. And these two have got a, a serious job to do. But uh, every passing minute that they're out there, things will be just gradually starting to dry out. The sun's been either hazy or shining throughout so far this morning. So that will help. And of course playing with the Kookaburra as we mentioned they've just got to try and get to that period where things are not happening as much with the ball and batting becomes easier but uh, that's easy to say not necessarily easy to do three slips in place for De Langer. they've got a close catcher just off uh, the cut strip a, a strip or so away to the offside of straight as Delanger's first delivery is dropped into the uh, offside. There's a man then had a bit more like an extra cover position. Mid on is relatively deep. And then sweepers in front of square on the leg side and down at long leg. So the field partially set back for the short ball. Partially set up for a drive. Which way would it go here from the former javelin thrower? Right arm over the wicket. It's gone full this time. And then it's just uh, turned into the leg side. No run. So his habit of hanging his right hand out to the side does De Langer. When he thinks he's released a good one, I think he must, must know. And then it's almost as if he's readying for the appeal before it even happens. Just that the right hand comes out to his side and you'll see it. Well, yeah, if he's bowling well, you'll see it basically every other ball. Here he is again, another one full. The ball doesn't appear to be swinging as much for him as it was earlier on for Josh Shaw. Maybe that's more about the ball than the bowler. But there was a little bit of a way swing there. Harry Brook meeting it on the half volley and just uh, pushing it out into the offside. De Langer. Still looks like a javelin throw, and he's quite sort of top-heavy. Big backside on him. You can imagine all that power, and his latest delivery is short of length, and Harry Brook has a little fend at that. I think he's caught him on the arm by the yeah. looks of what he's saying. Took the pace off it on its way to second slip. Why well, it didn't carry, because uh, with a pace that De Langer has, I know this pitch is not famed for its pace, but it is first thing on day one and it is Marshall de Langer bowling you would probably have expected that to carry if it had gone off something else but Brooke immediately showing that it wasn't any sort of a chance but they have just taken a little step closer the cordon here he is again once more he's thrown it right up there de Langer he's trying to get Brooke to drive pretty clear about that and he does so this time but uh, no further 
And again, that man in just off the cut strip, Miles Hammond, number 88 on his back, now polishing the ball. Got a couple of 88s in the middle at the moment. Yep. Brook for Yorkshire as well. Along a sporting 90. Again, it's a good length ball, and Brook turning it into the leg side, where it is fielded at uh, mid on by Van Buren. End of the over. That is now 17 complete. 42 for three. Yorkshire having lost Bean without scoring. Lithe for seven and Root for two. Masood 27 not out. And Brook five. It's going back to that dismissal of Root. Looking to play through the leg side to quite a straight ball. My first thought, I must say, live was that it might be a bit high, but I've looked at the replay and it wasn't, I don't think. But I just wonder, coming off the subcontinent, coming from India, where it might, might just be that little bit slower, you might have a bit more time to play through the leg side around that, that paddy. It's got a lot of runs through there in the winter. Zaman Akhtar round the wicket bowls, over pitches, and it's driven gorgeously by Shan Masood. That's probably the shot of the morning session so far. Whistles away through wide mid-off and to the boundary. He moves on to 31. Yorkshire to 46 for three. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you can always, you can always make too much of it. He just missed the ball. But, you know, you, you, you do wonder a little bit because it must be quite hard to get yourself, you know, and perhaps that's also why it's important that he's playing these matches. Get yourself out of the way that you can and sort of have to play in the subcontinent where they're going to be targeting the stumps a lot. Around the wicket comes Actor, bowls inside edge onto pad, and it dribbles out safely away from Shan Masood. Rather unlikely to have a fielder there, but did cause a bit of an issue for a moment. But yeah, I, I don't know, as I say, sometimes you overthink these things. You just missed a straight one, but it does deny the public the opportunity to see Joe Root back, but I don't think Gloucestershire are going to be calling him back somehow. This ground might be WG's ground, but we're not having any of that. This is cut away by Masood, but not a full-blooded cut shot, and it's stopped by Hammond at point. I know that there was no red carpet for Joe when he walked out to the middle. No. No, I suspect the, the red carpet probably consisted of a few words along the lines of possibly not welcome to Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to have you back, Joe. But yeah, everyone would have been kind of pushing for the scalp surely you would as much as we've been saying you've got to try and just you know play who's in front of you bowl at bowl the right areas regardless of who's playing it's got to motivate you as a as especially as a young fast bowler like Zaman actor just to run in that little bit harder and try and get that scalp gonna get another one though another one before lunch Gloucestershire would be even more delighted with their morning. Trying the Yorker this time is Zaman Akhtar, but it's dug out with ease by Shan Masood into the leg side. It's fielded by Ajit Singh Dale at mid-wicket. Uh, just to say, by the way, if you are uh, enjoying the picture feed, uh, the best way to keep across all the action is via the live text service which is up and running as some actor bowls driven but straight to mid off and Buren fields and there's no run you can access the BBC's live text page by going onto the cricket section of the sport website Adam Lanigan Alex Winter Gary Smee and Deepak Mahai have you covered four reporters across all the games now so if you want your wicket alerts and I noticed they clipped up Shah Faisal's wonderful commentary on the Joe Root wicket there as well as actor bowls and that one comes back in a touch possibly just off the pitch and goes through to the keeper probably would have gone over the top of the stumps anyway but still just signs that the ball is doing a bit off 
the pitch. 46 for three, the Yorkshire score. And we've had uh, 18 overs, he says, peering towards the border. Have that ticked over? Yes, it, of course it is. We started from this end, didn't we? You've got a thumbs up from James, who, who, made, yes. a, who made a splendid thumbs coffee up for us this morning, I've got to say. <laughs> thumbs up from James, that's all we need. He knows. He's, he's a happy man after watching Yeovil Town um, confirm their return to the National League last night, he was telling us earlier on. So, three slipped to second, of which in particular is taking a couple of strides forward, and the third, I think, has, has as well as Delanger is into bowl here to the right-handed, of course, Harry Brook, whose contact uh, with the ball was towards the inside edge of the bat there, and it was more of a drag, if anything, to the leg side. Maybe again an indicator... Um, about uh, the possible slow nature of the pitch maybe slightly through his shot before it got there two runs was the result so seven to him now and 48 for three it's been hard work for the Yorkshire batters and uh, Gloucestershire bowled well here is De Langer again short of length this time and run along the deck to third slip by Harry Brook just played the four first-class matches last year, did De Langer, and just a couple of T20s before he did his quad, and you, you just knew, it was one of those where you just knew that was going to be the, the sorry, it was a calf, but uh, you just knew it was going to be the season, unfortunately, when it happened. Here he is again, full and straight, and Brooke content to just drop that back into the pitch. But, of course, being Marchand De Langer, he still marched off the field at full pace. What, what are you doing? <laughs> Just, you know, can at least at least wait for some help. No, no, I'll get through this. And apparently, only just after his surgery on it, he was out trying to mow his lawn. So <laughs> you can't you can't hold him back. Here he is again, short this time. Oh, now then, Harry Brook has plays the pull shot at that, which was around about head height. There's a a very optimistic appeal, I think. You're not going to get that from, from Peter Bracey Hartley, are you? <laughs> I mean, you're not going to get that from any umpire, to be honest, but let alone somebody like Peter Hartley, who's, it's fair to say, he's been umpiring for quite a while. But worth a try. Um, first time we've really seen anybody bang one in. Didn't quite hit the mark on this occasion here. De Langer once again, and uh, Brooke this time... Has the ability to free his arms to one. <laughs> um, yeah, our man at uh, an extra cover there. That's a man actor. Yeah. yeah, the ball must have taken an awkward bobble in front of him and he nearly went to the left of it. Managed to stick out a hand to spare his blushes. Yes, and there's a lovely little skid mark down there where he's almost fallen over as well. The ground's probably happy with that. Full length ball again and Brook with a solid defensive push to this one to complete the over with Yorkshire on 48 for three. Yes, it was, I mean, he's, he's, he's certainly not of Marchand de Langer build as Zaman actor, but he's still a tall, fast bowler and there's a, a, a decent amount of momentum to arrest, which was done, I think, by several layers of the Bristol clod. So. Fifth over now for Zaman Akhtar. And Gloucestershire's over eight is having started off just about OK. I think we'll be starting to slip now. So I wonder if they are going to think about just tossing the ball to somebody for a couple of overs before lunch, or will they try and live now, pay later in that regard? Most teams do tend to find. Akhtar, balls driven and driven through the covers for four. Dismissive shot from... Shan Masood, it was starting concerningly for Gloucestershire to find the middle of that blade with some regularity. Brings up the 50 for Yorkshire. One ball into the 20th over, 52 for three. That was beautiful timing, wasn't it? It is effortless from Masood when you see him play like that. Did nothing more than lean on it. And it raced away. He knew exactly where his gap was as well. I mean, he's, he's got a, a large enough gap between point and cover to try and target this is short helped in the air it spoons safely again nobody anywhere particularly near it Not in 
real control there, but I guess he would say, well, again, I knew where the gap was, so <laughs> potentially if I miscued it, I was fairly safe. But I'm, I'm not really sure that mm. the ball was originally intended to go there. One more run anyway, moves him to 36. You mentioned the overrate situation. Yorkshire were minus two last week. Yes, you and had so one of those delightful situations, didn't you, where they had to go out and yes. charge through some overs. That's always fun. So they just got past the 250 and, and batting bonus point mark when Harry got his 100. Actor runs in, balls to Brook, driven, and won't beat the fielder wide mid-off. And of course, one or two moans and groans that they pulled out at that point when they could have gone for more batting points, but the time taken to have got to two more batting points to get to 350 didn't look like it was going to be on because there was some weather around so the clever thing to do was to get that batting point and then to avoid losing yeah. two <laughs> actor bowls targeting the stumps and Brook leans forward plays a soft defense which just trickles not even a pitch width away so I think uh, apparently the um, the officials told them they had to get through nine overs nine overs in 20 minutes to get themselves back to zero well they got through seven point whatever it was in in fewer minutes than that and that was enough by the time things came to an end yes you can have some really quite farcical situations with that actor bowls of coming down the pitches brook and then gets surprised by a bit of bounce and just has to go for safety first and drop the ball down into the ground into the offside dent fields back on the field now it was he who is off the field for a brief period. Dom Goodman coming on. I think it was the Glamorgan game at Cheltenham last year where Gloucestershire had a similar situation. You're basically racing from end to end. Nothing on the game. It was completely dead. Both sides have made about 450 each. As Brooke has a feel for this one, and he certainly did poke at that one well away from his body, and it passes the outside edge through to Bracey. The other thing to say is that had they carried on batting and gambled that there would have been enough time to, to get another 90 runs, then the fielding side can do something about that, can't they? Because they can slow things down and make it more difficult for you. Whereas if you are in the field, you can do the charging around. And yeah. that. So I think it was a good decision that last week. Um, and it just meant they got back to zero and so didn't lose any of the bonus points they'd built up. Yeah, I think Gloucestershire had Ollie Price and I actually think it was Zaffer doing the bowling. But, you know, you just kind of think... In some ways, can, you, can we not just sort of assume that this cricket would have happened? And uh, obviously it's not how it works, but it, it can lead, as much as it's, it's meant to lead to, to better spectacles in that you get more cricket in, you do also get that payoff at the other end sometimes. There we go. As good a system as we've got, probably. Here's De Langer bowling to Masood, who uh, has a bit of width to work with here and just plays carefully backward of point to the sweeper out there, picks up one run. Also, I should say, talking about the, the commentaries, if you've not managed to negotiate the new look, it used to be that you'd have all the, the commentaries from the various feeds lined up, but now you've got to click on a tab that says watch and listen once you've got to that live text page and I say this because I actually got caught out by it as well so if you haven't done that then that's that's what you need to do here's De Langer and uh, Brooke from the crease again just solid in defence this time still the three slips still the man just off the uh, cut strip into the offside uh, hoping for a mistimed drive and in these sort of conditions when things are a little bit on the slow side you can get there too soon as a batter Here's De Langer again, charging in. We're up there to drive. Invitation accepted by Brook. In control, I hasten to add, as he tried to punch it between um, Chris Dent, who is the man, rather than Miles Hammond now, fielding at that short mid-off position. Tried to get it between him and uh, Peter Hartley, the umpire, but couldn't quite pull it off. Brook on seven, pursued 37, 54 for three. De Langer in again, all effort. Brooke just uh, dropping that one out into the offside. Good atmosphere down beneath. 
Yes, there's a good bustle and burble down there with spectators sitting on those picnic tables, which is a fine spot to watch your cricket from because you've got easy access to the cafe and the bar right behind you as well. Some spectators prefer the far end of the ground over towards the flats. Quite a few people over there as well sunning themselves. The Langer again. Another full length delivery and Brooke right over the top of it, turning it into the leg side where Josh Short is the fielding at uh, mid on. Sun feeling like it's getting out a little more brightly now and a little more full on feel to it. That will all the time be helping from the batter's perspective as will the wearing of the ball. Those trees still don't have leaves on over there though. <laughs> still play cricket. Langer again, short. Brooke has uh, whipped that one away around the corner. Four from the moment it left the bat. Pierced the gap between the two men set back square and backward of square on the leg side. And that takes him into double figures. 11 for Harry Brooke, 58 for three. I'm going to pop out and do an update for BBC Radio Leeds. Thanks to Jonathan Doidge. Be back after lunchtime. And Shah Faisal will shortly transition into the other commentary chair. Um, I get the feeling that last delivery was probably more of what the people want in terms of what we want to be seeing. We want to see Marchand de Lange running in, banging it into the middle of the pitch and Harry Brook swinging at it and trying to hit some boundaries because, you know, ev everybody loves a bit of baseball, especially when Harry Brook is taking on the short ball. I, I don't think anybody's ever complained about that before so yeah I, I I sort of feel that if he's to get himself established Brooke we might see a bit more of that and the field set will be really intriguing to see whether they go kind of Australia style with almost nobody in front of the 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 wicket or whether they go for, for something else we've got a change of bowling and it's time for a second spell from Ajit Singh Dale. Quick turn around for him. Shan Masood settles in his stance. Two straight, just clipped it towards that fielder. Just in front of square on the on side. And Ajit Singh Dale has got that one wicket. And now, like we discussed earlier, with that slightly older ball, you'd only have to run in and just give it his all. A wicket here before lunch could really, I mean, it's already been lost size session, I think, in my opinion, but they'll really put icing on the cake if Singdale was to get one of these two out at this stage. Just two slips in a gully now. Singdale runs in, Sean Masood angled it towards backward of point, and a no run. Yeah, I think especially in terms of getting through the big guns at the top of this Yorkshire order and this is absolutely no disrespect to the likes of George Hill who scored a century against Gloucestershire at Headingley last year so you are by no means through if you get another one but just to have that in the bank first morning and you've got through what is a you know for, for any domestic side would be an extraordinary top order next one has been clipped once again behind square is in action and just a single for Sean Masood but we've seen that the behavior of the wicket as well you know those short pitch deliveries just a while ago when Sean Masood was playing on to the onside it went aerial that spongy bounce the batter yeah. has really mastered it be interesting to see 40 minutes of lunch break and if the sun is not quite beating down but it's still quite sunny and quite bright so that 40 minutes if do those two are uh, there at the crease after lunch I mean it could be a bit different what it is now and like yeah. you said earlier the field will open up and then it'll be a completely different equation two slips in a gully and a short mid-off catching for Harry Brook Singdale beats the outside edge this is a perfect delivery asking Brook to come on to that front foot a little bit of movement that we've seen all morning goes past the outside edge wonderful bowling yeah I think there was one I think the previous over from that end bowled by Zaman Akhtar, which beat the edge, and you would say that one Brook chased more than... I mean, it was it was a very good ball, but Brook chased it. That one, I think, certainly 
felt as though it was more one which you could see why Brooke felt he had to play at it, especially because there is still the occasional one that's doing just enough off the surface. This one hits Brooke just up above the tie pad. Must have felt the sting. That's the non-padded area. Seeing Dale once again running in, giving, giving it his all. We've seen this all morning. And that extra pace does help with this Kookaburra ball. Yeah. And also, this is the thing which Gloucestershire have, have just not had the luxury of very much, to have these quick bowlers fit and effectively sort of feeding off each other. You know, you that they'd be buoyed by some wickets that have been taken, but also just one spell leads to the next spell. So far, they have bowled as a unit. That's a good point you make. Seeing Dale's next delivery, straight to Harry Brook, you had a feeling was just slightly falling over as this one was attacking the stumps. Good finish to the over from Seeing Dale. He's looking to make things happen here. Over ball, Yorkshire 59 for three. Yeah, I was mentioning Delanger just the four championship matches last year. Singh Dale played six, so again, fewer than half the games. Uh, you look at somebody like even Zaman Nakta, who came into the picture a bit later okay. last year. He, he did manage mostly to keep his, uh, his fitness up whilst others seem to be getting injured left, right and centre. But uh, Akta played in seven games, so... You know, nobody managed to to get through in terms of the bowling more than, what, eight games? Tom Price played eight. So, you know, that, that has to change. And it was something which was mentioned a lot during pre-season with Mark Elaine saying, we, we've got to try and find a way to keep these bowlers fitter somehow. It's easier said than done, but they've... When you're a smaller county, you tend to have your kind of first team and you just, you, you can't really afford to have that, you know, that key injury to any key bowler. You've got to be able to have them fit all the time. And that just it can't happen with the schedule that, that we have. It cannot happen. So I suppose it's, it's more a matter of, of management and, and games off here and there. But it's tricky. Change of bowling from the pavilion end. And we've got Ollie Price in to bowl some spin for the first time. Bowling to the left-handed Shan Masood, who leans forward in defence. Goes out into the covers. So spin for the first time. You kind of felt they... they, they you almost might as well give it a try. Because if there's a bit of moisture in the surface, then, you know, it, so often spin is consigned to the dusty, dry <laughs> pitch. But actually, you know, uncovered pitches, it was... It was the spinners that were doing the damage. As forward goes Shan, plays it neatly into the offside, but straight to cover. Yeah, we've seen many times in, in test cricket or longer format of cricket, if ever the spinner, there was a spinner that was effective, it would be in that first session on first day. Exactly what you talked about, that moisture. And we've seen early doors, there's so much of sawdust was brought onto the field. You see those dark patches develop already. It's a good delivery from Ollie Price, targeting the stumps, but Shan Masood leans forward into a defence, picked up by Dent. He's quite straight at mid-wicket. And, yeah, I, I, you know, you th think back to Gloucestershire greats, Charlie Parker, Tom Goddard, Kurt Mortimer, rattle them off, spinners. Forward goes Shan Masood again, plays in defence. Dennett. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, the, the the leading wicket takers of Gloucestershire. It's, it's basically a who's who of who's bold spin for the for the county and pitches. Of course, have have changed so much, but it's Price bowls and the forward defence once more by a tall Pakistan international. There's no run, and you know we. <laughs> Technology is so much better at draining these grounds now and, and you don't get many situations where you're playing with potentially as much moisture as might be out there today. So I'll give it a go. This is driven by Shan, but won't beat Van Buren who's fielding at extra cover. And that is a maiden over to start with from Ollie Price, the fifth bowler used by Gloucestershire so far. 25 minutes to go until 
the lunch break. Ed Seaborn alongside Shah Faisal on the BBC Sport website and app, and also on the Gloucestershire live picture feed. Wickets to fall so far. Finlay Bean was bowled through the gate by Josh Shaw without scoring. Adam Lythe nicking off to a good low catch at second slip by Cam Bancroft off the bowling of Ajit Singh Dale for seven. And then the big moment of the morning as far as potentially outside viewers are concerned. Zaman Akhtar trapping Joe Root LBW for two. Singh Dale shot dismissive from Harry Brook. Just got onto that front foot and just swatted away and that's gone all the way. Wow. He wasn't going to be able to resist, was he? I mean, that, that boundary is short. It's, it's shorter than usual here. It's in by, I don't know, what would you say, a good, good five, seven yards, something like that from where it probably would be for this pitch. We're very central uh, for this first round match and there's no way that Brooke wouldn't have been thinking, yeah, I'm going to clear that. Forget the fielders out there. <laughs> this is going all the way. Singdale's response will be interesting as he runs in towards us, short and wide. Brooke just throws his hands at it and finds the fence again. Just in front of square on the offside, Harry Brooke looks in glorious touch. And this is the way that this style of play can, it, it can take a session away from you in no time flat. We've got 20 minutes left. If Brooke scores like this, then this could have such a different complexion on it this this session even three wickets yes okay but they won the toss and they put Yorkshire in so you would kind of you, you would say anything under three wickets actually and and you're kind of wondering if you made the right decision and if you go on the attack and you, you start scoring boundaries yeah things could change that shot mid-off has disappeared already is the next one once again pushing very confidently on towards mid on Harry Brook is finding the middle of the bat. Interesting thing about that pull shot on the first delivery, he already played a pull shot against Delanga in the previous over, and Delanga we we think that was probably pre pretty rapid, but he doesn't go onto that back foot. He hmm. just gets onto yeah. that front foot and it's just got hands that base, just, doesn't he? Yeah, and the hands are so fast through the ball. Incredible, incredible talent this young man is. He settles once again, squared up on that occasion, sink Dale, tight on line, tight on length on that occasion. And already that boundary and boundary six and a four, you could look at the captain and you just see that he's already thinking, if he doesn't get a wicket before lunch, then after lunch, you, we can all imagine what can happen. Like you said, in one session, these two players can just take the whole advantage back and get you some... Some really hard time in that afternoon session. And, and you know, he's played two shots, hasn't he? For us to, st and to start talking like that, but because we know what Brooke can do. Once again, good delivery. Good comeback in the over from seeing Dale after those 10 of 2. Just tempting Harry to come onto that front foot. This is still the right length to ball on this pitch. Just tempt the batters to come on that front foot. I mean, if you get driven for a 4... So be it, but that's where your best chance lies of getting a wicket. Yeah, exactly. And and the short pull then becomes the surprise. And because he's skiddy, does have a, a very good surprise bumper. But if it's not a surprise, then somebody like Brooke will just camp. <laughs> Thanks to Liverpool. Once again, squared up a little. There's huge gaps on the onside. Probably Harry Brooke was looking to pinch that single. Couldn't do so. It went back to sink Dale, dot ball to finish off his over. Good partnership developing between Sean Masood and Harry Brook as Yorkshire are 69 for three. And it will also be interesting, I think, throughout the season, particularly in this early stage, of course, Gloucestershire have had this coaching change. They're coming off a season where they haven't won a championship match. You could argue that they haven't had a kind of a meaningful championship win since even something like July of 2022, one, mm. even, as Price starts a new over bowls. There is a bit of turn there, and Sean Masood has poked at it. That's exactly the sort of thing that Ollie Price would like to see, but he managed to keep it down towards where a silly point would be. Bancroft is the one slip for Price. It would well, be, inter be interesting to see if 
another spinner came on, whether it would be Price or Bancroft who'd be in there. Next delivery is in. That's too short and wide, but he's going to get away with it. He's <laughs> not timed that, and he's hit it straight to cover where Miles Hammond is fielding. But, you know, the... It, it will be interesting to see where the, the kind of the resilient, resilient, yeah, yes, that one, <laughs> where the resiliency is at this point. Price bowls down the pitch, comes Shan Masudi's hit this one high up into the air, and it's one bounce just in front of the rope for four. We can see the landing, Mark. Replace your divot, please. As it's uh, another boundary to Shan Masood, his eighth, and taking on the spinner for the first time. 73 for three. Van Buren had kept the field up. It was only a matter of time before Shan Masood decided to give the charge. Van Buren hasn't made any changes. Mid-off is still up. Price bowls. is pushed towards mid-on, who's deep enough to allow the single. And they can see it's one of the fast bowlers there in Josh Short. So they made it pretty easily. 74 for three. But, you know, they've, now that these two have got going now that Gloucestershire aren't just on top because they've been on top for the whole morning session up until this point with the wickets that they've taken what happens then is there going to be the pushback that you need to see and I think that's that's what Gloucestershire supporters are going to be looking out for at the start of this season because it did just feel previous year and it, you know it's understandable when you, you can't get over the line for a while that your ability to, to 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 find that extra gear and to push back just gets eroded and you know you have to rebuild that confidence again and it's not an easy thing to do yeah it is indeed and you see the field being opened up as Sean Masood bat handle was taken care of by Dan mid on is back at long on the mid wicket is two thirds of the way square leg back on the fence price round the wicket bowling this is driven skewed into the leg side as Brooke was looking to drive that one through the covers he'll take a single to deep square and that uh, single will bring up the 50 partnership between Brooke and Shan Masood with pretty even contributions either way just the one leg by so far Extras have been kept down, no overstepping, so they've at least made sure that the runs have been earned. Price bowls to Masood. This is played in defence into the offside, fielded by Ollie Price, who's the one Price brother playing in this game with Tom Price still missing with that, what's been described as a minor rib injury. But he wasn't in the squad for the opening game and not for this one. But the encouraging signs were that he, he was out there doing some bowling in the warm-ups so I think that shows you that he's not too far away but I'll have to wait a little bit to get our first look at the elder of the Price brothers for this season 75 for 3 25 gone you talk about those field changes in the previous over and all, all those fielders went out for Harry Brook for his first ball against Price he hadn't played him previously Good delivery from seeing Dale as he starts off. It's fresh over. Once again, a little bit of movement off the seam. Harry Brook got himself into a tangle, looking to go onto that front foot, playing that forward defensive stroke. Physically looking at the pitch. Something still in there for the bowlers. But that partnership, like Ed mentioned, has gone to 50. And it is really threatening at the moment for Gloucestershire. And all those memories will come back. If they're on that back foot again, victory has, meaningful victory has eluded them for quite some time. And this partnership continues and bring back those memories. Singdale looking for that fuller length, too straight. But Brooke hit it straight to mid on. His huge gaps on the onside. Mid on is the closest one to the batter. It's only three fielders. Square leg is back on the fence and so is the fine leg. Yeah, I mean, the, the reason I go back even that far, just to, to clarify, because, of course, Yorkshire listeners will, will remember Gloucestershire beating them at the end of 2022, but they were already condemned by that point, as they were when they finished the game against Warwickshire here that they won. Next delivery, seeing Dale attacking the stumps, keeping Harrybrook quiet. That is some feat, I have to say. 
So th those were their only two wins in 22. And then in 2021, we had the conference system where Gloucestershire just missed out on getting into the top six. So they ended up in the second division as it was then. And yes, OK, people were trying to win cricket matches still, but, but that was the problem with the conference system. Divisions two and three just didn't have enough on them. So those wins, again, very hard earned and it, there was some great cricket played then. But in terms of everything on the line, you really can go back to, to say, July of 21. Next to Lurie Singh Bale once again hitting to the right areas. Full attacking the stumps. Harry Brook giving him some respect in this over. That's what you can achieve when you bowl right areas even to the best. And Singh Dale has achieved that in this over. And going back to what you're talking about Gloucestershire the last three or four years. I mean, this year though, you could feel already, I mean, they didn't play in Derby. But you see there was a buzz in their camp. They were out there on any given opportunity. They were out there practicing. And even this morning, the, the pre-match routines were pretty intense. As Brooke drives this one again all along the ground, straight to mid-off. Another dot. Yeah, and I think that possibly the most interesting thing that Mark Elaine has said since taking the reins is that he's almost felt that in the past expectations have been a bit too low. In that one of the things that you often heard in the past couple of years was we're very realistic about where we are <laughs> whilst you know i think it, it is important to to have that kind of pragmatism particularly to start a year wrapped him on the pad it's a big shout but i think singdale who just ran right across the the wicket picked the ball on the onside Probably it was missing as well. Yeah, I think I think they knew they weren't getting that one. They they tried their best to sell it, but yeah. End of the over, 75 for three. And I sometimes never understand some of these cliches, particularly the one that is, we are quietly confident. What is quietly confident? Either you're confident or you're not. Oh, well, we don't, you know, <laughs> I think... If there's one thing that Basball can't be accused of, it's being quietly confident. And I think that's that's the sort of the thing that you, you, you know, you, you don't really hear the Australian side be quietly confident, do you? And yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do see what you mean. I think there's this sort of idea of you have the inner confidence, but you don't project it outwards so that, I don't know, expectations are raised, people who, who, who potentially like their sporting sides a little more contained in terms of their <laughs> attitude towards the media um, yes uh, <laughs> it's it's an interesting one we've got a change of bowling again from the pavilion end and Zaman Akhtar is back so just a short two over burst for the off spinner Ollie Price the first delivery is tucked away through the leg side by Shan Masood who moves on to 44 Yorkshire 76 for three and just a couple of overs left until the lunch break and that first session has absolutely flown by we've seen some really attractive cricket Gloucestershire have run in bowled at good pace for the most part pretty good accuracy as well as the fact that Harry Brooks strike rate is under 50 would tell you but as actor bowls to Brook who plays slightly uncertainly at that one but once again, he's got that ability just to dead bat the ball if he needs to. And that's exactly what he's done there. Ball doesn't go very far. But even though he, he did sort of turn the bat a bit on it, still manages to make the adjustment and keep it out. The adjustment is like the bat flow with his stroke play, he goes through and somehow he has the ability, that fluent flow that's coming from his back lift, he has the ability to adjust Back to bowls inside edge or inside half of the bat, maybe inside third, actually. <laughs> that might be a bit generous as it goes up towards mid-on. And not the first time. It's been, been several times now where Brook has looked to play through the offside and it's gone leg side. This time picked up at mid-on. Yeah, the ability that we're talking about to adjust his bat flow, he didn't do it on that occasion. He just went through with the shot. But the first delivery of the over, he did. He's building up quite a few dots now. Seeing Dale bowled four at him and now two more 
Actor Bowles trying to angle that one down through the gully is Brooke a la Joe Root, but doesn't find the gap. It's stopped by Ollie Price in that gully position. You're talking about dots. I mean, eight or nine dots in first-class cricket is not a big deal, but here we're talking about Harry Brooke. Yeah. So you just have to keep an eye on him. He's just wandered around towards square leg, just readjusted his gloves. What is he thinking? He's probably thinking I was timing the ball probably better than this last time I played on this ground. Actor bowls short, pulled into the gap again and for four. Through backwards square leg. He tried the short ball again, did Zaman Akhtar, but that is the second time already that Brooke has found that gap. It's a long boundary out there, but there's nobody who can get to it. Right between deep square and a long leg, and it's 80 for three as Brooke moves up to 26. And that's incredible. Two fielders out, and once again, he plants that front foot. He doesn't go back and across traditionally, so he should be hitting it in front of square where that fielder is strategically placed, but like I said, second time in a row, He's able to just delay his stroke, even from that front foot movement, to just find that gap. Very, very tricky for the captain. Two slips in a gully. Actor bowls. It's another short ball. It's hit up in the air. Can the fielder get back? DeLang is getting himself underneath it, and he takes the catch. And the short ball has worked. Brooke looking to pull. It goes a long way in front of square. And <laughs> it's being lifted up now is Josh Shaw by Marshawn DeLange. And that was a really well-judged catch. Yes, it was a catch that, that should have been taken because he managed to get himself underneath it. But big, tall, fast bowler, he manoeuvred himself under it and he caught it. And that is exactly what Gloucestershire wanted before the lunch break. Just get that one more. Four down makes it very much their session. And they've seen off Brook for 26 as Yorkshire now 80 for four. Couldn't control that pull shot on that occasion. And what a morning for Zaman Akhtar. He's got Root and Brook in the bag. In the morning session, youngster would be delighted and so would be Van Buren because, like we mentioned before, they needed to take that wicket because after lunch the conditions may just ease and if Brook were to be there, he could have really punished them. And now you feel that some sort of normalcy will return to, to the proceedings. And that is a very, very important blow for Gloucestershire. Yeah, I mean, just get that new batter out there for... I mean, it's only going to be maximum two overs, you'd think. And, you know, it's like... It's not quite like at the end of a day where you just want to get somebody out there for a short period of time. But Hill is not going to be able to start his innings properly off here. And, you know, you're always thinking, aren't you, one more one more just just get another one now that they've got that fourth but as you say terrific stuff from Zaman Akhtar when he when he first kind of came to prominence he was on this ground against Leicestershire and I mean it was it was noticeable how much he was able to trouble batters with the short ball he got Rehan Ahmed can remember with an absolute snorter banged in fended it off looped up off the glove and caught its second slip and I know Real Ahmed's a, a more of a lower order batter certainly at test level but you could see the potential that was there and what a couple of scalps for him seeing Dale starts off the fresh over Sean Massoud will pick up a single there's no fielder close to him in front of square on the onside. We'll have to wait for the umpire signal. I think it has been given run, but Char Masood is feeling the pain. I think it missed all the padded area. Just got him above. He's still on his haunches. Yeah. Feeling the pinch. And again, just just when the partnership had, had really started to develop with 55 runs together between Brooke and, and Sean Masood and, and if if there were a bad time to get out I don't think it was ever a good time but, but to get out just before lunch to give them that boost again to take into the lunch break Seeing Dale with four slips goes past the outside edge full of length, still movement in the air and off the wicket and that is really good from Gloucestershire you have to also give a lot of credit to Van Buren who had Ollie Price bowling for just two overs Somehow he felt the need to just bring back Saman Akhtar from the pavilion end. His early spell was from the far end and that change really paid rich dividends instantly. 
And once again, you look at the attacking fields here, realizing the moment Hill would be under pressure as he settles once again to face Singdale. Too straight on that occasion. Mm. Tickled to fine leg. For a single, Hill will be off the mark. Yeah, I mean, you, you can imagine why maybe you just think, oh, go on, I'll try and, try and skittle those stumps second ball. But I mean, after seeing that really yeah. quite ambitious drive, first ball from Hill, you, you're just thinking, just tempt him again, maybe. But... But there we go. It's hard. I mean, t you know, we, it's very easy to sit up here and, and split hairs. But they, they have, they bowled. I mean, this, this must be easily the best session of bowling that Gloucestershire have had for, well, for, for a, much longer than a year, that's for sure. Just two slips for Sean Masood. He pushes this one forward towards mid-off. No run there. And you rightly said the best bowling effort, uh, and also St. Dale talking particularly about him, the first spell, even though he didn't get it right all the time, but you could see he was charging in, he was giving it his all, and the, that one moment where he got the ball in the right areas, he, he got the wicket off Adam Lyth, and now in his second spell as well, with that slightly older ball, he's giving good control to his skipper, and they're bowling well as a unit, which really helps. Singdale's next delivery is short. Sean Masood looking to pull. Went pretty close to the gloves there. No contact on that occasion. Once again, an effort delivery. Good pace on it. Yeah, uh, and you know, particularly these two, Singdale and Actor bowling in tandem. You've got somebody in their ninth first class match in Zaman Akhtar. You've got somebody in their 17th in Singdale. So, I mean, in old money, that's, that's only one full season that Singdale has played so you know we, we we're not expecting them to get it right all the time and it, it is it's really good to see how often they've managed to do it Singdale once again too straight on that occasion Sean Masood picks up another single that has been the feature of his innings he's not been able to find the boundaries he's been able to rotate quite regularly Singdale's over has come to an end. Yorkshire, 83 for four. Just a few minutes to go. Just a one minute on the clock actually left before lunch. They pulled back the over rate slightly, but the four wickets will really be yeah. the thing that'll keep them going. Yeah, it's, it's been worth getting a little bit behind, I think, to, to get the wickets that they have managed. Just a quick scoreboard rundown before... We get to lunch, uh, the other games in this division. Derbyshire have managed a couple of wickets now at Cardiff, where Glamorgan are 60 for two, and it's the tall, nasty, fasty from New Zealand, Blair Tickner, who's got both of the wickets. Actor bowling now, round the wicket to Shan Masood, who looks to glide this one down towards deep third, but he's not managed to pick the gap. Uh, Billy Root for 17, and the triple centurion Sam Northeast has been brought back down to earth by being bowled by Tickner for 11 there uh, at uh, Grace Road, Leicestershire, 127 for three with Rishi Patel on 80 from 80 balls. That will be an attractive innings to watch because he is a fine player, fine stroke maker. Actor bowls, he tried to tempt Shan Masood into a drive and he said, yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. Driven out towards wide, long off, but it's a long part of the ground again. De Lange hauls the throw in towards the striker's end, and that was actually fairly close in the end with uh, the, uh, the throw just a little bit off line, but then it was from a long way out, and George Hill having to get his skates on means that Masood moves up to 49. It's 86 for four. Uh, in the not game, sorry. Not a bad result for Gloucestershire to have Hill no. just before lunch no. to face those remaining deliveries. Definitely a bonus. Northamptonshire 105 for one at Northampton. Emilio Gay 58 not out and Luke Proctor 41 not out after Ryan Higgins removed Justin Broad early there. Warwickshire still unbeaten in Division 1 against Durham. 141 without loss now. Four slips in place. Actor bowls to Hill who punches off the back foot. That's a nice looking shot. And it will get him his first boundary as there's a valiant pursuit from Miles Hammond, but it's an unsuccessful one. And Hill moves on to five. It's 90 for four. I've just been reminded correctly, probably, that the, the bowling performance at Worcester was 
probably better than than this but then i think there are a couple of reasons i mean in terms yeah. of a session i think there are a couple of reasons why even this might be and yes there was a session where tom price took a hat trick so i mean yeah but but against this this quality of opposition as uh, all so beating him there is actor in a beautiful delivery which i think hill had to play at it looked as if it was going straight towards off stump and then it's just left him a bit gone through to the keeper so close to lunch break, I think Akta would have been disappointed with the previous delivery that he conceded for, but dropping back immediately onto that immaculate line length. He'll beat him, he'll be under pressure, counting down the deliveries. Akta in bowls, jabbing at that one, and he's caught behind <laughs> off the last ball before lunch. George Hill has fended at one outside the off stump. A rising delivery from Zaman Akta that took off. He's examining just the bottom corner of his bat that that must have taken. And James Bracey with the catch behind and Gloucestershire have got another. It's been their morning. It's been Zaman Akta's morning as Yorkshire are 90 for five. With his head down, Hill knows that he's made the mistake. Probably not the best of the deliveries. Was slightly shorter and wider, but Hill went for it. He was nervous. He was watching that clock. He wanted to get through to lunch, which he wouldn't now as he walks back alongside his skipper, Sean Masood, who will return unbeaten on 49 after lunch. But this has clearly been Gloucestershire's morning. And now, could you still compare it to that performance against Worcester? Uh, I think with the quality like you were mentioning, probably this is the better session for quite some time. The hat-trick was magnificent, but but yes. Terrific morning for Gloucestershire in front of their home faithful. Uh, they've been so frustrated not to have got out at Derby last week. Nothing that anybody could have done about it. The, the outfield was just too soggy to play on. But what a session to put in after having sat on the sidelines for a round and they are getting warmly applauded off by the Bristol faithful after having taken five wickets in the morning session. Having stuck Yorkshire in, it's not always a... You, know, you, you sort of wonder, have we done the right thing, I suspect, after a, a few overs. But getting that wicket of been so early, I think, really did give Gloucestershire the boost that they made the right decision. We've got really quite pleasant weather as well. And uh, it's been a, a very entertaining morning session, but probably less so if you're of a Yorkshire persuasion. However, Shan Masood is still there to provide some hope after the lunch break. Just run through the rest of those Div 1 scores very briefly. Somerset 130 for 1 at the Oval against the two-time defending champions Surrey. 50s for Matt Renshaw and Tom Lamanby. Uh, in the game between Notts and Worcestershire, Nottinghamshire 83 for 2. Ben Duckett out for 9. Uh, Hampshire 98 for 2 at lunch against uh, Lancashire with James Vince 48 not out with Ali Orr and Fletcher Middleton, the two openers, dismissed. And Essex, who've also recovered from a slightly shaky start, losing Feroz Cushy for a golden duck and Tom Wesley for five. Fifties for Dean Elgar and Jordan Cox, the two new men in the Essex lineup. But for here, uh, with 29 overs bowled in that morning session, Yorkshire 90 for five, Shan Masood scoring 49 of the 90 and has been the glue that has held together what's been a certainly listing ship around him. Uh, Lithe gone for seven, Bean without scoring, Root for two, Brook for 26 and Hill for five the men out, three for 28 for Zaman Akhtar and one wicket each for Josh Shaw and Ajit Singh Dale. We will be back after lunch on the BBC Sport website and app and on the Gloucestershire live picture feed. Uh, but for now, enjoy your lunch.
Get to our broadcast on Gloucestershire versus Yorkshire. Sharf Faisal and myself, Jonathan Doidge, with you for this uh, first half hour spell of this uh, afternoon session where the sun continues to shine and mainly on the hosts because they have Yorkshire 90 for 5, a very strong Yorkshire batting lineup, I should say 90 for 5. And um, if not quite the last hope, certainly not uh, saying that in any. Uh, but um, Sh Shan Masood, last of the internationals, if you like, in the side. Johnny Tallis has played international cricket at uh, under-19 level, and he's now walking out as Yorkshire's new batter this side of the lunch break. Uh, George Hill was out the last ball before it, and therefore there should be just the one delivery left in this over for Tallis Hall to try and safely negotiate. Uh, he can play, as we know, big uh, 100, 180 at uh, Scarborough couple of seasons ago and so the ability is there and if he can stick around uh, and make a score himself and Shan Masood can stay out there then they could still um, look at turning that pressure back on uh, the host side but there's a bit of work still to do just for the moment so in comes actor for this first ball of the afternoon Tadasol there's an appeal for LBW as there was a little bit of shape about the ball. Wraps him uh, pad flap and they've got a leg by from it. So Johnny Tallis will retain the strike, not get off the mark there. And Yorkshire move on to 91 for five. Yeah, it looked high on the first instance, that delivery. But credit to Zaman that really he bowled magnificently. You could say that Harry broke the stroke that he played just on the stroke of lunch having hit him for four earlier in the over. But now we've got accustomed to seeing that's the way Harry Brook plays. He just couldn't get over that. The bounce or the little bit of spongy nature of that bounce. We've seen all the batters struggle with that kind of bounce throughout the session. Sean Masood, who's still there, he did have a couple of scary moments. It's that bounce when you expect that length react to it but the ball never arrived so it's a challenge now and Josh Shaw will begin from the far end this one is shot in the air just away from the fielder and it will go to the fence that will give some confidence to Tarasol his team really needs a partnership Sean Masood does need someone to hang around with him and take Yorkshire out of trouble yeah nicely played just the one partnership of any substance really so far in this innings and you're spot on. They just need to stick together here. Jonathan Tadasol will take uh, every bit of time he needs to try and get himself in and it's not been easy for anybody to get themselves properly in so far on this pitch. Shaw runs in. Good bounce on that occasion. He hit the deck hard. Earlier on in the morning session, we saw Shaw just restricting himself to that fuller length and mainly in swing to the left-handers at the top of the order for Yorkshire. He was the one who got that first wicket. And then bowled consistently, but we didn't see him in that first session again. When, Pru when Buren, he did rotate his bowlers, but we didn't see Shaw. Once again, running in. Full pitch onto the pads, clipped away very, very neatly. That is the short side of the ground, and it will run away very quickly to that boundary. Second boundary of the over for Tadasol. Yeah, very strong off his legs is uh, Johnny Tat. Something, I mentioned that 180 he got at Scarborough. I don't think I'd seen that really in his game up to that innings. Um, touch player, generally speaking, but if you do throw it up there full and straight, then uh, he is very strong whipping it through the leg side and has just showed us that raced away. Two slips in a gully, just the three fielders on the onside. Shaw once again attacking the stumps. Tarasol looking very, very confident. Just pushes it straight to mid off and no run. Important phase of the play because this is what we were anticipating just before lunch that, that 40 minutes of break and like you said, the sun has been shining throughout. It's a little bit of breeze as well. Interesting to see if there is any of such help for the bowlers that was there in that first session. Remember, it's a Kukubara, so 30 overs old. 
So we watch Shaw once again bowling that Tadi off stump shoulder arms from Tatasol, letting it go. Yeah, it's just one of those situations, isn't it, today, where the more moisture comes out of the pitch, the better it is to bat on. You, you just want to be there when to take advantage of that when that starts to happen. This way you would think that those five wickets for Gloucestershire in the first session, they've really put them on top because as the wicket flattens, as we watch Shaw once again, back off a length onto the body, pushed it onto the onside and there is no run. First over comes to an end after lunch. Just four runs off it. Yeah, talking about the wicket easing up and if Yorkshire or not, uh, Gloucestershire are not chasing a big total, they can really get ahead in the game. They can. I mean, you, you just think about sometimes you have those disparities in, in cricket because of conditions and, and in this country, you know, often can be the case. So it doesn't take that long, you know, a couple of hours of extra drying of a pitch and suddenly it can feel quite a lot more benign. And then when you're playing with a kookaburra, which is more benign as a as an instrument to use than a, a Duke's ball, um, batting could become appreciably easier. So they have to graft and grind away and get as many as they can here. Actor is in and bowling here to Masood, who flicks that into the leg side, fielded at mid-wicket. Yeah, that's where your mind will cast back to those two wickets in the final over before lunch. It would have been a completely different equation if Sean Masood and Harry Brook were to resume now in this afternoon session. That's why you have to give a lot of credit to Wen Buren who made those bowling changes and Zaman Akhtar responding. Here is Masood pushing forward to this latest delivery. 50. And it gets him through for a, a single that takes him to another half century. Sean Masood, um, as I say, a player who last year was kind of disappointed in himself for quite some time but still came out of the season averaging 60 and he now has a 50th first class 50 to go with 25 tons against his name he's a pretty good player he's a very very good player indeed and just getting over the disappointment of getting out for a duck in the first game he's responded beautifully wickets fell all around him but he remained Actor through Tattersall, who just caught that towards the inside edge of the bat. It's skewed away down towards long leg, not where he was playing it at, but he'll take the run. And that takes him on to nine. The score on to 101 for five. So they've made it into three figures, but have lost five wickets in getting there. Masood, by the way, 83 balls for his 50, including eight boundaries. Pretty circumspect by his own standards recently, so he took his time, and that was probably the the demand, the requirement. Absolutely, as he's driven this one up to Van Buren, coming round to field at mid-off. Yeah, that's, I think we both agree, and you've probably seen him play a lot more than I have, but um, in the times that I've been involved on the microphone watching Shan Bat, this, the board is, is pretty much constantly ticking, and so... If somebody like that's taking what a strike rate of 60, you can tell that it's it ain't that easy out there. Actor in and uh, Masood just opens the face, tries to run it in the gap between Gully and the cordon, but uh, can't get it through. That last ball completely illustrates what you just said. Perfectly good delivery. Still, Sean Masood on the outlook of runs. He just stays offside of the stays leg side of the ball rather and try to create something out of nothing. We've seen him hit boundaries behind square, playing similar sort of strokes and running it down to third man on that occasion. Got too cramped. And here's Actor again. This time, Masu just pulling across it slightly as it makes its way up to mid on. That will complete the over with uh, him on 50 still and Tadasol remaining on nine. Yorkshire 101 for five. You can get in touch with us if you have uh, any opinions to offer on. The, well, match situation in particular uh, at Sporting Lives One is my handle on X, or you can email BBC West Yorkshire Sport at gmail.com. We have followed each other this morning, but I can't remember off the top of my head what your uh, X uh, <laughs> it's is. It's Hassel Creek One. That's me on X. I'll still keep calling it Twitter for some reason, but we've got to get accustomed to that. And also at Ed Cricket Six for uh, our colleague from 
the half side. Shaw from the far end, two slips in a gully, runs in once again, flicked it very, very neatly, full onto the pads, and he got onto it in a flash. This is a good start from Tartasol. Yorkshire really needed that, and he's looking very, very confident, just putting the bad ball away, and that's all you need to do. Yeah, just uh, over pitching and two straight, and Josh Shaw, I'm sure, will have uh, had plenty of time probably in the nets with uh, Johnny Tallisall in his time at Yorkshire, and he'll know he'll be disappointed in himself, I think, for feeding that. He's still looking for that movement, but it's not there anymore, and remember, he was bowling from the pavilion end in the morning, and if you look at this breeze, this is blowing from our right to left, so he probably won't be aiding his outswinger. Slight change in field, that gully fielder has been removed and it's been put at short mid wickets. There's a square leg in front of square. That is exactly where that ball went. Short of a length though, Josh Shaw realizing that there is not enough movement. Just need to pull his length back. And that's what he's done. A little bit more protection from him on the onside as well. Earlier on he was having just the three fielders, now four. If you have the fine leg and the mid on also in place. So that's a clear indication that he's going to be bowling pretty tight to the stumps as he runs in towards us. Good areas. Just asking Tarasol to come onto that front foot. Nice short stride, but playing well within himself, Tarasol, just not reaching out for the delivery. Good yeah, a bit of cricket. And just a slightly better line, wasn't it? Because whereas he just strayed the leg side of middle stump, he's just gone the off side. He's keeping Johnny Tarasol honest there. And if he wants to play a cross one and try and flick it through the leg side, he's potentially risking being in a bit of trouble. Yeah, that fielder is strategically in place at short mid-wicket. Shaw, sure, not as accurate. This one straying down the leg side. He'll be disappointed with his spell. He said he was the most steady of the bowlers. Probably he didn't try different variations, but he gave his captain good control, and that's exactly what Van Buren wants right now because we see Zaman is on a roll on the other end. They need to bowl in partnership like they did exactly that in that morning session. Yep. Tattersall settles in, back of a length, pushes it back towards the onside, onto that short mid-wicket, and no run. Just married, of course, uh, Johnny Tattersall got married in January to his uh, long-time lady love, Emma. Happy days. Probably he'll... At the start of the new journey, probably he'll, he'll like to have a, a great season. He started off very nicely, I have to say. He's put the bad balls away and kept the good ones out. Two slips ready as Shaw runs in. Outside that off stump, just guided it through. We'll pick up a couple of runs. Once again, good hands, although he was playing away from the body, but he waited long enough to time that ball and collect a couple of runs. Close off the over. Yorkshire, 107 for 5. Yep. Um, and just uh, just having to, to work uh, as they were this morning. One or two slightly more loose deliveries since the lunch break that uh, they've taken advantage of. But uh, certainly not out of the woods yet. And of course, 250 these days for your first batting point. They're going to have to work if they're going to get to that sort of level. But with these two at the crease, more than capable of doing so. Still to come, Matt Milnes can also bat. Matthew Fisher, likewise. Actor in bowling here to Masood, who's got everything behind that. Back to the bowler, no run. Then Ben Code, who's uh, been known to have his scores as well. And then Dan Moriarty bringing up the rear. No place in this uh, 11 today for Jordan Thompson. Unusual, really, since he made his debut at uh, Guildford back in 2019. Famed to uh, have to miss out. But uh, with Joe Root back in the side, somebody has had to step aside. And on this occasion, it is Jordan who's missing out. Matthew Revis also down here as part of the squad as uh, Masood flicks into 
mid wicket here and there's no run but you kind of if you don't know the team sometimes you do know the team early on the uh, the first morning and sometimes you don't today I didn't there was nobody offering that sort of info <laughs> um, but you saw Matthew Revis doing a jog around the boundary edge a few times so you kind of in immediately know that's not going to happen if you if you're playing this morning so you thought he's he's not going to be in the 11 but weren't sure really about the uh, the final choice and who else would miss out from the 13 as Masood takes one I think it might have been a full low full toss that which is just stroked along the ground to uh, mid wicket to cover, I should say. No room. Yeah, we saw you just looking at the pre-match preparations of Yorkshire, and I mean, you were so intense. You're trying to pick up <laughs> things that you needed to know later in the day. <laughs> His actor, or oh, nicely driven back down the ground by Masood, but uh, the bowler managed to stick out a finger and stop that. Yeah, you, you do just, that. You just pick up on the signs, don't you, really, when, you, when you're when sort of used to being here and around and, and seeing what goes on. Yeah, exactly, and that is pretty handy information. I mean, you, you just do your observations, and since you follow them around, you, you kind of know what's happening. Here's the man, actor, once again, short of length. Masood tucks up the front knee. He likes to do that and play the pull shot, but it, something about that delivery meant that he just checked it at the final moment and didn't go through with the shot and just punted it really along the deck to Marchant De Langer, who's there at mid-wicket. All day long, Sean Masood hasn't been comfortable at that length, that back of a length, short length. Somehow that bounce is spongy and the pace of the wicket, he's not got in tune with that. Now here's Back to once again, Masood taking on the field as he so often does and uh, he gets through successfully on this occasion. I mentioned earlier when Ed was on with me that there have been occasions where um, Sean Masood might have been asking a little too much of his partner at the other end to try and get down, as we saw on a couple of occasions last season. But uh, they were OK on that occasion. He's on 51, Tallisville 15. And it's 108 for 5 after 33. We discussed this earlier as well, Sean Masood, that transformation in his game over the last three years, I would say. And one of them is just he's on the outlook of runs just all the time. So that was a pretty regulation push to mid-off. When Buren, if he hadn't had that fumble, probably would have tested Sean Masood's speed. But luckily, he had the fumble. And uh, although he scored a direct hit, but Sean was still in. Sometimes you can term his running like a bit frantic, but that could be earlier in his innings. At this stage, probably he's judging them a bit better and keeping the scoreboard moving. As he's ready to take up the stance against Josh Shaw. Two slips in a gully, three fielders on the offside, a point, cover, and mid off over the wicket. Josh Shaw. Once again, closer to the body, Sean Masood still want to drop it onto the offside and looking for that run. It's a substitute on the field. Is it Zafar Gohar, I think? Mm. We need to work out who is off. He's fielding at covers. He couldn't make the final 11 today. Josh Shaw looking for some control in this spell. Once again, gets ready and runs in. Sean Masood. This is a bit of a shout from behind the stumps mainly. Nothing from Josh Shaw. It was a strangle between bad and pad. But funny enough, the people at the back, they saw it. And Josh Shaw never appealed. <laughs> well, that, that's cricket, I think they say. Because <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't have seen... What Josh Shaw was seeing, and he did an appeal, but the slip caught an end. The wicketkeeper there did. Shaw once again. Sean Masood. Good areas. Good areas. This is good cricket. Building pressure. And if you keep Sean Masood quiet, then you're doing something right because there is a chance where you can attack the newcomer, Tarasol. But at the same time, you don't want Yorkshire to get away with it. 108 for 5 would really, if you haven't watched a single ball, you would think that Gloucestershire are right on top. 
Shot and wide and punished. Sean rode the bounce beautifully. And those hands are so nice. Just in front of square on the offside. Sean, Man Sean Masood continues to grow in confidence. Yeah, I mean, he, he can be guilty as he was last week of, of uh, making mistakes with the shorter ball outside off stump. But it was just a bit too short, wasn't it, from Josh Short. Gave him plenty of sight there. And if he is able to get him to position as he did then, got into a good position. And, uh, yeah, just a, a jab, really, of a cut shot, wasn't it, for four? And I did make a point that he struggled on the short pitch, but that's more towards middle and leg stump line. Flowing drive, beautiful stroke. Sean Masood just leant into it and caressed it. Timing and placement, top class. Yeah, super shot. That was uh, him at his best. Just throwing that one up, up a little bit uh, full, fuller, Josh Shaw, and probably just overcompensating for the ball before. And Masood latched onto that. They talked about people like Brian Lara's bat speed. And he's, he's got pretty quick bat speed as well, hasn't he, Sean Masood? I was going to mention it earlier in the over to a ball he just defended, but it was the way he came down on it. And he was onto that like a rocket. Shaw. Sure. With no swing, he's struggling in this spell. This one is traitor, Sean Masood. Punches it down towards mid-on. Masha Delonga feels. And another innocuous over from Josh Shaw. I don't know what's when Buren thinking at this stage after lunch that that spell really from Shaw has not pr produced the results that he would have expected and not enough support for Zaman Akhtar. Yeah, I think um, th the ball at 34 overs old now is clearly starting to show those signs, isn't it? That it's significantly less effective. Yorkshire would have liked to have still been the three down, wouldn't they, this stage with that in mind, but they aren't. And they've got to deal with what they've got out there. And what they've got out there is Shamasud at the non-striking end and uh, Johnny Tadasol about to face a man actor from this pavilion end who throws one up wide of off stump and Tattersall leaning into that he's stroked it away nicely it's going to have the legs yeah just to make it to the boundary through square cover lovely shot and that's what I was saying about Tattersall being a touch player he didn't go at the ball did he he just got into a good position got all that uh, technical stuff right head over the top of it and just pushed out of the middle of the bat Really good positive movement of the feet. You saw that stride was pretty good. And at this stage, still bowlers are persisting with that fuller length, trying to get that movement. That little session after lunch, just about 20 minutes, we have seen that the conditions have slightly eased in favor of the batters. And this is where Gloucestershire will have to just revisit their strategy, rethink their plans. It's no, more, no longer put the ball in the right place and expect for results. Hector in again, wide of off stump. Tattersall leaves. When you think about players and how they play, when you think touch players like Johnny, it's all in the hands, isn't it? It's the hands and the eyes. You think of other players who've got that, but then they've also got it's in the arms, isn't it, as well as shoulders with some players, you know, where, where the power comes from. But he'll just uh, push it and time it. Come out with what he gets, which is 19 at the moment, 120 for five. Wide of off stump this time, a little bit shorter and an easy leave for Tattersall. So they've put on 30, the pair of them. Uh, mainly this side of lunch, just uh, one ball before the break. No, tell a lie. In fact, they didn't, did they? They came out after lunch and the first ball they faced as a pair was, yeah. was at that point because... Uh, <laughs> They took bats under arms and walked off with one ball left in that over before lunch. Actor, wide of off stump, and again, Tadasol once more just leaning into it. He's just pushed it away, and he'll pick up four more runs. It doesn't matter whether it's power or touch. He still looks uh, graceful, and it's still four runs. 23 to uh, Johnny Tadasol pretty quickly here, and 124 for five. When Buren would have to put his thinking hat on this slight difference in conditions now. Paul is calling that fuller land. There's plenty of gaps and Tattersall's foot movement has been terrific and hands beautiful because he never tried to hit those two boundaries, never tried to hit the ball hard. Now, Hector in again and uh, 
Tadasol watching one go by. But now that Kukubura seam would have flattened, so very little sweep movement, if at all. I haven't noticed any after lunch. And that means that really the batters should enjoy the conditions a lot more than what they did in the first session. And the bowlers would have to work a lot harder. Yeah, uh, actor turns, leaves us behind to go in and bowl to Tattersall again. Wide of off stump once more and left. End of the over, 124 for five. Good afternoon to you, Mark Woods, who's emailed in saying, uh, what's happening with David Milan? That's Mark the Suffolk Yorkie. Um, well, David, uh, we think he's um, concentrating on his white ball cricket, although I did read an interview in one of the national dailies not so long ago where he kind of kept his foot in the door for playing the odd red ball game, but I don't think you're going to see too much of him. Hello to you two, Russ in Berlin. Looking forward to a better season for Yorkshire. He says consistency is the key. What are the commentators' predictions for promotion this season? Well, I was certainly predicting uh, the White Rose County before the season started. Um, I see no reason to change that uh, this early in the piece, although things have not been run into their advantage today. Change of polling from the far end. Ollie Price, who bowled two overs before lunch, did find a little bit of turn, but he was bowling from the pavilion end. And now he's been given the ball from the far end. Interesting to see that there's a deep cover in place. Just one slip, the one close to the bat on the onside. The long off is back as well, and so is deep square leg, just in front of square. Fielder at 45 and a mid wicket and a mid on on the on side. Sean Masood getting ready to face short delivery. Plenty of time for Sean to rock back. There is protection out at deep cover. Another run to Sean Masood and Yorkshire moves to 125 for five. Interesting to see if there is any field changes now for Tarasol. Mid on has been brought back in so regulation mid on and then this just a deep square leg in front of square for the right hander There's no protection in the deep on the offside obviously you won't expect your off spinner to be having a protection on that side slip in place so is a short mid wicket and regulation mid wicket is pretty straight too just this one is turn towards short fine leg no run scored that short mid wicket is just about 15 yards away from the batter but that regulation mid mid wicket is just across his right shoulder round the wicket once again tickled into that onside this time into the gap and a run for Tarasol yeah nicely taken run that as well I'm not sure if I was uh, bowling, I wouldn't have been having a word with Ajit Singh Dale after that and just saying, come on, that's what you're around the corner for there, Sunshine. Let's see you move those first <laughs> couple of strides more quickly. Sean Masood just taps it quietly. Tad Sol was looking for that run. Sean said no. And Holly Pops bowled two pretty decent overs and that's where he was removed from the ball increase by Van Buren and he brought... Zaman Akhtar and that's where the results were produced so that was a bit of a stroke of genius from the skipper Sean Masood just opens that offside up for himself not a bad delivery at all but he sweetly times it away from that short cover fielder and onto the fence this was sublime piece of timing it was I mean it was a full length delivery had to watch it really well you, you sort of run the risk of falling over it somehow but uh, he watched it right onto the bat and certainly hit it hard this time Only Pops firm stroke down the ground the Only Pops got a hand to it but there will be enough time for Tarasol to come back for the second run good over once again for Yorkshire they are building a partnership after lunch these two here over close it at 132 for 5 yeah and you Having had such a great morning session, I think you've got to be a little bit disappointed if you are Graham Van Buren at the moment because 42 runs have been added in seven overs and one ball. 
Um, so the scoring rate's gone up. There's no more wickets been taken. Yep, that may be on account of the fact that uh, the wicket is drying out, and it may be on account of the fact that the ball is becoming significantly less effective. But I think you need, you know, having having been on top and had that been buoyed as you walked off at lunchtime, you wouldn't want to let it slip. And I'm sure that has. I can't believe it wouldn't have been not, you know, wouldn't have been said in the uh, in the dressing room. You'd have been saying, "Come on, lads, we're a great start. We've just got to maintain this now. Let's let's not get them back into the game." A lot of the credit should go to Tattersall as well for the way he's played. Sean was settled, but he, Tattersall was new. Yep, and he's uh, just flicking one off his legs there. Marshall Delango has come back on at this pavilion end and immediately conceded four. And again, just uh, back to Tattersall being so strong off his legs. Didn't really have to do much other than watch the ball all the way onto the bat. Hardly moved his feet there, just flicked it away. The long leg is quite wide. And four from the moment it left the bat. Yeah, runs continue to flow here. This is Van Buren's biggest challenge after lunch. He hasn't been given that control that he had in the morning, especially Josh Shaw. He bowled from the far end, couldn't stem the flow of runs, and DeLonga now conceding a boundary of the first delivery. Yep, and then tucked away for another single backward of square leg. Again, well watched by Tattersall. Moves on to 29 now, 137 for five. And it sort of is beginning to feel like a sign that Marshall Delanger is obviously not slow. Let's get him on now, middle overs, um, and try and use that, that pace to try and create something. Yeah, but he'd need to come up with plans as well because... That strategy would demand different lines and different lengths than putting the ball right up there like it was order of the day in the morning session. So accordingly, the field changes has to be spot on as well. Yeah, De Langer again, uh, just short of length and wide of off stump. And Masood from the crease just leans back, creates a little bit more room and runs it nicely down to third man. Then has a, a bit of a chat with uh, the bowler as he makes his way back to his mark. That's, we mentioned this plenty of times already today that Shan Masood has the ability to make good deliveries go for runs and that was a perfect line and then slightly back of a length just on the fourth off stump Shan staying leg side of the ball just leaning back almost to guide that ball to third man and rotation of strike left hand right hand combination is not getting any easier for Gloucestershire a bit of a laugh exchange between Masood and Delanger as that they both came down to this end Delanger's in again Bangs that one in short of length, but Tattersall this time not interested in playing at it, fading away down the leg side due to the gloves of James Bracey. He thud it into Bracey's gloves. Good pace, slightly off line. There was an element of surprise there as well. Tattersall was surprised, but because of the length, he could let that ball go, but probably not a bad idea at this stage to try the middle of the pitch. The Langer in again, this time throws it up there and uh, Tadassel just drops his bat on it into the offside, then doing the fielding once glorious, always glorious proclaims the uh, Leicestershire uh, Leicestershire, the Gloucestershire even mobile shop I think it is down there to the left and it was glorious this morning if you were a Gloucestershire fan not, not quite always though if this little spell of play Anything to go by. De Langer looks like he was trying to launch that 95 metres as he really put his back into it and almost fell over after he delivered, but it was wide of Tadassel's uh, off stump. And he left it. Yeah, once glorious, always glorious. Go Gloss! Hashtag on top of another building, the roof of another building out to the left. And then the ice cream van as well. I thought Ed might have popped down and you know, brought us three, four cornets back. The new chaps during the break there, but um, I my if you knew my history with ice creams when it came to to giving them to fellow commentators, then you wouldn't be saying that. Last was it last year at Cheltenham? I, I never mind. Come back to that. It's Ollie Price is in to bowl to Shan Masood. This has turned off his pads, dent with that classic manoeuvre of his, where he slides, throws all in one motion, but uh, no chance to get. Shan Masood at the non-striker's end. He moves on to 68, 139 for five. Uh, I bought Kevin James an ice cream, and I think it's fair to say that more of it ended up... On uh, Kevin. Uh, on Kevin and on the floor than yeah. ended up in his mouth. So 
and we also know Kevin James's history with ice cream as well. To be particularly careful with with that, if you remember that particular incident last year, with the the disrespectful ice creams being eaten by the Lancashire team. So oh, yeah, Ke yes. Kevin's Kevin's history with ice creams hasn't been a good one. Price bowling to Tattersall on 29. And on the back foot, this has worked through the leg side. They thought about a single, which probably would have been there in the end, but they erred on the side of caution. Ben Charlesworth at mid-wicket. Out from his slip position, and Price is now sort of wafting fielders away in the manner of a, a wasp, which, as though they were a wasp, which was rather persistent in coming back. It was a dismissive waft of Charlesworth to go to square leg. And the fielder on the leg side boundary has gone to mid-wicket. Price bowls it short, pulled by Tattersall. He's only going to get a single for it, though. Out to the field at deep mid-wicket. And uh, 140 for five. That brings up the 50 partnership between these two. So a 50 partnership between Brooke and Shan Masood. And now one for these two as well, and Tattersall, 30 of them. Price bowls round the wickets, turned away fine on the leg side. De Lang is there to field, but it's another single. And this is starting to feel a little like we've gone from a morning session of mostly four-day cricket to this is, this last period has felt much more like a sort of 50-over game in yeah. terms of the pace of it. Singles being picked up, boundaries as well. Price bowls worked away through the leg side, but the fielders converge on it. And this time there won't be a run. And that was the thing, actually, and it hasn't been like this, but watching a lot of the Ashes last summer, you, sometimes you did feel as if you were watching a 50-over game, because the field set back, you had singles being picked up all the time. Price bowls is looped in the air and it's going to fall safe. Price runs into the non-striker. He would have had difficulty getting there anyway, but... Certainly no harm, no foul, because Jean Massoud's perfectly entitled to be there. And, and I, it would have been an extraordinary effort to have got a hand on that. But encouraging sign there for Ollie Price is one of the first false shots we've seen since the lunch break. And Yorkshire won 41 for five. Yeah, no, nowhere near it was it really. It was, it was always safe, but uh, it was a little risky. I think Johnny might have played just a little bit too soon, just closed the face a little bit too soon. It felt like a leading edge. And he would have had a, an anxious moment or two there as, as he was watching the ball loop up, but he survived it. So 30 for him. Masood on strike 69. 141 for five. And a change to the feel about this as Delanger goes round the wicket to the left-handed Masood, who's showing the maker's name as he... Drops that one back down the pitch. They've still got the two slips in place. And absolutely, why wouldn't you? Because if they can split this partnership and particularly get rid of Masood, then they'll have Johnny Tellisall batting with the lower middle into the tail. I'll fancy the chances of wrapping things up maybe earlier than they might have thought looking at the Yorkshire team sheet as Masood drops one out into the offside and there is no run yeah I think like you say you just be thinking about however you can do it just just Van Buren will be thinking just buy me one more and it might not be pretty it might be another or you might have to rely on another error from Yorkshire's batters as the last two wickets have been really but just, just get me one more to Langer in Masood rocks onto the back foot. He's got that one away up towards third man. Now then, if there was a TV umpire here, they'd be having a look at that. It was flicked back. There was also some contact with the rope from this distance. Impossible to tell. And Josh Shaw, honest chap, says, uh, no, I flicked that in fine. And they get two. They're all honest from Yorkshire. So I hear. At least that's uh, what they say. Well, that's Yes, that was th the rope certainly moved quite a long way there. Mm. Um, as you say, it would have would have needed a television official. The Langer in. He's trying to York him here. It's been flicked away down the leg side for four off the bat of Shan Masood. Uh, despite the uh, appeals 
from a number of <laughs> Gloucestershire representatives there. And despite the fact that Shun has now been hopping back towards his crease, <laughs> I don't think Marshall's going to be especially pleased that that was given as runs. But one way or another, it was four, and it was such a fine deflection, you kind of felt it must have been missing leg. But I, and, and maybe he got a little inside edge onto his boot, but he was certainly hopping towards the crease after he'd seen that it had been given as runs, of course. <clears throat> Moving swiftly along, 147 for five. Delanger is in, and Masood flicking off his legs this time. It was clear back contact on this occasion, and he picks up one to the uh, fielding Graham van Buren. These new training shirts, or the hoodies, I should say, for... Gloucestershire on display over on the far side of the ground and I'm I'm trying to work out what sort of creature they they make them look like well they, they they're sort of like bees but it's the, the, the yellow hoodie over the top I'm trying to get it Delanger to Tattersall who just uh, drops that out into the offside and there is no run Tattersall 30 Masood 76 148 for five sorry they're sort of half black half yellow the top mm. half is yellow and the bottom half is black and they sort of i don't know they kind of look sort of but yes minions it, that's what they are i knew there was some sort of creature which which they looked like it's kind of bordering on a gaudy yellow but just just doesn't quite step into that so it's bordering isn't it it's just about it's, it's loud one percent on the right side of the line you certainly know they're coming, but yes, it is, it is quite minion-ish. If that's even a word. I'm sure it isn't. Long off back, long on up. Ollie Price starts his new over to Shan Masu. This is cut away comfortably out to deep cover point, where Zaman Akhtar is prowling, and a single is taken, 149 for five. So... The most wickets that have fallen of any of the championship games so far have come here. Leicestershire have lost four to Sussex. In some ways they can console themselves with that fact, Leicestershire, but at the same time, this has built up slightly concerningly since the lunch break. Short leg in place and a slip as Price bowls to Tattersall. Short ball down the leg side and... Tattersall will be rather furious with himself that he's not managed to pick a gap there. Finds the hands of Marchand de Langer. Backward square. Yeah, missed out a bit, didn't he? Mm. Price bowls. Sweep shot, which has gone in the air and well in front of square. And it's just plugged a little as it landed, but it landed very close to the boundary. And it hops over it for another four. So Tattersall continues to profit. And that's the 150 up, 153 for five. Yeah, you wouldn't say was, that was uh, JT at his most convincing, but there is no man out there, so he's entitled, once he gets it over the top, to uh, to play that in that area. Slightly odd location for a slog sweep, but it worked. He had to be quick on his feet there because that was boring in towards the stumps as he backed away and cut a ball, which looked as if it was off the stumps out towards backward point. But... He is quick on his feet, though. If there's one thing that Gloucestershire supporters will know about Tattersall, as Price bowls to him, and he comes forward, plays softly to short leg, is that Tattersall can score runs on what's sometimes termed raging Bunsen's, because he played two games on loan for Gloucestershire back in the 2021 season at the Oval and at Grace Road. Both those pitches were turning sharply. This is cut once more by Tattersall, who gives us himself some room, and that's running out towards the deep backward point boundary. Dent is rapid, though, and manages to haul it in. But it's going to be another three. Tattersall 37 to his name now, and that is 37, I think, from exactly that number of balls 156 for five we've had 40 overs and it didn't seem that long ago that Yorkshire's run rate even with Harry Brook at the crease was about two and a half now it's fours which you know it, as long as they keep picking up wickets it doesn't matter but as yet they've not taken one since lunch and they're still searching 
for some sort of a combination that can provide some sort of sustained pressure. Price is through five overs for 26. The occasional ball's done a bit, but not much more than that. And then they've pretty much done a, a cycle through most of the seamers now. And runs continue to be scored at a healthy rate. Marchant de Langer continuing from this pavilion end of the ground. Past umpire Peter Hartley, right arm over. It's wide of off stump and offers Dadasol the opportunity to try and get his hands through it. But once again, he chooses the touch option and it's out to point. And there is no run. You can see Singh Dale warming up at mid on. I think he's the only one that's not been used since lunch. A couple of spells in the morning session. De Langer again. Mm, now then, short of length, that assault. Yeah, deals with it of a fashion. Along the deck, it goes to Gully. Sun just uh, behind cloud at the moment, and there are a few clouds around, but nothing of any major substance. I think we look to be set fair for a full day's play here. I'll say it again: a full day's play. As Delanger is in, good delivery. Tattersall is offering the bat at that wide of off stump, probably about four and a half stump width. This goes for a little pat of the pitch after it's gone through. Doesn't feel like Delanger is quite managing to maintain the pace he was generating earlier on. Yeah, well, that's what I think you would say if you're in the Yorkshire camp. Get them into their second, their third spells of the day, even fourth. That's it. Uh, Slung right up there, wide of off stump, and again diverted out to point by Tadasol. He's into his what his eighth over here, so it's not been um, a crushing workload so far. But it doesn't quite feel like he's uh, pounding in quite as quickly as he was earlier on. But here we go again. And Tadasol this time gets the delivery wide of off stump and played it nicely there. Just touched that away wide of second slip between there and Price who is at gully and picks up four through the vacant third man region. Some people incandescent at this stage for not having a third man in there. Mm. It has to be said there haven't been that many runs scored down there as yet but I think that boundary you don't mind so much. There have just been too many boundaries since lunch that have been through just some off-line, off-length deliveries. I think, you know, it was a, it was a good shot from Tad, so I'll take nothing away from it, but you, you mind that a lot less than being pulled or clipped off the pads. Delanger in again. Tadassel shouldering arms to the final ball of the over. He'll finish that over on 41, which he's got to in pretty sharp time. Masood, meanwhile, almost unnoticed, has uh, just uh, kept ticking along to 77. 160 for five. They've added 70 since uh, the lunch break. Yeah, 70 in, what's that, 11.1 overs. So, yeah, <laughs> that is really beginning to get away. And they, they're they going with Ollie Price at the moment, which is considering, probably especially, that Masood is the prize wicket, turning the ball away from him. But I just wonder whether Van Buren might think about giving himself a bit of a bolt. That's short and wide and it's been cut out towards deep cover. And a single added. 78 now for Shan Masood. But, you know, Van Buren would be more of a potentially controlling spinner. Tends to bowl a bit flatter and a bit quicker through the air than Price would. He's usually pretty accurate, but potentially that might lead to him being lined up. That's short. That has been lined up, and it's gone for four. Tattersall had a go at that pull shot the previous over and planted it towards De Langer at short fine and didn't get a run. This time, he's made no mistake at all and has pounded it through backward square leg for four. 165 for five. Tattersall continues to pick up boundaries. Nine of them he has. And Captain Van Buren's just got to raise his troops as there's a shout for leg before, but I think his pads got outside the line of off, judging by where it's finished. 
just about managed to snap round to the monitor. And I think it seemed to be that he'd thr thrust excuse me, that front pad outside the line. Price in, bowls fly to deliver, it's driven, but not past the bowler. Moves smartly to his left in the follow through. Sort of in a position at the moment where they, they need some overs rattled through, but they could do with them a bit cheaper than it's coming at the moment. That's short again, and that's going to be four more this time. The other side of Zaman Akhtar out on the deep square leg boundary. And Tadassal has hit double figures in terms of his boundary count now. 49 from, I think, 47 deliveries. 169 for five. It is really, it's more than pleasant actually out there. It's, it, it's. I'm, I'm almost going to say it's gorgeous. This is a full delivery which is defended to complete the over. It's picked up by Bancroft who has the shin pads and the helmet on. And we're through 42 overs, 169 for five. But it's, you know, it's not, not blazing sunshine. But it is... The air temperature is, is warm and the breeze is quite pleasant. Shall I do this update as part of my commentary Ooh. now that I'm on? Okay. Why not? Be treated. Ah, oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> Sounds like we've got Luther Van Dross. That went well. <laughs> I can I'll sing it to sing like. along, yeah. Never too much. Never too much, never too much, apparently. Never too much for you, Doji. 169 for five as De Langer is round the wicket and uh, Masood to the strains of Luther Van Dross runs one down to third man. Uh, so what you're going to get, folks, is an update from me where you won't be able to hear Toby Foster. Yes, Toby Foster, he of Phoenix Knights fame, introducing me. I'll try and make it coherent in between deliveries. De Langer back to his mark. Two slips and a gully. We've got a point. Cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket. And a long leg. Tattersall. Waits. Tries to flick this one a little bit squarer on the leg side, but uh, unsuccessful in doing so. 49 from as many deliveries so far. De Langer, ever enthusiastic, and he comes pounding in once again. And it's up there, and it's run away just wide of uh, the outstretched arm of Price at Gully. And we bring Johnny Tadassel two runs. That takes him to a very good 50, and a much-needed 50 as far as his team are concerned. A 13th first-class half-century to go with a couple of tons that he's scored. And... As I say, 12 previous half centuries, but I'll wager not that many of them more important in match situation terms than this one. From 90 for 5, he really has helped to try and get Yorkshire onto some sort of footing in this match. Still in their first innings, of course, first innings of the match itself. 172 for 5. The Langer in. And uh, Tadassel watches this one fade away down the leg side into the gloves of Bracey. You can you can talk. I'll give you a okay. I'll give you the signal when uh, he's about Just to come to me. We've still got Luther. Just give me a kick. Luther yeah. going on. Yeah, and still we're seeing these strays in terms of of line and length, and you know, in some ways it was going to be hard to follow up the morning session, but. Do look as if they need a bit of a lift now, Gloucestershire. Ooh, now then, that's going to hurt uh, tomorrow morning, probably, as De Langer's latest delivery sees Tadis will just fall over it slightly as it's angled down the leg side. He's, he's just pretending he's rearranging his trousers, but even though he's got a thigh pad on, at the pace that De Langer's bowling, I think he's probably still going to feel that just a little yes, bit. Yes, it made quite a... Well, it wasn't a, a pleasing mm. thud f in f from his point of view, but it certainly made quite the thud in our mic. Langer in again and Tadassel 
Choosing to leave this one to complete that over. At 172 for five then. Tattersall 51, Masood on 79. Oh, sounds like we're going to the fade bit now, so... Okay. This will be my turn. Good afternoon, Toby. Yeah, Yorkshire 172 for five, which represents a bit of a comeback. They had a very difficult morning. They lost the toss this morning, were put into bat, um, and uh, with so much moisture around in the country um, at this stage, and Bristol's been no different. Uh, early season matches like this you know, are often difficult for uh, the team batting first. Yorkshire found it uh, that way. Finlay Bean was out in the very first over without scoring. Adam Lythe made just the seven, and then Joe Root, uh, only the two before he was LBW to Zaman Akhtar, who then took the wickets of both uh, Harry Brook for 26 and George Hill for five uh, in the closing couple of overs before the lunch break. So 90 for five at the break. It was a struggle for the Yorkies this morning, but uh, skipper Shan Masood has been out there since uh, the first wicket fell. He's on 79 not out now. Uh, but his presence in the middle has been slightly overshadowed, really, by Yorkshire's number seven, Johnny Tattersall, since he went out there. Uh, the first ball after lunch, he's just made it to a 13th first-class half-century. He's 51 not out. And they have, at the moment, recovered to 172 for five. Marvellous. And you've not missed anything, just a defensive prod from... Masood, oh, that's an inside edge though, and that was a flashing attempted to dry through the covers and was very nearly the moment that Gloucestershire were after to try and turn their fortunes around in this afternoon session with Zaman Akta returning to the attack from the Ashley Down Road end and inducing the false shot from Shan Masood, but even that has brought Yorkshire a run as he moves his total to 80. So 173 for five and they're not that far off doubling their total since the lunch break. 90 for 5. Shan yeah. Masood was on 49. And in just 55 minutes of yeah. play. Actor bowls. This is cut by Tattersall for more runs. Back at a square on the offside. It's running out towards the boundary. The outfield in that particular part isn't quite as quick as some others, but they'll still make it back for three. As the throw is launched in. And it's 176 for five. The sun very much returning. In fact, it's this is more than hazy sunshine now. It's full on blaring and a few more people on the balconies of the flats at the far end this morning. Some of them seem to have just gone in for a little while, but very well populated actor over the wicket bowls, edged by Shan Masood, but not really a, a full-on flashing edge. Down to deep third, it goes for a single. 177 for five. Shamasu to 81. I notice Durham are still being welcomed back to the top division by Warwickshire's openers. 228 without loss now. In 41 and a bit overs. Centuries for Rob Yates and Alex Davies. This is a shouldering of arms by Tattersall to this next offering from Zaman Akhtar. And a well-judged leave. I mean, I must say... I, I bet the, the skipper on his post-day interview will say he still thinks it was the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bowling attack of Matthew Potts, Scott Boland... Ben Rain, Bryden Cass, Callum Parkinson. Firing blanks at the moment. Actor Bowles pushed quietly back with a point. Hammond Fields, and oh, there's no run there. 177 for five at the end of that over. And it's, I mean, the, the economy rates as well. I mean, ben Rain is the cheapest, as he so often is, but he's going at four point, I'll call it 4.4 .4 and over. Cast has gone for 41 from his four and a half overs. Oh well, I mean, it's, it was clearly a decent place to bat last week as well, Edgbaston, but still, you would 
not I certainly wouldn't have imagined Durham's start to the return to Division 1 going quite like that no 20 is plenty as um, De Langer is in around the wicket and with an open face Masood punches that one out to point and there is no run just a fascinating we love we love cricket for so many reasons don't we but what a fascinating day already we've mm. only had about three hours roughly of play two hours of which were completely dominated by Gloucestershire and now that's been now dominated by Yorkshire and uh, look at the board 177 for five you still don't know which way it's going to go it feels like it's getting easier to bat out there and Delanger's over well not even pitched this one it's a full toss wide of off stump low full toss and uh, Masood watched it well and has punched it away through the covers for a very nicely played four. Takes him into, well into the 80s now, 85. And uh, it does feel like a different game. Clearly Gloucestershire have banked those five wickets and some big names among them. But they would love to see the back of both this pair, but certainly the Pakistan skipper. Yeah, and you do just wonder what, at the moment, what's the way that they're hoping to, to get him out. At the moment, it kind of feels as though they're trying to mix things up a lot and, and hope that just something that they try works. Here's the Langer again. Once more, it's a good length delivery this time, which felt like it caught Masood possibly on the glove or the bat handle even as it uh, goes out into the offside. And I think what we're still seeing is that if you bowl that length There's still that something line, there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he... De Langer, that is, uh, had some joy against Tattersall in his previous over bowling there. That still, I think, is the place to bowl. De Langer in again, and uh, Masood tucks that away out to point. No run. Did he, did he throw the javelin with any, any real success? I, to sure. be honest, I'm not sure, but I, I, I certainly wouldn't put it past him to have been sort of South African schools, that sort of thing. Mm. I know he was... I sort of get the impression he was quite... I haven't, to be honest, I haven't fully asked him, but I get the impression he was pretty serious about it. Of course, he's not the only any South African javelin thrower playing cricket. Tasman Britt scored a century the other day for South Africa's women. She he's again, that's uh, dropped into the leg side by Masood, who was keener for taking on the field for a single than his partner Johnny Tallisall was, and so they've stayed put. Of course, she was an Olympian. Even Tasman Brits, the javelin throw. So, oh, I, I, having said that, actually, she was supposed to be an Olympian, but I think she got injured on the stroke of it. I think that was the the story. Uh, but yeah, quite a quite an accomplished athlete. The Langer, it's wide of off stump, and Masood pulls about out of the way. End of the over. One eighty one four five, and I think it's time for me to step off. Hmm. Yep, we'll get Shah Faisal back on. And I'm trying to think. Shamika Karunaratna was another one. Sri Lankan international all-rounder. Quite a, a fiery individual. I'm pretty sure he was a, a pretty accomplished javelin thrower for Sri Lanka as well. I mean, you can see how it goes hand in hand, I guess, with with fast bowling, but then it's slightly odd that Tasman Brits is, <laughs> is a pure batter. Yeah, and she's got that Olympic rings tattooed yes. on one of her arm, and that's her celebration when she reaches the landmarks. Very, very good batter. Mm. Top of the order. Make a very formidable opening pair with Laura Fofar, the South African skipper. Talking about javelin throwers, who would have believed that the world champion and the world silver medalist would come from Pakistan and India. <laughs> Neera yeah. Chopra is the, the world champion. And Arshad Nadeem, who was a former fast bowler, he is the silver medalist. We watch Akhtar once again running in, looking for that breakthrough. Just back of length outside that off stump. And last over, you're talking with Doji. That line and length, still something in there for the bowlers. If in the morning session you were looking towards that fuller length of that six to eight meter mark, 
all you need to change here is just pull that back to that 8 meter length keeping the same line just around about fourth off stump there's still a little bit of help there for the bowlers but they mixed it up too much as the next little reach back of a length and Terrasol plays it quietly towards offside and no run yeah I, I, I think it's because it's happening less often I think it's easy to lose the faith that it will happen at all and so you do just go searching and you go go reaching and you think okay we managed to get Brooke out on the pull shot so so maybe we try that or maybe we should go for some Yorkers. Akhtar once again that fuller length driven nicely into the covers really impressive from Tarsal though the way he came in after the fall of all those wickets and he's been very proactive he's outscoring Shan Masood clearly which is not a mean feat at all and he, in a way, took all that pressure away from Shan Masood that has allowed Shan to just get back into his groove and just bat in his bubble to slip Senegali for Akhtar. Back of a length, shoulder arms. Good line, good length, and good discipline from Tarasol as well. And actually, I, I missed in recent times a, an even more notable javelin throw played international cricket, another South African, Sunet. Falyun, who was, I think, the silver medalist in 2012 in the javelin. And, you know, it's something that you, you'd have been so much more used to that sort of thing in, in times gone by. So many dual internationals and people who, who play cricket for Gloucestershire and football for Bristol City. Rovers. Yeah. Back of length, the next delivery. Hopping was Tadasol. Still was managed to rotate the strike. Just behind square on the onside, Delanga. The big fast bowler is slightly caught on the heels and the scoreboard keeps ticking along the left hand right hand combination it's a really big challenge there for Van Buren as well who was I thought terrific before lunch with his changes and his field placings he really hasn't come up with a plan after lunch his bowlers probably has let him down this spread the ball around a little bit Sean Masu settles in after Back of land, not a bad delivery, but this is exquisite from Sean Masood, just riding the bounce and using his wrist to good effect to find that gap just behind square on the offside. He's, he's got that ability just to kind of pull his hands in, doesn't he? he? He plays with his elbows almost tucked right into his body and plays that cut shot to a ball that's not short and it's well, it, it's a bit short and it's not wide really but he still manages to force it through that offside uh, and it's something that not many players can do with that at least with that success rate because you know you'd, you'd say well that's a bit of a dangerous shot you might play on and, and and as this surface gets slower which it almost always does then you know you might expect that to be a mode of dismissal for him that you might try and almost bowl for even but you're going to have to be prepared to have some fielders to protect the boundaries as well exactly and you you said it's cut short but it's not your traditional back and no. across cut short he somehow just picks up the line of the ball stays left side of the ball and kind of leans back a little bit for, for just those arms to go through and either he turns the wrist at the last time or he just give it a flourish not the full fledged cut shot as we will which a bowling change here yeah it's like a sort of it's, it's a cross between a cut shot and a sort of back foot square drive exactly indeed bowling change Ajit Singh Dale is back and bowling from the pavilion end this is jabbed away by Tattersall off the back foot and half stopped at backward point there will be a single just wondering from the body language there whether Gloucestershire felt that might not have been a run at all 187 for 5 Tattersall moves to 56 partnership ticks towards three figures See, exactly because this rotation of stri strike is really annoying Van Buren and the bowlers they can't settle into a plan can't settle into a good line and length and here there was a chance where they could have kept Tatsal on strike that little fumble allowed for left-hander Sean to get back on strike Singdale is probably going around the wicket it's like changing fields as well fielder from third has been brought up two slips now a ring of three fielders on the onside mid on short mid wicket 
in a square leg in front of square. Nobody down on the third boundary. Seeing Dale Bowles. This one comes back towards Shan Masood. Clipped down two long leg for a single. He was into the 90s. 188 for five. Just a hint of, of maybe a bit of a bit of movement through the air now there. Yeah, the, the breeze would be helping that in swinger. He's changed the angle as well. Probably they've realized now that they don't want to give any room to Shan Masood. That once again has to be a little risky because you have very little margin of error. You just stray slightly towards the pad on a fuller length and Sean will clip you all day. But they've realized that they need to cut down those runs towards backward point in third man against Sean. Come up with a different plan. One extra catcher for Tattersall. Two slips in a gully. Singdale over the wicket bowls to Tattersall who plays a <laughs> jabbing pull shot which has worked pretty well. He split the gap between mid-on and mid-wicket and they'll get at least two here. They th didn't quite run that second one especially hard and they seem pretty content to stay at the two as Van Buren fields from mid-on and that does bring up the three-figure partnership between Tattersall and Shan Masood. How appropriate it's been. Sorry about Sorry about that. No, no, no. How appropriate was that stroke? Because that really sums up the innings of Tattersall. He's been proactive, short back of a length, fourth off stump, just went back and rolled his wrist and got through the cap on the mid-wicket. So annoying for the bowlers. But this is what he has been since his arrival because he's kept the scoreboard moving at a good rate and the pressure is back on Gloucestershire. Singdale is in and bowls and tapping that one out to point. And there's no run. Once again, soft hands, but you see the intent in Tattersall. Even that delivery, he dropped and he immediately looked up to see if there was an opportunity of runs. And this is a terrific knock under pressure. Yeah, um, he's been more than busy as Tattersall because you, know, you tend to think of busy as somebody who's picking up ones and twos here and there. And he has done that when he can, but he's scored 10 fours. Been scoring boundaries. Singdale bowls. Oh, he's bowled him. He left it and it's cannon into his stumps. And that is what Gloucestershire were after. Tattersall is absolutely disconsolate with his decision to leave that one. And he's having to drag himself off. He stood there in disbelief for a moment, but he's going to have to go. And it's taken over an hour, but it has come at last the breakthrough. It to be honest, it didn't look like it did a huge <laughs> amount, that delivery from the replay I've been able to see, but it was just a misjudgment. And Tattersall goes for a very well-made 58. But the wicket falls just before the 200 comes up. Psychological milestone, maybe. But Gloucestershire get the breakthrough they were after. The partnership worth bang on 100 in 18 overs. But it's at an end. 190 for six. A horrible error of judgment there because... Probably it went on and hit middle and off, not even the outside of off stump. And there wasn't a great deal of movement. Singdale does ball from pretty wide of the crease. So that's the angle. That was the only thing on that delivery. But Tarsol walks back to a very generous round of applause from the spectators. He played beautifully. Got his team back into the game. But now he departs and Yorkshire 190 for six. So Matt Milnes strides to... The crease, former Kent man who uh, we had the pleasure of having him on commentary actually last year for this fixture up at Headingley, one of several special guests we had there. And I know we say this about a lot of people because I think cricketers in general are very nice people, but you really could not meet a nicer bloke than Matt Milnes. Really just a, a, a really, really open and, and warm person and very much enjoyed sitting next to him somehow i managed to end up asking him what his favorite cake was and i can't even <laughs> i can't i can't remember what it was you know so sort of thing is you've got a, you've got a cricketer next to you sort of think you should ask them some probing questions and somehow i ended up asking him what his favorite cake was he's got a pretty decent record average of just over 19 and so you know coming in at eight yeah you'd you'd feel that that maybe now you are starting to get into probably more the bowlers who bat rather than just the bowlers but certainly Gloucestershire will be hoping there's an end opened up and, and again their hope will be this is the wicket that again just sparks 
the attack back into life. Just two slips in a gully, as this is a short ball from Singdale to start things off. You can hear the grunt of effort as he let that one go. Not a bad bumper, but it was well ducked by Milnes to end the over 190 for six. Good over from Singdale. You saw the passionate celebrations after he dismissed Tarasol and a slightly longer follow through on that last delivery, which really thudded into the gloves of Bracey. So he's, he's put his effort all day long. I mean, you. As a captain, it's a pure delight to have someone like him who would just run in. And at times, we were critical that he didn't get it right all the time. But these are the type of bowlers you want in your lineup as he receives a warm round of applause. When there was a partnership like the way it was between Tarasol and Sean Masood, that's the kind of bowler seeing Dale, the captain, would really want because he would run in regardless. And although he got lucky with the dismissal, but you cannot take anything away from him for the effort and we saw Akhtar starting a fresh over Sean Masood once again at times we've seen with this cover drive that gets the inside half of the bat which means that the wicket is not absolutely flat there's still something on for someone like Sean Masood who's batted for a very very long time got a substitute fielder out at deep backward square by the way Joe Phillips is on the field Akhtar's next delivery. Shan Masood plays it quietly towards mid-on and no run. Another promising young top-order batter, Joe Phillips for Gloucestershire. I'm sure we'll see him in action later on this season. Really impressed in the early going last year. Played a couple of championship games, scored a, an impressive half-century against Worcestershire at Cheltenham and a half century against the New Zealanders on this ground in a T20 match. After round the wicket tucks Sean Masood up. That's the latest plan of attack that Gloucester has come up with against Sean Masood. They do not want to give him any room outside the off stump. But the shame about that T20 match was though that they, they, they started off saying it was an official T20 so Phillips had made a 50 on his T20 debut and then they got rid of it as a T20 match it was just a, a tour match so that was uh, kind of a shame from that point of view after Dushan Masood another flowing drive finds fielder at mid off no run so was it because the visitors they played more than 11 no just it wasn't I think they just decided that that it it just weren't going to have T20 status I'm not sure why because yeah that, that would have definitely meant that it wouldn't be an official T20 but like I say it was to start with and there were some, some quite impressive moments in that Tommy Borman making what was like, sort of his debut but now wasn't <laughs> another, <laughs> another young batting prospect Akhtar to Masood soft hands there's a chance at the non-striker and directed the umpire shakes his head immediately he got himself into a very good position Hassan Adnan but Sean Masood was quick I'm pretty sure if we had the third umpire, it would have gone upstairs. Excellent bit of fielding there from Van Buren. Yeah, he is sharp. He's not a man generally to take on. We've seen a lot of the seam bowlers fielding at mid-off and mid-on, but Van Buren will just crop up there sometimes, and he's quick off the mark, and he hit direct, and, and quite often you almost feel here that Sometimes you might get the umpire just to raise their finger because of the direct hit as much as anything else, but Hassan Adnan was absolutely convinced that Sean Masood had made his ground and he was in the best position to see. Three slips now for Zaman. That's edge and dropped. Oh, that was a genuine edge and I think it carried. Yeah. And Bancroft, who took a very good catch earlier, Ollie. Yeah. Ollie Price were there between the two and an opportunity went to begging. Yeah, he, he flashed in front of Charlesworth, didn't he, to take that catch earlier to dismiss Adam Lythe. And it was the right decision because it wasn't going to carry through to Charlesworth there. I don't know, I, I haven't had a chance to look at it again, but it just it, it looked as if it was, to be honest, a fairly regulation catch but it's gone down in some ways there'll be 
consoling themselves with the fact that at least it wasn't Shan Masood, but they would have dearly loved to have, as they like to say, gone bang bang there <laughs> with Zaman Akta potentially getting his fourth wicket. I mean, he, he's had to move across to his left, just looking at it again, but it was always his catch. There wasn't really any uncertainty as to whether he should leave it for first slip. And it's gone down, and that is a real chance. Kind of begging. Singdale to bowl again with Masood on strike. This has worked away straight to Van Buren, who shies at the stumps and tries to catch Milnes off guard at the non striker's end. I think he was alert anyway, even if it had hit, but not a bad thought from Van Buren because the backing up was there from Shaw. Yeah, Van Buren has been very accurate today. At least two direct hits for memory, even earlier on. There yes. was one when he fumbled and he recovered quickly and then was so quick and accurate to hit the stumps direct. He's very, very quick and, and places himself in those positions. Now he's at mid-wicket. But yeah, that opportunity. Means a man after who's bowled brilliantly. Singdale round the wicket. Bowls. This is guided by... Shan Masood through backward point out to the rope and they will take a single. Gloucestershire quite happy not necessarily absolutely to give him a single because they've not put everybody back there but they're going to try especially from this pavilion end where it's a long old way out there you can cut down quite a lot of yardage by having a fielder at deep backward point and you can cut down quite a lot of runs that Shan Masood likes to score through that area so, keeping it down to a single, getting Milnes on strike. Shan Masood to 92, 192 for six. Three slips, Singdale bowls to Milnes, tucks him up. Uh, hand off the bat there from Milnes, even though it wasn't that short, but that will encourage a fast bowler any time you see that happen. Just, he might be a little bit concerned about some of the rough stuff. Yeah, and it was hard length, he just banged it in slightly shorter than back of a length and it looked like it did jack back in so something in the bowlers but you cannot just float the ball and just put it there and it will do things for you you've got to put a little bit more effort like Singdale is doing Singdale is in, good leave from Milnes wide of the off stump and it goes through to James Bracey so this is again we're sort of talking about that rebounding from adversity well, they've, they've managed to stick in there. They threw the ball to Singdale, who was the one bowler who hadn't bowled since lunch. He was a f not quite, I don't think you quite put it this way, to say it was Van Buren's last throw of the dice, because it certainly wasn't. But in terms of going through his options, cycling through them, Singdale was the one who hadn't bowled. Bring him on, he takes the wicket. Singdale bowls short, and Milnes ducks under it with relative comfort. Through it goes to the keeper. But... Now again, you've got your first dropped catch of the season. And I'm sure, especially given it's the overseas pro in Bancroft, who is here for the full season, all formats. He told me last week he was really thrilled to be able to play a full season. He wanted to play a full season. I get the impression that Gloucestershire were the team that he wanted to play the full season for as well. Singdale bowls, attempted drive from Milnes, but he cloths it out towards cover and there's no run. Ends the over, just the one run from it. And in fact, there have only been two runs in the two overs and a ball since the wicket. 192 for six is the score. Ends over number 49. Uh, you're listening to live cricket on the BBC Sport website and the app and via the Gloucestershire live picture feed Ed Seaborn and Shah Faisal with you at the moment Jonathan Doidge will be back in around about 10 minutes time every ball of every game available on the BBC Sport website and app the live tech service there as well keeping you up to date with all the wickets and all the big moments that fall around the country as well and there were plenty big moments here mm. I think we were hogging things a bit this morning <laughs> <laughs> Root and Brook coming and going. Zaman from the far end to Shan Masood. Clips it neatly behind square onto the onside for a single. 
keeps ticking along and so does Yorkshire. This is developing into an engrossing contest because wicket has, wickets has fallen and Yorkshire has made a comeback. Runs on the board, always the key and the wicket is still doing something for the bowlers. But that margin of error that was probably greater in the morning session has reduced. That's why we've seen more runs. Three slips now, three slips in now for Zaman Akhtar. Fuller length, nicely onto that front foot. Looking very comfortable, but you made a very good point that oh, bowlers that's have... that's rare. <laughs> yeah, bowlers have lo lost faith in that second session. Yeah. Things haven't happened consistently. So that last delivery you see... It's really nice and compact and it felt like nothing's going to happen from here. So they went searching and that's where they conceded all their, those runs. But I still believe if they're consistent in that area, they will get the rewards. Is this one's in the air falling just short of the fielder at cover. Almost carried. You'd think half an opportunity. Yeah, um, was that a bump ball? I must say, live, I thought it was a bump ball, but it perhaps not. And it, it, it certainly, I don't think Phillips could have got to it. Yeah, bump ball. It was just a... I, 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 to be honest, I wasn't sure either. <laughs> but <laughs> Probably I need a trip to the optician now. <laughs> Three slips. This one is rising delivery. Nicely played, though. Phillips just dropped his hands and allowed that ball to go through. But once again... The bowlers were prepared to hit the deck hard with this older ball. Yeah. They're still getting the something out of the pitch. Where do you stand then on, on the Kookaburra in terms of its use in English cricket? Because I know that uh, you hear, especially coaches, you hear a lot of coaches say, we don't understand the point of this. You hear other people, Matty Potts was, was one of them especially, saying, I, I don't care, it's round and red, I'll bowl with it. This one has been clipped on to the onside, Phillips. We'll collect a couple of runs. That's a short boundary on that side of the ground, but just the two didn't quite come off the middle of the bat. I mean, there will always be debate about things like this. I, I've heard quite a few opinions where they were just thinking, like, what's the point? Kookaburra in English conditions. But you see the effectiveness now on, on pitches like this. You know, 125, 130 medium pacer would have been very very difficult whereas if you transform that to international standard probably won't be effective but here you see the bowlers have to work hard they have to hit the de deck hard to get something the seam has flattened down there is no exaggerated movement makes for a fairer contest at this stage of the year i mean the debate is open but mm. you could see the reasons yeah I, I think one of the arguments against it would be effectively it's a it's this is a domestic tournament you aren't going to have sides full of people bowling 90 miles an hour because you know it's not that easy to bowl 90 miles an hour england struggle to find people who can bowl that quickly for the international team never mind at county level so effectively it's almost like you are you really going to going to produce more by by forcing those sorts of bowlers to bowl with it. Singdale is in. This is turned through the leg side by Masood. He's running the first one hard, but it's only going to be a single to deep backwards square, and he'll tick up to 94, 196 for six. It's not just about the 90 miles per hour as well. I mean, 85, between 80 and 85, but also as a, as a, as a whole package, the bowler would have to improve their skills, not just the pace, Jimmy Anderson, the great Jimmy Anderson is the example. He doesn't bowl at 90. But because he's been around so much and he's played around the world, he's developed other skills that really helps him on flat decks. Singdale runs in, slings another one down to Milnes, who knocks that one wide of mid on and sets off for a single. Shaw tumbles away to his right and stops it. Three to Milnes, 197 for six. I think the whole point is it shouldn't be that easy for anyone to just run up and just put it on the spot and make life hell for the batters. That is not fair either. Mm. Yes, the, the counter-argument is the Manus Labashain WhatsApp group, the Darren, Darren Stevens got you, you know. That, that, was, that was going around. I think at the last Ashes series when we decided county cricket was evil and everything needed to change about it. 
Singh Dale starts his approach, bounds in round the wicket to Shan Masood. It's short and swayed out of the way by the tall left-hander. Allowed to pass through to the keeper. But, you know, it was it was just kind of, oh, you come to English cricket as an, an Aussie, you expect to be able to take wickets because the ball's just going to move about. And, you know, people, people knew when Dan Worrell first came over here, when he first came over for Gloucestershire and played... It was, was it 2018 or 17? I can't remember. I should be able to remember, but I can't. One of the two. He played in th the start of the championship that season. Singdale bowls short, wide cut, mistimed by Shan Masood. Finds cover and there's no run. And, you know, you just knew he was going to be... Uh, he had an excellent record in Australian domestic cricket as well. Because because he's quick as much as he moves the ball he's quick but you saw that ability to swing the ball both ways and you, you just know a bowler like that and 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 he would have to work much harder i suspect for for his wickets and use his pace more and his his other skills but here you sort of got the impression this is cut close to his body by shan masood it's that shot again that we were talking about earlier he finds a single to deep backward point 198 for six but it I suppose that's exactly what 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 you worry about maybe if you don't do something like this that you can effectively bowl very much within yourself you can bowl at 80 percent you will make the ball move you'll get your wickets through movement if you take that away you actually force people to maybe exert themselves more but actually that could be a very good thing <laughs> down the line it, it's it's an interesting argument and and there are certainly nuances to it Singdale bowls on off stump and Milnes defends into the offside that ends the over and it's 198 for six as things continue to hang just a little bit after that dropped catch of Milnes Every run that Milnes scores will hurt Cam Bancroft, especially a catch that I'm sure he would be the first to say should have been taken, should have had Milnes out without scoring. But as he, it is, he's still there on three. Shan Masood just five runs short of a century. Over to Jonathan Deutsch and then Shah Faisal's coming into my seat. And it is uh, Shan Masood who is on strike then. And it's going to be... Change of bowling and uh, Graham Van Buren to come on at the Ashley Down Road end with his uh, left armers. 198 for six, as you heard. Milnes on three. Masu on 95. And it's the Pakistan and Yorkshire captain then to uh, face this first Van Buren delivery, which he punches out uh, into the offside. And there is no run. Just getting his field set as he wants it. The Gloucestershire captain has just moved point a little more central. He might come into play here. Masu's got that one away a little bit straighter still. And had he not moved his man, he definitely wouldn't have got that. But he's still, although got his hand to it, knocked it into the boundary. And so... Shan Masood on the cusp here, on 99. It's been a wonderful knock from him. Richly deserves the 100 and he's well settled. His team is back in the game as well. Tries to flick this one away a little squarer than Dent, who's in the mid-wicket. <coughs> but uh, couldn't get it past him. So, can he get there with this delivery? Van Buren, skipper against skipper. He's got it away past Dent. And Shan Masood, with a simple push through the onside, brings up his century with the single. A 26th first-class 100 for the captain of Pakistan, the captain of the White Rose. 
140 deliveries and 15 fours. It's not always been perfect, but it's been perfect for Yorkshire on a difficult day. A real captain's knock from Shan Masood. Really held the innings together. A couple of decent partnerships, especially the one with Tadasol after lunch. Milne steps back then and cuts here quite nicely too. Backward of points, not quite going to have the legs to make it. It is going to have the legs to make it to the boundary. It's quite difficult actually looking out to my right. There's reflections in the glass and it looked as though the boundary was a bit further away than it actually was. It's either that or I'm just going to go have to go to a, a high street um, optometrist. <laughs> we both are due a visit now, but Delanga was really struggling as he chased that ball couldn't get the pace that side of the ground is slightly slower the outfield is not as fast as is towards our left as we look at it so that four takes him to seven 207 for six and he punches this one into the offside for Dent to field and there's no run you mentioned the drop of uh, Matt Milnes and he, he can bat pretty well he first innings for Yorkshire last year 70 odd at uh, Headingley against Leicestershire so Although clearly he figures in the tail because he's usually in at 9 or 10. Uh, there are runs in him. Especially with Sean Masood set in, he just needs some support because he's seeing it well, Sean Masood is. And another partnership of substance here could really mean that Yorkshire will get into a very good first innings despite losing five wickets before lunch. But this partnership is crucial and for Gloucestershire's sake, you don't want them to just think and that drop catch to come back and haunt them. Chan Masood won't be complaining. He needs some support. And Mills is there as Singdale from the pavilion end bowls to Chan Masood, who taps it quietly with soft hands just behind square and picks up another single that has been the feature of his innings as well. He's been finding the boundaries, keeping the good balls out and then the rotation of strikes especially that partnership with Taras all left and right and combination they really rotated strike beautifully and once again his presence means that it's another left hand right hand combination headache for Van Buren and the bowlers three slip for three slips for Mills now just a backward point cover and mid off on the offside Full delay racing, Dale wheels away in celebration before he turns around and appeals. But umpire says nothing doing. That looked pretty good from here. But umpire's ruling in favor of the batter. Yeah, it, looks a, it looked a good shout. I'm not sure it was a nail on certainty, but you'd say it looks yeah, well worth a shout. The famous celeb appeal these days. He was celebrating before he appealed. Yeah. Yeah, our, our colleague uh, behind Ed suggesting that it might have just been hinting at going down, and so Peter Hartley erring on the side of caution. Yep. Again, that thing that could go against St. Dale is because he bowls from slightly wide on the crease, that angle that he creates once again, that fuller length. He was looking to play it straighter, Mills, Inside half bat meant that it went to mid wicket. Singdale has really put in a big effort, and with this older ball, his captain is really looking towards him to, because even this tail can be annoying, especially when there is one top order batter in the middle. You just don't know if you want to attack from both hands or do it from one end and give the singles away. That has gone wrong many a times. We've seen that before. Short, plenty of time for Mills to swivel around and pull it square of the wicket on the onside, and that has gone all the way. Struck it well. Uh, plenty of time, didn't he? Banged in. And uh, full credit to Mills. He watched it all the way. He didn't try and hammer the ball. He just, uh, again, used good timing. A little bit of bottom hand in it. And did the job. He'll be happy and uh, there'll be some frustration out there from the home side's point of view. Yeah, number eight, striking one of your quick bowlers for a six in emphatic way. This one is shot outside the off stump on that occasion. 
I mean, let's just stay leg side of the ball, pushes it into the offside for a single. Oh, there's a bit of a sloppiness there, throw on the bounce. Not very easy for the keeper. The arm has gone up in apology. Marsha De Langa. We've really seen him struggle in the field in the last 20 minutes or so. Yeah, I think he thought it was at the Bislett uh, Stadium Oslo or something like that for um, a javelin throw there, the way he launched it. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Palace, something like that. Wrong place, wrong time. 216 for six. We're watching Dale runs away from us, full of delivery, gorgeous drive. Dilanga does the redemption job on that occasion, moving swiftly to his left and stopping that ball from going to the boundary. Taught to finish off the over, 216 for six. I think your definition of swiftly and mine must, must differ to some extent in that comment. <laughs> swiftly, as in he's a very tall man and he wasn't walking in leaning forward with the ball so from a upright position to go that far down that would constitute a quick or swift movement not ideal but did the job <laughs> you've been very nice there aren't you very kind <laughs> Milne's on 15 then is at the non-striking end as Masood on 101 and a good job for Yorkshire's sake he's got him Waits and Van Buren he's in and bowling and that's been cut nicely, a ball short of length, not the best of deliveries. Short and uh, a bit of width as well, although he's not managed to get it to the boundary. They've got back for two, Charles with doing the fielding. Ben Buren is looking to push the ball through. But Sean is well set. Yes, Van Buren again. Over the wicket, and uh, Masu just tucks one into the leg side this time. Successfully taking on Dent for the single. You just sometimes you fail to understand that what is Van Buren thinking? How is he going to get Sean out when he's running in? With that field set and that trajectory, it just feels like he's happy to get him off strike and see if he can trap Milnes. Who's on strike here, gets a short ball as well, steps back and tries to hammer that one away through the leg side. Hammond with a tumbling stop at short. Straight mid-wicket. Good job as well, because that was boundary bound. There he is again, around the wicket. Milne steps back, but uh, can't tuck it either side of Dent in the covers there. So it's kind of brought the field in both sides. Deep, uh, well, mid-on and mid-off are slightly deeper than normal, but you wouldn't say hugely so. As this one is wide of off-stump, just trying to attempt... Milnes to have a flash but he doesn't take the bait quick deliveries followed up by this last one that was a real tempter you're absolutely right and the field up now he's decided to put the sweeper back at cover and uh, Milnes can't take advantage with a single because he opened the face a little too much and ran it to Delanger backward of point end of the over then 219 for six well from the Gloucestershire point of view, it doesn't look nearly as good as it might have done at 90 for five. But they're still, you'd have to say, uh, the team with the upper hand at this moment in time. And certainly if they could see the back of the Yorkshire skipper, they would very much feel that that was the case. At this time of the day, you'd start thinking about what would be a good first inning score because the conditions definitely were in favour of the bowling side. That's why Gloucestershire decided to bowl first. But having seen the wicket and the last 20 minutes or so, there is still something for the bowlers. And that's where I start to think that what would be a good score, and that's how you can judge that how Gloucestershire are feeling with 219 for six. I mean, it could come down to like 250 or 60 all out very quickly. And that could constitute still a very, very good performance from Gloucestershire. As we watch Shaw returning to his favoured pavilion end. He pulled that spell at the beginning of afternoon session from the far end and he was not effective. Once again, that breeze that is blowing from our right to left, as we look at it, it re is really helping his outswinger 
and the in-swinger to the left-handers. That's how he got the wicket in the morning as well. Yeah, I think in terms of the, the match situation, apart from the fact that if they bowl Yorkshire out, they'll be just happy, um, they would like to bat in these conditions towards the back end of the day. It's tricky. I mean, the afternoon, the evening session, it may just start to get a little cooler, brand new ball. So it's a fascinating contest all in all. And a phase of play would suggest that one team is getting on top of the other but it doesn't mean that the other team cannot come back so that makes it a really gripping contest what Shaw runs away from us two slips in a gully now nice delivery nice shape on that delivery as well in, in session terms you know first session very much Gloucestershire's now five down for 90. Second session, I think you've got to say very much Yorkshire's at this stage with just one further wicket added for a further 130 runs. But that doesn't mean that the match situation favours Yorkshire. Nothing like that at this stage. Absolutely, and who were to know, like we saw in that first session, two wickets came in the last over. And that session, as next one from Shaw, on a good length, pushes defensively into the covers. Up until that point, if a Yorkshire had gone into that session with three down, you could have called it an even session, or probably shading towards Yorkshire because they were the ones that were put in. So it can change quickly, and this session, no doubt about it, clearly belonged to Yorkshire. But the game is on a knife edge, I think. It's there for the taking, and wickets can come quickly, then Gloucestershire will be really happy. This one is sprayed down the leg side. Shaw after that morning spell where he bowled six overs. Really set the tone. But after that, he's not been his usual self. No, I thought he was the better of the two openers in that that little opening little section. Obviously got the, the benefit of the first wicket. But yeah, since lunch, we saw him bowl at the Ashley Down Road end to begin with. Just not quite as as on it. Doesn't feel like it anyway. Mills settles in to face Shaw. That's again a fuller delivery. Not much shape or movement on it. It's a big question now as we saw the over comes to a close that has Shaw anything else to his game other than bowling that fuller length and swinging the ball which he did really nicely with the new ball. And this is where the challenge comes. This is where we, I and Ed were discussing about the use of Kookaburra ball. It is really testing Shaw. And it's up to him to come up with different skills to be successful in different parts of the game and not just one particular phase. Yep. A variety of different things that the bowlers try, including things like such as using the crease, changing angles, obviously the grip on the ball, Absolutely. as well as line and length. As uh, Van Buren continues from the Ashley Down Road end and Masood tucks that one away backward of square leg for a uh, stroll of a single. So from this point, Yorkshire with Masood still there and a man who can hold about here in Matt Milnes. They'll still be hoping 300 plus, another 79, 80 runs. And that would represent an, an OK sort of get out from a pretty grim first session as uh, Milnes just pats one into the offside this time. There's no run, but... One of these two goes pretty quickly. Might have to revise that target significantly and there might might just be a case of grab any batting point you can. Milnes drives this one to the offside. Just a bit of width offered there by Van Buren. It's been chased down and successfully so. And they're going to get through for three. So Milnes now on to 18, 106 for Massoud. Was walking around the ground when he was dropped. Didn't make a note of how many he had, Matt Milnes. He was on naught. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, that, that's already started to look costly there for Gloucestershire. And Buren in, and Masood just flicking away down the leg side. Don't think he's got any back contact. No, he hasn't. Has an Adnan confirms that that's a leg bite. Clearly, Van Buren is worried about the overrate as well because his own spell at this 
moment is not threatening he's just rushing through the overs pulling it quick his odd variation is just to slow it down yes a little bit more loop about that delivery which Milnes just uh, nudges out into the offside for Dent to field he'll really struggle to get top quality batters out with this strategy there's Van Buren again round the wicket and the right handed Milnes just pushing back to him End of the over and another dot, so 225 for six. 12 minutes to go before uh, what should be the scheduled tea break, but how many overs have we got on the board? 56 now complete, which means there are 40 remaining the day, so we're going to be going on a little while longer than 340. Eight overs, I believe, we need to get through to get to 32 remaining for the day in the final session. Nobody should be complaining because it's absolutely beautiful. Probably the players may, but the spectators won't. I'm sure our listeners won't because, like I said, the contest is gripping. The weather is just beautiful for this time of the year. And we've got a decent attendance as well. So we Shaw to Sean Masood. Full. On to the stumps and Sean Masood driving it to covers. This is what I was talking about, Shaw. Is it there anything else to his game than this usual fuller length? Because they're not attacking from the other end when Buren is not attacking. So the responsibility of getting wickets is on Shaw. And see he, what, what he comes up with as round the wicket ball. So Sean turned him around a little bit. Leading edge. As Sean was looking to play it onto the onside. It finished in the covers and no run yeah just think if he'd looked at the board at this stage and uh, knocked off those couple of wickets in the closing moments at the end of the previous session on a flatter deck with the moisture being gradually drawn out and a ball that's wearing Shaw full and straight gorgeous Chan Masood just lent on it and hit it right back where it came from. Another magnificent boundary from Sean Masood. Yeah, classic just over pitching on this occasion, Josh Shaw. And there was a, just a little bit of shape about it because Masood, he was working on holding himself in position and not falling over it, on it. And then he did well. Took it very late. And as you say, just stroked it beautifully straight back past Peter Hartley for four. Shaw will try again. Masood resolute. And looking around the field, you see a couple of heads dropping. There's a couple of teapots. And you get the impression that Gloucestershire are just running out of steam. But looking at the scoreboard, like we said, it's, it shouldn't be the case. But it happens when, when you feel that you're not penetrative enough for a period of time where number eight is in you've already had a drop chance it's a bit flat Shaw runs away from us balls to Sean Masood fielder at extra cover comes into action again another flowing drive to that fuller delivery yeah I mean there's an element of Yorkshire obviously have had to try to s sort of keep themselves in the game I know it you might say that's an exaggerated comment given how early it is in the match, but from 90 for 5, you know, could have been blown away, couldn't they? Could have been effectively out of the match, but uh, they're keeping themselves in, with, in it here. They're, they're digging in. There are moments in the game as we watch. Shaw, sure, this is slightly back of a length, probably better length at this stage of the innings. As Sean Masood quietly pushes it back towards the bowler, that will bring the over to a close to 29 for 6 Yorkshire yeah you, you you think that 90 for 5 it could have really gone wrong for Yorkshire I mean, you had a couple more wickets right after lunch and you're looking at 120 for 7 150 all out it could easily have happened yeah Van Buren is going to continue at the Ashley down road end here to the right handed Matt Milnes Mid-off has just dropped deeper than he had previously now. He's guessing about 15, 10 to 15 yards in from the boundary. That's Van Buren going round the wicket with his left arm. 
delivery and Milne's stepping away to leg just tries to open up the offside backward of point but can't get it past the infield Shaw stopping it and here's Van Buren again back foot this time Milne's punching back to him now the, uh, the long off has been brought up a few strides more now level pretty much with the well, the deepish mid on and he's coming into play here a little flick back to the bowler Oli Price it is out there so another dot in the scorebook and Milnes waits again opens the face to a delivery wide of off stump and drives it along the ground out to the sweeping square cover one run it's just so predictable the way Van Buren is bowling he bowls in just dot 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 and then one floated up and it's not challenging enough but he's achieving the task of getting that over it up just um, fires that one in a little more quickly at Masood who's flicked it off the legs and he's going to come back for a second run once again the skipper keeping the board ticking it's field set for him not a huge amount different but long on has gone back to that position he'd be uh, only a couple of strides in from the boundary edge and Masood waits and then just pushes <laughs> towards Deepish mid off sets off and Milnes then is drawn into a few strides as well before his captain sends him back and that's the thing talking about with Masood there was one particularly uh, horrific run out last year I think I'm right in saying it was George Hill on the wrong end of it at Chesterfield against Derbyshire and there were a few more where, you know, they were very <laughs> pretty <laughs> near to the knuckle. So, uh, the odd issue in that regard, but um, can't fault his enthusiasm for scoring runs. Just maybe think about the timing now and again. Yeah, we've seen over the years some frenetic runners. but Most of them are like that just towards the start of their innings. As we watch Shaw uh, begin a fresh over. He's trying to guide it through that gap behind Square on the offside, but failed to find a gap and a dot ball. Who's who's consistently the the uh, most iffy runner between the wickets that you can recall from watching the game? Well, I mean if you you're from Pakistan then you can't go beyond in the Marmal <laughs> <laughs> Of course, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, the other one that doesn't get a mention, it's another great batter, and he's got plenty of runs here as well in England. I'll come back to it after this ball. As it's short and wide, Mills once again failed to find the gap. Couldn't get over that cut shot and hits it straight to backward point. Muhammad Yusuf. Really? He is, because he was exactly the same as Sean. He, everything that he hits, he just sets off. And then three or four yards, he just calls after that. And if it's a no, you're more than likely to sell <laughs> your partner down the river. And he's done that many times. I'm just surprised that he doesn't get that mention as much as Inzamam does. What about you? Who are you thinking of right now? I think, yeah, for me, probably it's just from playing. So with, with, with one or two club cricketers I can uh, mention. <laughs> um, but Jeffrey, you're saying, Jeffrey Boycott. How dare you? <laughs> well, there was obviously the famous Derek Randall with um, to Jeffrey, but I uh, can't remember lots of incidents with him. Next one from Shaw is back of length, standing up tall and punches it towards the offside into the cover. Another dot ball. I think Inzi, yeah, probably would be the one actually now, now you mention it that he did get into quite a few pickles, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And thinking of Derek Randall as well, he was jack in the box, so a character like hyperactive character mm. like him could be very likely to be at the wrong end of a few or just his partner being at the wrong end of a few. Two slips in a gully for sure. Wide, just throws his hands at it. Loose stroke from Milnes. Goes past the outside edge. A rare play and a miss after quite some time. Yeah, 
Not enough foot movement, I suppose, really, and therefore stretching for the ball. Nearly doubled himself over. We're, we're not too far off T now. And having gifted a couple of wickets in those last uh, few minutes before lunch, they wouldn't want to do the same again here. Mills almost did the same, though, an identical way to how Hill got out just before lunch. This one is attacking the stumps, probably a bit too straight. There is protection at deep square leg for another single as Ampar Hartley is, looks over his shoulder to the clock and hands the cap back to George Shaw. End of the over. 233 for six. 143 runs in the session with just one wicket. Yeah, and five overs to go before the tea break. Um, so still time for some runs to be scored although just in the last few minutes they feel like they've dried a little more and uh, Gloucestershire will be delighted after this dormant sort of period dormant session really barring the one wicket of Johnny Tattersall if they could pick something up before the break Van Buren's first delivery of the over just uh, patted back by the former Nottinghamshire Kent Mount, who waits again and uh, strokes this one back to the Gloucestershire captain in his follow through. I think I should. Sorry about that. Go ahead. I was just going to say, he's just sent <laughs> mid off deeper again, but not all the way out. As Milnes, this time stepping outside off stump, flicks it square on the leg side again, a dot ball. Yeah, halfway through the over, I think when Buren just signals to that fielder to drop down five or so yards because after his darts, he's liable to ball that floaty yep. delivery, try to tempt the batters. And this time just a bit too full and therefore the drive is played up towards uh, Ollie Price and Milnes rotates the strike. 21 to him now, 112 to Masood, 234 for six. Ed should have been on because he's so flat we could ask him that who would he want to ball or what he, he would have done is that Gloucestershire faithful as we watch another single towards long off because they're really looking flat I mean if you look around the field the fielders in the inner ring they're just so flat and the fielders on this boundary as well yeah Van Buren in Milne's Drops one out into the offside shore round to field, but they get through for oh, another single. 230. Have they put the score on? Have they not? 236 for six. I'm going to go with that. At the end of the 60th over, so four more now to come before T. Yorkshire slightly be calmed, but they'll won't bother about that if they're still six down come the break. So what's the feeling around Yorkshire in the club? What's the expectations for this season and how's been the build-up? Yeah, expectations are high, I would say, in, in red ball cricket. <laughs> They're never that high in white ball cricket. Um, it's a club that sort of like sets its stall out to do well in red ball cricket in particular. Shaw runs away from us, balls to Milnes, that fuller length consistently challenging the batters on that front foot which has been a lot easier after lunch straight to mid off though on that occasion no run I'm, I'm just a little surprised at this bowling combination I can understand Van Buren bowling to just get the over rate up but then he bowled Singh Dale and Zaman Akhtar in tandem they're both attacking bowlers and now it feels like from both ends they're doing the holding job just hoping that the batters get frustrated and make some mistake. Gully has come out on to mid wicket now. Shaw's next delivery is played to that fielder that has just come out of the cordon into mid wicket and no run. Yeah, so to go back to that point, expectation certainly in Division 2 this season that I think Yorkshire made favourites by uh, the bookies and I think rightly so in terms of what they've got player wise but they've still got to do the job 
We watch Shaw runs away from us. Balls to Milnes. Short. Never arrived. Swatted away to Deep Square like for a single. I think in terms of resources, mm. I mean, we saw that first game as well. They got they got through seven wickets and then they let the opposition Leicestershire get away from them. That was kind of... Although there was plenty of rain around, there was no realistic chance of result. But they got yeah. himself into that position. But then Leicestershire got away from them. Yeah, um, yeah I don't think they, they bowled maybe as well as they could have done during that spell. And obviously, again, back to the cookery ball. Not a lot happening with it on a good pitch. Shaw around the wicket to left-handed Masood. Full of delivery. Just couldn't find that middle of the bat. Went to mid-off. Singdale was the fielder. He's the only one trying to G his side up. Really clapping and just bucking up Shaw. But you see all the other fielders. I mean, I don't really think that the scoreboard situation should really warrant that they just go so flat so early. Shaw's next delivery. That predictable in drift. With that angle around the wicket, Sean Masood fails to beat the fielder at mid-wicket. And Van Buren has been very active in the field himself. He's been brilliant, actually. But he looks like running out of ideas in terms of his bowling options. Yeah. It does set a good example in the field. He's a live wire. He just puts himself on those hot spots where... Other than the slip cordon, he's been pretty busy. Shows next delivery. Went for the Yorker, misdirected. Another flat over has come to an end. 237 for six. Yep, three more before the tea break. And uh, it, it sort of feels at this stage like both sides are kind of marking time towards tea. Gloucestershire would do well here just to kind of take a few deep breaths and muster up, if you like, one last effort in the session and uh, really try and find a way to break this partnership. Van Buren, left arm round the wicket to the right-handed Milnes who pushes back to him, no run. The sight, of course, of the uh, Bristol Rovers football stadium way to our left blue uh, back of the blue stand the top of the blue stand over there as uh, Tattersall punches into the offside it's Tattersall uh, my apologies folks it's Matt Milnes Tattersall went for um, 58 earlier they got a single there yeah, Bristol Rovers. I don't mm -hmm. know much about Bristol Rovers football club I have to say well you, you can on a good afternoon, or perhaps a bad afternoon, depending on which side of the divide you're on, hear the roars coming over from there. But I don't think they've really had too much to roar about of late. Masood pushing forward up to the incoming long on and will pick up a single. Now, the, in fact, the only Bristol Rovers match, and Bristol Rovers, I suppose, are not going to like this, but the only match I can re actually recall in the doji brain was way back in the 70s. I think Spurs got about nine against them or something like that. It was a match of the day, I think. As uh, Milne strokes one out square on the offside, De Langer coming into field. Can't prevent the single. 50 partnership. It's another one, and it should have been a partnership of naught, I think. Yeah, but much put down. And Bancroft is going to be going through mental turmoil at first slip at the moment, just pleading for another chance to come his way. And Buren to Masood, not one off that ball. Tucks it away out to point. And there's no run. Yeah, he took a good catch earlier today, but... But uh, put Milnes down. And it's proved uh, a little costly at this stage. Could be worse, who knows, we'll see, as Masood finds himself adding an extra single with a little push out to the uh, sweeping cover. So that takes him on to 115. Milnes has stuck with him, 25. 62 overs now complete, just 12 balls to go in the session. 
241 for six. And we're going to have uh, Ollie Price to come on at this pavilion end. Yeah, because now they're just basically trying to rattle through these last couple of remaining overs till T and see if they can, of course, try and tempt Yorkshire into something indiscreet, which did happen before lunch, but now they're just trying to get to T regroup and come out with a fresh mind and some fresh legs after the tea break and make a final push because at the moment and it could all change again after tea but at the moment it all, to be honest 300 almost feels inevitable the way that these two have been batting and that's not me trying to put a curse on by the way because it doesn't work like that Does 241 for six Here's Ollie Price bowling to Shan Masood, who leans forward, plays studiously towards wide mid on for no run. Have you, I mean, what's the news? Did, did you not go on the commentator's curse winter course, no? I, I wouldn't have passed it anyway. This is down the leg side from Ollie Price, clipped to the man of the 45, and there's no run. Extraordinary scenes at the Oval, where Somerset were 196 for one, Tom Lamanby was on 99 as leaning forward to defend into the leg side is Shan Masood once again for no run. Single, looking for his 100, runs out Matt Renshaw for 87 and from 196 for two, sorry, 196 for one, Price bowls, tucked into the leg side again, backward of square for no run. 196 for one, Somerset are now 216 for eight. Oof. Dear me. Gus Atkinson was on a hat-trick, which he didn't get, but has taken three wickets. Cameron Steele once again has come on and taken wickets, as he did in the first round. Price bowls. Bit of turn there, but it's played with soft hands towards point by Masood for no run. Uh, and a couple of wickets for Jordan Clark as well. He was the man who affected the run-out of Renshaw, so Worms very much turned there. Price bowls for defence up the pitch for no run to end the over. One over left until the tee break. 241 for six. And Warwickshire are still going. 320 without loss now. Yates 170 and Davies 141. Uh, they've just used their sixth bowler, Durham. But the figures... They still don't make very pleasant reading. Lowest economy rate, 4.15, and that's Scott Boland. How about the Durham skipper, who is this season? Borthwick, I think. Scott Borthwick. I wish he'd, better wish he'd chosen tails. <laughs> As um, Milnes flicks Van Buren's first delivery of the over off his legs. Charles was fielding, sweeping out there. Coming round from mid-wicket, they get one. So, final over of the session. Suit. We'll just want to see this out, come back and uh, may have a bit of fun. Still quite a, quite a while to go before a second new ball can be called for if they're good enough to get to that stage. Masood flicks one to uh, Dent coming round towards mid on, no run. And Buren again over the wicket, Masood steps back and uh, cuts a ball that goes in front of Square on the offside this time and scampers through for one. There's another hundred for, well, another first class hundred anyway. For, I don't know if they're calling him this or not, but new chef Dean Elgar at Essex replacing Sir Alistair at the top of the order is doing a fairly good job of it so far. Van Buren in and Milne's just uh, pushing out to Shaw coming in towards point. Because that was the question would Sam Cook just become chef? now because he was little chef but now there's only one of them Van Buren to Milnes pushes into the offside dot ball yeah yeah it's not a very interesting <laughs> question is it but <laughs> some people were asking it you, you don't get out much do you <laughs> no no I was listening to Don Topley last week um, as um, Van Buren is in that's flicked to leg by Milnes good uh, piece of field in there mid wicket denies Milnes and Yorkshire a run and that will be that for the second session on day one here then so Yorkshire resuming on 90 for 5 at uh, around about 20 to 2 
had a really good start to it. 100 uh, stand exactly for the sixth wicket before Talisal was bowled by Ajit Singh Dale for 58, trying to leave one. Uh, Mount Milnes dropped by Bancroft without scoring is now 26 not out. Masood with his 26 first class 100, 116 not out there. 243 for six, not out of the woods yet. Don't have a point yet in the match, but they have at least uh, dug in here and given themselves a chance of picking up some points before they, you would think, get a bowl at some point in the final session today. Yeah, you feel now that it's quite likely that Yorkshire will at least get something to bowl at, whether it's over 300, whether it's well over 300, but the, the chances of Gloucestershire really skittling them have kind of ebbed at the end of that session and the applause is very much more for Shan Masood walking off at 116 not out it was almost completely for the Gloucestershire bowlers in the morning session so 153 runs added in that session with just the one wicket falling that of Johnny Tattersall he played very nicely and kind of started the turn really as much as Shan Masood did with the way that he played 58 from just 65 balls and from Gloucestershire's point of view, they'll be left to rue the drop of Milnes on Nort. Who knows how things might have gone then. Uh, 190 for 7, that would have been. As it is, 243 for 6. And myself, Ed Seaborn, Jonathan Deutsch and Shah Faisal will be back after tea on the BBC Sport website and the app and on the Gloucestershire live picture feed.
Welcome back to Seat Unique Stadium Bristol. It's the final session of the opening day of this Division 2 County Championship match between Gloucestershire and Yorkshire, live on the BBC Sport website and the app and on the Gloucestershire live picture feed. 2.43 for six, the match position, with Shan Masood ready to face the first ball after tee from Marchand de Lange, who's going to be bowling from the Bristol Pavilion end. Ten overs for 43 for Delanger so far, so he's the one seamer that has not managed to come up with a breakthrough as yet. Delanger bowls round the wicket to Shan Masood, who drives off the back foot, and it's stopped in the covers. I can't remember too much about French at school, apart from I did enjoy it, but Marchand de Legume. Marchand de Legume? Yeah. I thought you were going to say it for a moment. Move on the vegetable. At the, the greengrocer, isn't it? Or the vegetable merchant, I suppose. Legume is a... It's a vegetable, yeah. isn't it? The Marchand de Legume. I remember that bit. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Martin. Here comes De Langer and Bowles. This is driven aerially, but there's no point in place. And it's going to be a single out to deep backward point. 244 for six. I nearly said there's no point, full stop, but it's <laughs> lots of point. So Shamasud's got 117. Matt Milne's ready to face his first ball on 26. Was dropped on naught and Gloucestershire are rather ruining that I'm sure but you know have to try and as they would have hoped the wicket of Tattersall did which it, it would have done had the chance been grabbed that they can take one and then get another pretty sharpish because I think from 90 for 5 having got rid of the big guns as De Lange bowls this is defended by Milnes towards mid off Apart from Shah Masood, of course, but you know they they effectively opened up an end of non-test batter. Um, I think you know to to let him get up to 300 from from 90 for five at lunch. I I know it does tend to flatten out here as things go on, but. They might have hoped for a bit more than that. And it's going to be more runs here for Milnes. He's going to guide a boundary down through a wide third position. Nothing that anybody's going to be able to do about that. And that moves Milnes on to 30. And it's 2.48 for six. Gloucestershire with two bowling points so far. But Yorkshire now just two runs away from their first batting point. Yep, it's only the fourth time that Matt Milnes has batted for Yorkshire in first-class cricket. 75 I mentioned in that... Uh, First innings he played against Leicestershire last year at Headingley seems a long time ago, then 15 not out. Didn't bat in a match against Worcestershire last year, six not out against Leicestershire last week, and now this, 30. Two slips and a gully. Delanger in bowls. It's defended by Milnes, certainly with much more robustness than when he was first out there. He looks to be a lot more comfortable at the crease even though he's just had the 20 minute tea break and as you mentioned I think Doji before the break still a long way to go before the second new ball would be available another hour plus this is short and helped round the corner by Milnes convincingly enough there's only one fielder behind square on that leg side and it goes down to the man at fine leg to 49 for 6 with Milnes to 31. Durham have at last managed to take a wicket. It's only taken them 343 runs to buy one, and it was Colin Ackerman who came on as the sixth bowler and got a wicket in his second over. Admittedly, he did go for 26 in his three overs, but there we go, got the job done. Still nothing for England's Matthew Potts, or Australia's Scott Boland, or England's Bryden Cars. Well done, Ackers, old boy. Ackers, the Flying Dutchman. Mm. You get out of the car, don't you, at Leicestershire, where they park us, and you walk past yes, that board, you do. the back of the stand. Seven for whatever it yeah. was, 20 And it has all, his, something. all the spelling in sequence, doesn't yeah. it? Like it would be in a scorebook. 249 for six as uh, Milnes flicks this one to mid-wicket. Um, as a man actor, I should say, is opening this spell of bowling from the uh, Ashley Down Road end. 
I think those the mid-wicket. Yeah. Sorry, well, they think... should have come down by now, of course. Yeah. Now that he's left the club, but, but I wonder if <laughs> when we true, go actually. this year, it's uh, they're still up. I wonder. I mean, somebody probably is going to beat that now because it was seven for quite a few runs. Yep. Short ball here, pulled by Milnes. It's going to bring uh, the sweeper backward of square into play, Ollie Price, and good piece of fielding from him. Means that uh, they've been kept to one, but that hasn't prevented them from getting the first batting point of the match. So uh, Yorkshire are finally on the board. Gloucestershire have two bowling points, of course. Yorkshire now with the first batting point, 2.50 for six, and while that m may not seem a lot, with the batting lineup they've got, uh, they were put in this morning, and from 90 for five, I think that represents what you'd have to say is a pretty reasonable recovery. Changing the field because Masood, left-handed of course, is now back on strike. Still two slips in place as they try to see the back of him round the wicket for Acta. And this could well be four more from the uh, bat of Masood. Yep. A dive from Hammond. Coming round towards third man to field, but he can't get there. Masood again. Just getting a ball short of length and just nicely guided. Nothing more really running it off the face of the bat. And that takes him to 121. The score to 254 for six. So they'll be sniffing 300 now, Yorkshire. Now they've got that side of 250. I think realistically from 90 for five. Anything more than 300, you'd start to think mm. that sort of psychological bit on the seesaw might just feel like it's begun to tip back in their direction. Masood stepping across, opening up the onside this time and flicking one off the hip. Only price round to field at square leg and they get one. And he's really, Shan Masood has, has looked in no bother at all to be honest since he was in you know sort of 60s 70s something like that there was there was the direct hit run out opportunity but in terms of actual false shots there have been so few at play here's a uh, ball short of length Milnes over the top of it runs it out into the offside and we'll pick up one more so Actor going largely on uh, the short side of a good length in this over so far. What has he got to offer here to Masood, who's back on strike? Mills now up to 33. 2, 5, 6, 4, 6 in the 66th over. So still an appreciable amount of time before Gloucestershire skipper Graham Van Buren can call for a second new ball, should he wish to. Oh, beautiful shot by Shan Masood here. Round the wicket was the bowler, and uh, he didn't manage to tighten up the lines on Masood, which is a good way of, if you ever can contain his scoring, of doing so. But he still offered him a little bit of width. And just a little peck at that, nothing more. A little punch into the offside through the covers. It's gone racing away for four. It doesn't have to be close to a half volley. When he's on song, Shan Masood, like a, a lot of tall left-handers almost got I mean it's not bullying the ball because it's timing but you've got that ability almost to take a delivery which is on a full length and make it look like a half volley because it it sort of is for you because you've got that height to use you don't have to, to get down low and drive it but you can sort of play a cover drive that, that maybe somebody else would be able to play with with that sort of ease on the up even but actually for you it's not on the up how silly of me though to forget that Ackerman's best T20 figures have been bettered now by Sayazrul Idris for Malaysia against China in 2023 how did you not how did I not remember that? that four overs one maiden seven for eight seven for eight Here's De Lange bowling this is dropped into the offside and defence by Milne's oh point we're always discussing that spell down our way. I know. How did you not get it? It was really poor of me, wasn't it? Malaysia versus China. And also think that, yes, they broke some other sort of record there because China were all out for 23. 
and Malaysia chased it down inside five overs. Good game. Here comes Delanger bowls and once more Milnes guiding the ball away through the offside but only to the backward point fielder. Not a too dissimilar a score in the IPL I've just noticed with the score 99 for 7 in that game between the super giants and the capitals so thrilling T20 cricket all round you stick with us in the championship don't you think T20 cricket games are, are kind of better when the scores are low Delanger is in driven and he's picked the gap between cover and point there's no point chasing that the boundary is too short and it's quick across the square it's four more to Milnes, who moves to 37, to 64 for six. We certainly have had the majority of games here, certainly not all of them by any means. Certainly not when the internationals are on, they tend to try and, and really make it a belter for the international matches here, it's particularly in, in T20s. But yes, you do, historically, Gloucestershire have tended to win their games here by having them be a bit lower scoring. De Lange bowls played into the onside by Milnes with a vertical bat to the fielder at mid-on and there's no run and I thought what was potentially quite interesting as well talking about Mark Elaine coming in and what might change also be quite curious to see what the difference is in terms of the T20 when that comes around whilst it's been acknowledged that it's going to be very difficult for Gloucestershire in the T20 as was pointed out, all four semi-finalists last year coming from the South group and all four of them exactly the same teams that qualified the previous year. As Milnes defends towards wide mid-off and sets off for a single, which will make very comfortably no throw from Van Buren, 265 for six. So it's, it's going to be tough to break in. But I'll be hoping with the additions of Bancroft at the top of the order, they brought in Bo Webster from... The Melbourne Stars and Tasmania out in the shield. Be hoping that those two can really solidify the batting, which collapsed quite often and partly because the philosophy seemed to be to go out there and try and whack every ball for six, which sometimes it works, but quite often it doesn't. So it, it would be interesting to see what the approach is. De Lange bowls round the wicket. That's a filthy full toss, and it's been clipped away for a single by Shan Masood. There's a ball which on another day might have been heading somewhere in the vicinity of the Memorial Stadium, but this time just the one, 266 for six. And that ends the over. So Shan Masood will keep the strike. Yes, almost, I'm not going to say by accident, because they certainly knew that they were getting a, a quality T20 player in Bo Webster is somebody who, I mean, if you look at his, his strike rate, it doesn't quite tell the full story because he's got to clear about 150 metre boundaries at the MCG for half his games when he plays T20s. He could hit the ball a very long way. But they've ended up signing the two leading scorers in the Sheffield Shield because Webster was the leading scorer and Bancroft actually a, a fair way behind Webster as prolific a season as Webster had and he got wickets as well and Webster will be available for two championship matches in June so I've ended up lucky well not lucking out but you know what I mean here's actor to Masood and uh, the skipper dropping that one back down into the pitch no run so you know I don't, I don't know that they would necessarily have known that Webster was going to quite have the finish to the season that he did when they signed him but to have him available actually one of the matches he'll be available for is the game at Scarborough between these two sides I think he's he's lucked out because he's playing at Scarborough and Cheltenham <laughs> actor in again oh now then another drop at slip this time Masu's going to get four runs for it it was Charlesworth who couldn't uh, reel it in he got both hands to it I think as well Jumping to his right, there was no apparent move from James Bracey to get across towards it. It was first slip's chance. And Masood dropped on 127. That takes him to 131 then. 270 for six. Yeah, just almost as if he wasn't really expecting it. He just didn't react. It was a chance which was coming at a height, but 
it kind of felt as if he had time to line it up, as easy as that is to say from up here. Here's Akhtar again. That is turned into the leg side this time by Masood. He'll pick up a single. So Akhtar could have a five foot by now. Three wickets, and he's generated chances to get rid of both the two Yorkshire batters at the crease now, and both of them have gone down 76 runs apart. You also kind of think, how many more runs is that going to cost? Sean Masood's propensity to go big, certainly in county championship cricket. Milnes waits, actor is in, short of length, it's dropped into the offside this time. And there is no run. I think I'm going to have to make a mid-over change, I'm afraid. I know that never works fantastically, but I've got to pop off and do a radio leads update at 4.30. So we'll get Shah Faisal back in to commentary. And two deliveries remaining in this actor over. Fairly mild-mannered sort of Zaman actor, but... I'm sure he'll be feeling it, and even more so now as he's pulled round the corner. But there are three fielders back on the leg side now, on the boundary. Just a single to Milnes, 39 he's got. You just wonder whether this is the first signs that Gloucestershire really are going to try and pepper Milnes. Had enough of even, they're vaguely mixing it up. And three fielders back on the leg side boundary now. Are they just going to try and bang almost everything in? They might better do something because, like we were discussing before, T, they were looking so flat in the field and when the opportunity came... Actor ball short and wide, cut away well in front of square. Work to do for Hammond on the boundary, does well to stop it. They're coming back for a second run. This could be tight with a throw that is over the stumps, but it's not. And in the end, the bales have come off, but I think because James Brace has fallen over the stumps, the throw was too high and he couldn't bring it in. A perfect throw might have had him. It was a good piece of fielding from Hammond to tumble across, stop it, and then get the throw in. But the accuracy wasn't there on the throw. Milnes might have been in trouble had it been an accurate one. 274 for six. Milnes has 39. And Shan Masood has 134. And we've seen many a times when there is a spell where there's a partnership going and the fielding side just, they go flat. And when the opportunity comes, they are not, not ready for it. And that's exactly what happened. He explained it perfectly. He had a clear view, Charles what did, of that edge from Sean Masood, because Sean Masood stays leg side of the ball anyway, so he saw it all the way and couldn't catch it as Tilanga. Big effort there from the pavilion end. First delivery played towards mid wicket for no run. But yeah, that those opportunities are really start to going to start to hurt Gloucestershire because partnership has gone on now and also the frustration grows when number eight and lower down they're hard to dislodge they're yep. really demoralizing the longest next delivery full and straight pushed back by Milnes who's looking increasingly confident yeah and it's also Amazing how often it happens in English conditions, wherever it is, that you can have somebody walk out at number eight, number nine, and they'll look so much more comfortable at the crease. I mean, of course, it's doing much less than it was earlier, but it is so often those runs from the lower order that you need in, in England. Oh, next delivery, another bouncy delivery. Mills was trying to ride the bounce. Once again, it went in the air for a little while towards Gully, fell short, and... You, the conditions ease, the ball is tired, and in this particular instance, it's early in the season, so you've got the main fast bowlers into their third and fourth yeah. spells, and that is really difficult because the outfields have been soggy, so the bowlers are, will be really tested in terms of their fitness, not many overs under their belts in these conditions. Short delivery once again. No heat on it as it may seem the longer who's bowling quite quick in the first session he's really certainly gone down in speed as Mills picked up another single yeah and this pitch really does demand that you are constantly if you're gonna bang it in it demands that you are giving it effort all the time it, it can be a back-breaking place to bowl Bristol because just to get something out of what is usually a slow surface is 
is taxing. Dilanga once again. Shan Masood. Shan Masood starts running as soon as he hit the ball. Well responded by Milnes. Good understanding, good coordination between the two. And the single completed easily. And what we haven't seen also is nobody's trying to bowl those searing Yorkers. Just take the pitch out of the equation. Although it does take a lot out of you to mm. bowl those Yorkers. And like I said, first real workout of the season for Gloucestershire bowlers. They must be feeling the heat right now. And their physical fitness will be challenged. Yeah, I'll be feeling even more tomorrow if they're <laughs> going to come back and bowl some more. Absolutely. This one is on a length. Pushes quietly into the offside. Dot to close off the over. 276 for six. Yorkshire certainly has come a long way from that 90 for five at stroke of lunch. Now they're looking good for plenty more actually. Yes, they are batting to come. Matt Fisher, Ben Code and Dan Moriarty. Matt Fisher can certainly hold a bat and Ben Code has provided some really useful lusty blows at the bottom of the order as well. And really, there's no easy tails now. It, you, you very rarely, certainly certainly here because of the facts, as I was saying, you kind of know that you've got to have those runs come from the lower order. You can't really have the luxury of having four batters who average under 10, which you do, you do still see in some situations. I mean, you know, India's absolute tail wasn't the strongest this winter, but if you get your runs in the top order, then it doesn't really matter what you've got lower down there. I'll share an interesting fact with you. You talk about India and I talk about Pakistan as well. Ollie Price is into the attack from the Ashley Down Road and there's a strangled appeal for LBW which is turned down very quickly. Some bat involved there, I think. Unlike in England, where in every net session everyone gets to bat, in Pakistan for sure and in India, the bowlers don't get to mm. bat in nets because there's so many of them. They Ollie Price it. is in, and this is cut away in front of square. Nothing that Charlesworth can do out there on the boundary. Gloucestershire spinners have been rather short on quite a lot of occasions and punished that time to the boundary. 280 for six. Shan Masood to 139. Shan Masood has really offered that opportunity, but he's not going to spare any loose deliveries, and this one was way in front of square. There's nothing in the pitch for that length for, for the spinners. I mean, allowing Shan Masood that kind of room and length is not going to work. Price bowls cut away closer to him this time. It's half stopped at backward point, but they will manage a single anyway as the ball squirts away from the fielder. 281 for six. See, I was telling that in India and Pakistan, the bowlers don't normally get to bat in club cricket so you see some of those tail enders when they walk in there you really feel that oh, they've yeah. never <laughs> bat in their whole life and for some it, it may be quite true yeah it, it's been a feature of of bangladesh test cricket as well speaking about india and pakistan <laughs> some of bangladesh's tail end antics recently price bowls round the wicket to milnes leans forward into a defense they have a, a chap called nahid rana who has not scored a single first-class run for 13 innings <laughs> across <laughs> test and first-class matches. Price bowls cut away for four more. There's nobody out on the offside boundary for Milnes. And again, he's made that look very easy. Through the gap it goes at cover. And Milnes moves on 244, 285 for, far, uh, for six even. Easy pickings there. Once again, too short, too wide. And it's really getting very, very annoying for Gloucester. And th the question will be that will they take the new ball? But then again, are their bowlers ready for that? Price is in and forward defence. Back up the surface it goes for Ollie Price to pick up. And spin continues to be expensive for Gloucestershire. That's now... 15 overs and it's gone for 68 runs at 
it's 285 for six, 70 overs gone, so still another 10 to go before that new ball is even available. Yeah, but what would you think? What what would they do? I mean, would they take it? Oh, yeah. Mo most of their bowlers have been bowling, although it's not, it's not like one of their key bowlers have rested for a long while. No, but I think you've kind of got to take it. But yes, exactly. There's the danger then that you waste the whole of the new ball tonight pretty much and then you come out tomorrow and you might still have some wickets to take with an older ball but you know they'll equally they have to think if you just grab one with this older ball even then you know there's still 10 overs left before it but just you know they've 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 got to try and make an inroad you'd think before that second new ball and, and then hope that the second new ball does come good because maybe there's a final push that they can make towards the finish line. Tilanga from the pavilion and Shan Masood. His fingers have gone up. Shan Masood had already started to walk. Tilanga gets a reward for his toil. It's been a long day for him. That's his first wicket. And Centurion Shan Masood walks back Round the wicket, that delivery was angling in and Sean nicked it. He walked away immediately. Umpire took his time and then raised the finger. But this is one brilliant knock of Sean Masood coming to an end. Yeah, he will receive a rightful standing ovation, certainly from the travelling supporters, but plenty of Gloucestershire supporters on their feet as well as I look down below. Appreciating the quality of the innings that they've seen, and it has been an innings of a test batter because wickets were tumbling around him 90 for five the score this morning but he came in after just four deliveries as Josh Shaw got rid of Finlay Bean in the first over this morning and it's taken a good delivery to get rid of him that is for sure though yes I'm sure Shamasud might feel that that you know he could have gone a bit softer at it but at the same time he you could see where the it was a shot of a, of a confident man and he had every right to be confident on 140 but the edge was found and Marchand de Lange has his first wicket of the season and I'm sure that will be a great relief to him and certainly a vital wicket for Gloucestershire as Yorkshire were looking well not just at 300 but potentially sailing off even further and now they've removed the out and out batter so can they manage to rattle through the rest of the Yorkshire lineup? Well, that wicket will certainly give them the heart you can see the intent already three slips in place but the old cliche of adding two wickets to the total that means that for Gloucestershire to get Yorkshire out like under 300 it's a real possibility now but we've seen, like we were just discussing, yeah. there's hardly any tail enders, real, real tail enders. So every one of these batters, they can bat. But that also that delivery from Delanga suggested there is so, still something in the page. Quizzical looks from Hammond as well as Shan Masood was walking off. He was looking at the page. First thought of his batting. This one sprayed down the leg side by Delanga. Really disappointed with himself. Just throws his head backwards that is not the delivery you want a ball to a newcomer especially no. a number nine suspect some choice words in Afrikaans might have been sent out after that as, as you say you, now that you've got that wicket you know that there's possibly quite a short window until Fisher might start to look quite comfortable as well exactly as the next delivery is good length comfortably behind the line of the delivery Fisher yeah, I was talking about what was happening as Shan Masood was walking off. Hammond was just on his haunches looking at the page. And that is probably the first thought in the Gloucestershire lineup about their batting innings. So they look at the scorecard, scoreboard rather, and say 285 for 7, under 300. What are we going to do? And I'm going to ask you this after this delivery ad as Watch Delenga once again hurries the batter a little bit onto that back foot but in the end negotiated safely. So having seen the play all morning, all afternoon, 
what in your opinion is a good first and eighth yeah, score here? I thought that was going to be coming. <laughs> it's, that's normally <laughs> the commentator's trick of asking the summariser <laughs> what do you think a good score is so that they themselves don't have to answer it and you've pulled it off to perfection in this over so that I couldn't ask you <laughs> myself. <laughs> I'll give my answer as we watch Delanga, Delanga spray this again, once again. Probably the, the Afrikaans words would have been a lot harsher on this one because this was even mm. more wayward. That was probably far enough down the leg side that Milnes might have just had a little inquiry of umpire Hartley as to, isn't that a wide? Because that would have taken, it would have taken something to reach it, but yeah, you do tend to see quite a lot of leniency. I, I, it, it's hard to say because, and, and also what might be a par score for the first innings here isn't necessarily for the second innings because traditionally anyway, scores tend to go up here as the game goes on. So the best time to be bowling is up front and Gloucestershire managed to do that by winning the toss. Langa has brought in a short leg gully as well on that delivery but this one was back up for length once again not a lot of heat on it and comfortably negotiated by Fisher to close out the over for Delanga who did get the wicket of Sean Masood gets a round of applause and a well deserved one as well because Gloucestershire really needed it 285 for 7 Yorkshire and sometimes out of nowhere you can get games here your stereotypical Bristol game is probably drifting towards a draw on the final day with maybe the side getting bowled out for around about 300 in the first innings, maybe 450 in the second, and then it's very hard to take that second lot of 10. And I think that regardless of what happens from now on, that that's going to be a real challenge, even if Gloucestershire do manage to get a good total on the board themselves in reply to whatever Yorkshire set, then the second lot of 10 wickets, you know, are you going to be able to reduce this batting line up to 90 for five in two consecutive innings? Maybe, but it's going to take something to do it. Ollie Price to continue is into his ninth over. And it's Milnes on strike on 44. Long on back, deep mid wicket back, deep point back. Price is in, turned away to mid wicket for no run. And out of, but out of nowhere, sometimes you, you can get games, I can think back a couple of years to Gloucestershire's win over Warwickshire, pretty much every score was kind of 280, 270, that, that sort of thing. And especially early season here, Price bowls on the back foot, punching into the offside as Milnes, but finds the hands of short extra. Particularly early season, I think you do tend to find that the pitch does offer a bit more for the bowlers. I think as it gets generally more tired later on, in the season. Price bowls run it's a bit later this time by Milnes off the back foot. He'll find a single out to Delanger on the deep point boundary, 286 for seven. So I, I, I think my answer long-windedly is I don't think Yorkshire are massively short with 300 at all. I think, I think they would, I'm not, I'm not saying they would have settled for it because I suspect they probably wouldn't have done. I mean, aside that that has the quality that they do, that has the ambitions that they do, probably would have expected to have been in a better position. But I, you are so rarely out of a cricket game with 300 on the board. As leaning forward is Fisher to turn this one to wide mid on, Dent Fields. Yeah, I was going to give my take after I had heard yours, <laughs> but I would have thought, like, at the moment, I think Yorkshire is in a better position than Gloucestershire. Price bowls, turned on the bounce to Bancroft at short leg. The reason being that Gloucestershire cannot afford to finish on parity on the first innings with Yorkshire or just slightly ahead. They would have to get up to 450 to be safe in this game. Repeat of the dice there as Bancroft fields on the bounce at short leg. That ends the over. So a tidy one there for Price with just the one run coming from it. 286 for seven. So even with Yorkshire in and around 300, if Gloucestershire finishes close to them, just like on parity or even a small little first innings lead, Yorkshire will come out all guns blazing. And the wicket, like you just said, 
would have eased by that time, which would allow them to hit through the line. And then if they can set a target to close to share, you know, the scoreboard pressure comes into the mm. game as although the wicket may be flat on day four, but you know, when you when you're put under so much pressure that can and pressure can do funny things to you, so I think Yorkshire has really got themselves back into the game. As we watch the longest next delivery short bit. Mills has grown in confidence and now after Sean Masood's departure, he's he's hardly looking in trouble. And that what worries me from Gloucestershire point of view because one partnership and we're talking about them ending on parity on the first innings, another partnership taking Yorkshire past three fifty, yeah. they run the risk of conceding that lead and then probably they will be under even more pressure. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, with the score they've got on the board at the moment, Gloucestershire are going to have to bat very well. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> the longest next delivery attacking the stumps. Fisher pushes it down towards uh, mid-on. No run. And that's kind of what I mean about it. You know, if you, if you can score 300 in the first innings, there are quite a lot of ways that you can then go forward from there even if you might think you'd want 350 to 400 if you can bowl out of your skins and rescue the batters once then you can have that faith repaid by the batters the second time around and, and they get a bigger score or equally you've got enough runs on the board Queen for that Yorker De Langa ended up in a low full toss really struggling De Langa you could see he's put the effort all day long looking for that in swinging Yorker but you know you've 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 got enough runs on the board where the opposition's going to have to bat for well over a day in order to get what they would consider as a good first innings lead Langa runs away from us so straight down the leg side wrapped him on the pads Fisher was looking to just clip it onto the onside probably had the opportunity for a few runs as there's huge gap behind square on the onside yeah, and more so in the case of Yorkshire because because of the dynamic batting lineup that they have. Because in third innings they can really score quickly and give their bowlers that extra time that may be required come back end of the game because of the nature of the wicket. Yeah. So, yep, Gloucestershire have all to do it. Good bumper, really quick delivery and good line as well on that occasion. Fisher had to take the evasive action. And, and this stat might also show how tricky talking about how you know Gloucestershire's roadmap to winning says to use a word which is sadly all too trendy after recent times but and it's just a map by the way it's not a road map I don't even know why I said it it then dropped third drop of the day Looks like it's Cameron Bancroft again. Second slip, short, rising delivery, got the edge. Fisher was just hanging his bat, went at a pretty good height. And probably it hit him in the bread basket and it went down. Yeah, that one probably even easier than the one he put down off Milnes. He fenced at it, but he, that is the height that you're going to be taking catches at Bristol for somebody who plays his cricket for Western Australia and is used to taking slip catches uh, maybe sort of whacker optus that sort of thing I mean you're going to be taking them at head height but that is for, for Bristol that slip catch is a good height so you you know you, you've got to be expecting them at that height three catches down now for Gloucestershire as Price starts a new over and Milnes drives towards Dent that extra cover won't pick up a run. So, Gloucester should continue to shoot themselves in the foot, I'm afraid, with slip catching. And they're not, and you're not going to get at this stage with a, a, a ball that's nearing the end of its life. You're not going to get, you would think, even with the lower order, tons of opportunities. This is short, pulled round the corner by Milnes, and that will go for four. And it will be a half century for Matt Milnes. And he's made absolutely the most of the life that he had 
without scoring and he's scored what has been since then pretty much a flawless 50 291 for seven a very very important knock once again runs from the lower order those are the most annoying for the fielding side fourth 50 in first class cricket for Milne so he backs away and cuts but be a little bit annoyed that he's not managed to find a gap on the offside picks out Dent that extra cover Price moves in once again to bowl down the pitch Milnes but playing along the floor to long on settling for a single 292 for seven so that the, the stat I was going to deliver and I only looked this was a slightly random date because it was the last time that Gloucestershire played Derbyshire to open a season and of course they were supposed to play Derbyshire to open the season but that didn't happen back in 2011 Price bowls and this is tucked into the leg side won't be a run as it's stopped at mid wicket since that time when Gloucestershire took 20 wickets to win they've only managed to do that here 16 times since 2011 so that is only just over once a season well that was in the air for a little bit of time there towards Bancroft at short leg but short of him and Fisher once again survives 292 for seven at the end of that over six left until the second new ball is available so 16 times in 13 years basically they've managed to take 20 wickets here to win and they're, they're in for any side never mind just Gloucestershire but particularly Gloucestershire therein lies the problem at this ground and this is your home ground yes you, you've got well this year only one match at Cheltenham where historically anyway wicket taking has been easier but that is a uh, that is a bit of a, an issue and uh, three of those also happened in the 2021 season just just out of the blue came in one year suddenly they were able to win matches here where they hadn't really before that season but you know, overall it, sh it does show the nature of this surface and also the fact that you know, Gloucestershire, they've got they've got a, a quicker attack now, so they're obviously hoping that this is going to going to provide something different for them. Talang around the wicket, trying the short pitch stuff, leg gully, and there's a fielder, two fielders on the onside on the boundary. Short pitch delivery negotiated easily. Yeah, 20 wickets, they're as hard as they are to take, but you can't afford to take 24, 25 when you keep dropping yes. those catches. <laughs> exactly. And also, you think it's April, but today's play has also illustrated that you need a spinner in your lineup, a specialist spinner. Wrapped on the pads, but too straight. Lanka keep changing his angle. This time it was over the wicket. But definitely, Gloucestershire missed the regular spinner today. The passages of play that we've had in the afternoon session, I mean, they really had to go to their part-time spinners and that really made life easier for two settled players like Sean Masood and Johnny Tattersall, the partnership, and they rollicked along. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been a couple of things, hasn't it? It's been, it's been the combination of both those things, the fact that they've then not taken their chances on top of having those periods. This one is nicked and gone. Fuller delivery. Went for the drive. James Milnes got the edge. And another caught behind for James Bracey. He's looked very tidy behind the stumps. And Gloucestershire could do with some quick wickets towards the back end of today. Yeah, it was sort of too tempting in a way, that delivery from Delanga. I'm not sure whether it, it swung away very much was yeah it might, I think it might just have actually well, maybe it did a little bit more off the pitch than anything rather than actual swing because it, it did look as if it left him but live to be honest I thought it was I mean he, it almost looked as if it was swing which it almost couldn't be in the 75th over so it did seem to deviate off the pitch and looking at it again looking at a dismissal like that Milnes himself would be thinking well, all right if I'm going to get this kind of seam movement with an old kookaburra then actually we might be in a pretty decent position here after all. He's certainly done his job as Milnes for 51 
Gloucestershire do grab their eighth wicket. And again, it is shy of that 300 mark, but got a man walking to the middle now in Ben Code, who has certainly uh, managed to, in the past, provide some handy runs right down the order. Can he do so again here? And, and you know, like we were saying, one more partnership, one more partnership to get them close to 350. And then I think they really would feel, especially from the position they were in, but even regardless of that, actually, we are in a position to boss this game. Absolutely. And you have to give huge credit to Delanga, who's just run in for his skipper with his old ball. Two quickets, two quick wickets at any stage. That should be an expression, that. Quickets. <laughs> Langer once again could use of the crease as well slightly wider on the crease trying to angle the ball in and straighten it like he was able to do for Milnes this time it was too full like I said in the afternoon session I think after the morning session that length of the bowlers if it was towards the fuller end of that six to eight meters if you drag it to that eight meter mark in the afternoon session and evening session there's still something for the bowlers this is another big swing and a miss there. Telanga throwing the ball outside the off stump, tempting the lower order batters. Who are not known to have that kind of patience like a top order batter. Just saw the way that he went after it. Code just got lucky there. Torichi, that's 69 of Ben Codes. Was that last year? I see that's his career best. I just, I can remember him. Law Was it Sussex? from afar I can I remember we've got a launching some team to all parts right <laughs> yeah because you know just sort of sort of looking at his recent scores and couldn't find it Delanga digs in short that was a very very well directed bouncer but dealt quit quite nicely my code another successful over for Delanga has come to an end wicket again in this over for him Yorkshire 292 for 8. I've lost track of where we are. Is this a double change or is this just the single change? I can't remember either. It's us two, is it? Or is it? <laughs> I don't even know where we are. Where are we? What city is this? <laughs> we're, in, we're in Bristol, aren't we? I think. April the the 12th does that say yeah oh dear we've reached that stage I can't I mean I've, I've been on since T but then we did kind of a, a bonus 20 minutes I think Doji and I before so I think you've been on since the first day last year right so I th what talk, you're saying is you shove off all four days that <laughs> right I'm shoving off in the rain um, and speaking of Ben Code yeah he can he can launch it um, like like many tailenders, he tends to want it in his half, and if the ball is a little bit shorter, he finds it more challenging, as we saw with that uh, duck out of the way there. Meanwhile, uh, actor bowling there to Matthew Fisher, who has yet to get off the mark. I won't say he's yet to trouble the scorers, because scorers get troubled by that comment. And also, I never understood when somebody's got a six-ball duck and we call him just going out without troubling the scorer. Mm. Well, he has troubled him for six balls because yeah. all of these deliveries have to be jotted down. You tell me. <laughs> Actor coming in towards us. Short ball. Fisher over the top of that. And runs it down into the gully region. And there is no run. Matthew Fisher, I'm just going to... I can bring up his first class record with the bat. As the uh, actor turns at the end of his run. And Fisher waits. Apparently high back lift. There's nobody uh, there at long off where the ball is travelling. He's just uh, pushed at that. Nothing more. Two men chasing it down. But Matthew Fisher is off the mark. And by whatever definition you have it, he's uh, troubled the scorers with a four. <laughs> yeah, that mid-off fielder was very wide, almost extra cover. Just a push there from Fisher. 
just didn't try to hit the ball hard. Just timed it sweetly and definitely the outfield on that side of the ground is a bit quicker than down towards the right of our commentary box here. And fairly raced across. Inching in on those that target of 300, four shy of that. Here comes Actor again, short this time, and Fisher just uh, drops it down into the leg side, probably off the gloves, might have been top of the splice. And there is no run. He's, uh, he's chipped in now and again, Matthew Fisher. I remember when I first started watching him play more closely, you thought, yeah, there's going to be some runs here in the tail end. And then... Um, well, 37 not out against Derbyshire last year was his most valuable score for a fair old time now. So it hasn't quite happened for him as often as I thought it might. Short ball here, and Ben Code has decided to tuck in. And he's, uh, well, he's been watching, as have uh, most of the lads yesterday, a bit of the, um, the US Masters. And uh, that was kind of a bit like a seven iron, maybe something like that with a bit of backspin on it. It stopped a few yards inside the boundary rope at Cow Corner. So he didn't get all of it. He showed the indication in the previous over when he went after that full delivery. This one backing away, looking to strike it big. And uh, he's tried the same again here. This time he's got more of it. So... Uh, He'd given himself a chance of a one put with the previous shot. This time, he's uh, he's hit it all the way out of bounds. Four runs, and uh, he's on to six, three hundred up. Two batting points now for Yorkshire, three hundred and three for eight. And so they'll they'll be, I would say, relieved from ninety for five this morning that they've got out of jail to some extent. And I think it's one of those now. If they got to three fifty from here, then they would be delighted with that um, they'll probably think well you know we'd take this now at 90 for 5 absolutely and that's also a good strategy that Ben Cord has come out with just go swinging that way if he connects a few he adds a few valuable runs and otherwise time in the game is also quite important so if he's there he's not just going to waste any time he's going to make it count as we watch Delanga a very high full toss, trying the slow delivery, went all wrong, it's been called no ball by umpire Hartley. Hand raised, apologies from Delanga, sadly it was not intentional. Now there was a few uh, before Matthew um, Fisher was was dropped by Cameron Bancroft, I think the ball before uh, Marshall Delanga had, um, had a word in his shell like after a, a, another short ball he'd bowled at him so he was trying to get under his skin and he got him to play the shot didn't he but then Bancroft just couldn't complete the job for him Tlanga once again slightly wider on the crease he's using that crease attacking the stumps against these lower met, lower order batters pushed away on to mid wicket for no run well I have to be honest I, like an hour ago I thought Tlanga was really struggling in the field but this spell he's really put in a big effort for his captain yeah he and heard you you see he heard you I, I went down I popped downstairs out of word <laughs> I told him what you'd been saying <laughs> the Langer's next delivery short pitch delivery got Fisher ducking Ben Cord rather got something on it probably glove and over the head of the keeper for four runs another big effort delivery and really it rose sharply the line was terrific as well Unlucky, it could have gone anywhere after hitting the glove. And it just went over the head of the keeper. Yeah, Matthew Fisher is also capable of bowling a decent short ball. So, um, Marjan Delanger might get one or two back later on as this match <laughs> unfolds. Uh, hopefully his hand's all right. He did check his glove there after he clearly gloved it over the top of James Bracey. But he'll take the runs. I'm sure Fisher will remember. Another short pitch delivery, slightly wrong line, but still, for a lower order batter, it's just enough to scare the life out of him. It's almost ended up on his knees. Fisher now has walked away towards square leg, and I think now he, he has registered 
Delanga in his memory, and he will let him know when he comes to bat. Yeah, the, the heart will just be pumping a little bit faster, won't it, for Matthew Fisher at this moment in time, being peppered here. He would have told himself, like, odd one is okay, but if you're going to pull a barrage of short pitch deliveries, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> this one, he swatted it away. <laughs> this time, he wasn't getting in line. He walked away and smashed it. And parried by Josh Shaw at uh, mid-on, and Ben Code said, there is no way, Sunshine. I am staying here. I am not going down there. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've read the plot, both these lower order batters. So, yep, you can have it. Mr. Fisher, till longer, running in hard, putting in a big effort. Yorkshire have got themselves up above 300 as Tilanga's next delivery. Backing away was Fisher. Enough of getting behind the line of the ball from him. It's very exciting to watch nonetheless. Sometimes these lower, lower order batters are when they're in that kind of mood because then thrown caution to the wind. Protection is the first priority and then if they can hit a few, they will really take it. Bit of cloud cover as well. How many overs to go before the new ball as we watch Telanga again, full and straight, smashed to mid off, <laughs> the middle of the bat, no run though. As Van Buren picks up the ball and Delanga's over has come to an end. Yorkshire 309 for eight, the tail really frustrating Gloucestershire. Yeah, uh, and to be fair to Matthew Fisher, he's kind of standing there and taking it. He did, he did duck out of the way, one which saw him almost laid prone. Um, but he's uh, he's trying to make something of these Delanger deliveries and they're having a chat. Uh, March on his uh, just having a few words, probably asking him if he's got a bat in his hand or something like that. But um, Fish did actually use it in that over, just couldn't get it past the field on a couple of occasions. That last one he struck it pretty well, didn't he? But straight to the fielder, unfortunately for him. He did. And the reason earlier on you were talking about his prowess with the batting when he first surfaced and you thought. Well, there was a potential all-rounder, but looking at him now, like it happens to many a bowlers, the short pitch deliveries are too hot to handle, and they just decide, okay, we'll stick to our bowling, and then contribute in whatever way we can, but then those consistent runs or scores, they just don't come. Code trying an uppercut that he does actually play okay from time to time. That short ball from Acta, so it's going to be, by the looks of things, the continued tactic, and they're just maybe also trying to get into Ben Code's head here. Uh, Delanger's gone to deep mid on. They've got uh, a man set back at cow corner, a man set back at backward of square leg, and at uh, long leg. So everyone is in the deep on the leg side. Code gets under one here. He's got it away over the top of mid off. Has it got the legs to make the boundary? No, that's twice. He's beaten the infield with a lobbed shot and twice it's pulled up inside the rope. He got back for two, though. I don't know what you think of this strategy there from Gloucestershire. I, mean, I know the ball is old, but these are lower order batters. Here is uh, actor again and Code played it quite nicely, unfortunately for him. Straight to Dent at point. I think when you watch Ben bat, as I obviously do fairly regularly, then I wouldn't criticise this strategy to him too much because, you know, the short ball is the thing that he, he finds harder to deal with. If you pitch it in his half, that's when it's, he scores those 40s and 30s and you've got a 60 odd as, um, as Ed was saying last year at, at Sussex. And that's one of his favoured shots. But on this occasion, he's hit it straight to mid-off and has gone. That's the end of Ben Code for eight, 311 for nine. The end is, is just about nigh here for Yorkshire, but uh, they'll be happy to have got where they've got from where they were at the lunch break. Ben, well, sickened with himself, but he does like to get his front leg out of the way, and if he's got any width outside off stump, um, he can crash it away. I, I, looking at the way he's played that shot and where he was caught, probably just wasn't quite there to hit it as he did and he just got underneath it hasn't he not got it off the middle of the bat a clever piece of bowling because I think the way the field was set up and Cord was probably expecting everything to be short and that was not 
and he'd already fallen away backing off he couldn't get his weight into the shot and he just lobbed to seeing Dale at mid off and he took the catch the game is moving this is a good sign and it is Yorkshire who probably would be thinking they've got their noses in front with his 311 for 9 as we watch number 11 coming out to bat 311 for 9 Pretty sure Cameron Bancroft, after dropping those two catches, will be his mind will be switching on towards the batting effort, and it could be a disaster for Gloucestershire if that thought of dropping two catches gets into his head whilst he walks in opening the innings, because that new ball will be crucial. Like I said, that there is a bit of cloud cover now. If they are able to get this wicket pretty quickly. I think it will be a very, very challenging session for the openers towards the back end of today. But first thing first, they've got to get rid of the number 11, Dan Moriarty. Left handed, three slips. Made off still hanging quite far back. His actor, Moriarty, with a solid defense, left handed, of course. So it was. Ajit Singh Dale, by the way, took the catch. He wasn't helping us, was he? Because he's, he's got his uh, long sleeve sweater on, so he didn't have his number on his back. But uh, confirmation that he took a, a very easy catch by the standards of professional cricket. And code gone for 8 1 4. Nine deliveries. Oh. So Moriarty. <laughs> Drops one out into the offside, fielded by Hammond. So Moriarty yet to score from his two deliveries. Fisher on nine, 311 for nine. Hoping to speak to Yorkshire captain Sean Massoud after his 140 um, at the end of the broadcast. It'll be interesting to see what what his take on the day is. But if I know Sean, he'll be he'll put a positive spin on things. Yeah, he would, and it'll be interesting to know because he spent a lot of time on this pitch, what he reckons, what's going to happen as the game progresses, and how does he think that 311 goes far as far as their planning was concerned, and would they have taken it before the game had started, and they, if they had been told that you're going to be put in, what kind of total he would have taken at that time, but he certainly would take it from 90 for 5, there's no doubt about that. Telanga has got the field well spread out. Mid on is hanging back. This deep square leg. There is a fine leg. And there's also a leg gully. He runs away from us. Slow delivery. He got hold of that. All right. Fisher. That is a massive six. An absolute monster. See, he rolled the fingers over it, slow delivery. It was a length ball, as you'd call it in a T20 game, and it went many a miles. Yeah, I think Martin DeLonga might have been asking if he could see it in the previous over when he walked past him at the end, and Matthew Fisher's probably saying, yeah, I'm picking it up a little bit better now. <laughs> what option was that? Ball is slow delivery first up. He's not going to bowl any more of those. As once again, Fisher backing away, smashes it. Van Buren has been absolutely brilliant in the field. Stops this one again at wide mid-off. And that contest continue between Fisher and DeLanga. Yeah, it's a, it's a good little sort of side show, isn't it, to the main event, this? DeLanga runs away from us. What's Fisher going to do on this one? Looking for that Yorker. Fisher saw it late, but still had plenty of time to bring his bat down. Plays it quietly to mid-wicket for no run. Yeah, standing up to it pretty well, Matthew Fisher, as you say. He's stepping away to leg to give himself more room. And so many tail-enders, understandably, when the ball's quick, want to be leg side of the ball. Still Langer runs away in cloud cover back of land delivery and despite Fisher moving away he's able to get the 
middle of the bat and rolling it back down the pitch to Delanga. So over number 79 if you take two overs for the change of innings. Gloucestershire openers will have a tricky hour or so if mm. they can get rid of this last pair. Delanga will try one more time. Two straight. Nicely clipped away by Fisher. Looking for two. Oh, it could have been suicidal if they had gone for that. Just realized in the nick of time that there were no two runs there. Just a single to add to the total. 318 for nine. Yep, Matthew Fisher. Of course, um, bold a tremendous spell in the win here. First match of 22 season, didn't he? Um, bowled really, really well. I think he thinks, I think he's gone on the record of saying it probably his best spell in first class cricket so he'll certainly be looking forward to having another go with uh, the new ball here and uh, Ben Coe just uh, slapped a few around as well the pair of them nice and loose ready to open the bowling that does help though this batting just before you start bowling as he's cracked this one short and wide from Delanga really tight delivery and Moriarty opens his account with a thumping boundary. Very nicely played as well, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Moriarty's first delivery that he played towards the back end of the last over, he really got behind it and I felt like it wasn't a number 11 stroke and neither was this one. Probably the best shot for quite some time, although Fisher had struck that huge six, but it was more of a mole. But this was a proper cricketing stroke. Mm, step back. Um, got uh, over the top of it and cracked it away straight out of the meat of the bat so 322 for 9 who knows uh, if they do have a little bit of fun here they may still sneak up to 350 and I think that would be if not a triumph for uh, Yorkshire certainly very much a score that they'd fancy that they could work with especially with the second innings themselves to come so actor Bowling here to Fisher, who gets a straight delivery and turns it into the leg side. There's no run. Van Buren's persisted with at least two slips throughout. Apart from those two, there's a dent at point. There's cover. Deepish mid-off. Deepish mid-on. Straight mid-wicket. A man backward of square out on the boundary edge. And then down to our left, long leg. Comes actor again, right arm over the wicket. Fisher gets over the top one. He's going to run this down through third man and he's going to pick up four more. Nicely played as well. And takes him to 20. And the score to 326 for nine. Useful 20 for Matthew Fisher. Yeah, Fisher looks very organised when he sees there's no field set for the short pitch delivery. So there could be a surprise one coming but he knows there's no barrage of short pitch delivery so he's getting behind it that one was really neatly played just use of the wrist his actor again short now that he's got underneath this one and should be caught by Bracey he is that is the end of Matthew Fisher for 20 and the end of Yorkshire for 326 uh, with about an hour or so to go on day one here, Fisher will jog off with Moriarty because Matthew Fisher's got a big job to do with the ball along with Ben Code. Uh, from 90 for five, well, they'll feel like they've kind of got out of jail there. It's not a crushing score by any stretch of the imagination, but it's something to work with for the bowlers. And five wickets, of course, for Zaman Akta. His first 5-4 in first class cricket so uh, excellent effort from him as well five four 89 yeah, five wickets and two drop catches so this was a terrific effort from Zaman Akhtar and he really ran in for his skipper that short pick delivery once again troubling Fisher and the wicket has finally come so I think Zaman will lead the side out for most part it was pretty good for Gloucestershire, it's just in that afternoon session when they came out, they conceded too many runs too quickly. But either side of that spell, they've been pretty good and drop catches will also not go down well with coach Mark Elaine. But Zaman, after his first fifer, is leading his side out. 
rapturous applause there from the members and from the crowd. Really richly deserved wickets of Harry Brook and Joe Root also included in this fifer. And he will really relish today and he will remember today for a very, very long time. Well bowled Zaman Akhtar. 3.26 now. The attention will turn now to Gloucestershire's batting. And tricky little session, almost an hour of play. Well, what, 80 overs plus the two overs for the change. 14 overs, yeah, I make it. Pretty, we'll pretty much bang on an hour, won't yeah. it, by the way, that the, the seamers tend to go. We'll see. Who knows? They might uh, throw it to Moriarty at some stage in this last little spell as well. But uh, expect Fisher and Code to start things off. Uh, and we'll start things off in a few minutes' time after we've had a short break. On the back of me telling you the Gloucestershire bowling figures, which were Josh Shaw, 13 overs, one maiden, one for 42. Ajit Singh Dale, 13 overs, one maiden, two for 40. Uh, Zaman Akhtar starring with 18.3 overs, no maidens, five for 89. Marshall de Langer, 18 overs, three maidens, two for 75. Ollie Price, 10 overs, two maidens, none for 49. And Graham Van Buren. Uh, seven overs, no maidens, none for 28. There were five extras for the record. Dan Moriarty was not out four from three. And uh, Yorkshire bowled out in their first innings for 326 in 79.3 overs. We'll be back shortly.
played for them before, but new overseas signing Cameron Bancroft, who is preparing to face the first ball of Gloucestershire's first innings. 3.26 all out for Yorkshire. Magnificent moment for Zaman Akhtar. His maiden first class fifer, including the wickets of Joe Root and Harry Brook. I think it's fair to say you couldn't have dreamt of a much better way to claim your first fifer. But now he's got to watch his opening batters, Cameron Bancroft and Chris Dent, try to negotiate this session here. Ben Code is going to bowl the first over from the Ashley Down Road end. He's in now to Bancroft. Bancroft is forward and playing defensively to mid-off. And there is no run. So the first question, at least, was who was going to open the batting. You sort of imagine that Bancroft didn't come over here to bat at three in a way because he is so determined to get back into the Australia test side. As Code runs into ball two, Bancroft, who gets squared up there and the ball skews towards backward point as he was trying to get off the mark through the leg side. <laughs> Gives a little shrug of the shoulders back towards the pitch as if to say, yeah, well, if you're going to do that. And it stayed down along the floor up to... Moriarty, who's fielding at backward point. Three slips in place and a gully, I think, rather than four slips. Sort of a, a tight. It'd be almost three slips and a fifth slip. Code bowls to Bancroft, who lets that one go. And that moved appreciably after it passed Bancroft. It was probably on about a fourth stump-ish when he left it, but it was taken by Tattersall. Put a behind leg stump in the end. It could still be... Um, very much a challenge Ben Code here I know there's a lot of the moisture appears to have come out of the ground but new ball yeah. uh, knowing he's only got you know, this one spell this evening and there was still that ball that got Milnes which certainly looks as if it moved off the pitch Code bowls to Bancroft who's going to get his first run back in Gloucestershire colours as he pushes this one quietly into a gap between backward point and mid off and Bancroft is underway. Gloucestershire won without loss. James has very kindly gone and got the coffees in. I, I just wonder if it, if I might be asking too much, if I could just ask for a, a drop more milk in mine. That would be absolutely wonderful. Gosh, do you want any coffee with your milk? Gordon's <laughs> <laughs> in quite tight here. The hotel coffee this morning, the machines were off. You know, and so they put a pot of filter coffee out. Thank you, James. That's very kind. Code round the wicket to bowl to Dent, his first ball of the season, and it's going to be his first runs. And it's trickling down towards the fine leg boundary, and it will make it for four. It's also a no ball, so that will be six runs on to the total. And Gloucestershire didn't bowl a no ball, so it, clearly it wasn't just that the umpires weren't watching. You sometimes do wonder when you get no no balls. It's just going to be one of those games where... You know, they're just going to go, oh, well, just let it be. But no. Two no, no ball balls. First oh, were there? Ah, so there was. Some, somebody must have overstepped and I missed it. There we go. Mayor Culpa. Seven without loss. Code bowls to Dent. Dent plays this one down into the ground and then makes sure that he gets back into his ground with Finley Bean in at short leg. Got to make sure that you don't go for a wander. Not going to make any allusions to another Yorkshireman who went for a wander at any point recently. Uh, I w when I went for a wander, one of the Yorkshire supporters was saying to me at the time, three extras, that's good, isn't it? Mm. So there must have been a no ball just after that. Right. It was De Langer who was the culprit. But I don't know whether that was... Oh, no, but that was, that was, for, that was yes. the Beamer, wasn't it? Yes. Of course yeah, it was. Yeah. Code bowls to Dent. This is defended off the inner half of the bat, fielded by Bean at short leg, and that's one of the overs safely negotiated as Gloucestershire have managed seven runs from it. So, yeah, so no front foot no balls, I should have said, in Gloucestershire's innings. So Matthew Fisher will open from the pavilion end, Joe Root and uh, Shan Massoud. It's not bad, is it, when you're, um, you're about to open the bowling and uh, you're thinking about what you might want to do and all of that. It'll clearly have his own ideas and opinions, Matthew Fisher, but uh, and he got two men with the international captaincy experience that you can just go have a quick chat with. 
not like most of us get that on a Saturday afternoon, is it, playing for our local club? Well, I think they think they're international captains, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Play with a few of them, yeah. So four slips for Matthew Fisher. There's a point, there's a gap through the covers. Masood at mid-off, Moriarty at mid-on, first delivery, bit of shape about it, away from Cameron Bancroft, who's shouldering arms. There's also George Hill in at mid-wicket, and... Uh, Long leg is Ben Code in his usual hands on hips, double teapot style. It's still bright out there, but not sunny at this stage. And that might might be preferable for the uh, bowlers. With the thoughts of a bit of swing, perhaps. So seven without loss. Fisher is in, swinging away from the right hander who's angled that one. Wide of the four-man cordon, down to third man, which is vacant. So following the chase, they've got back for two. Certainly an area which Bancroft scores a fair amount of runs in, having seen a little bit of him when he was here with Gloucestershire. That was before my time doing this, but plenty of him internationally as well. It's a shot that he, he does like, that little open of the face and guide it down through the gully. Fisher then leaves us behind. That lovely high action of his. This time, a little bit more, more of a feeling of edge about it, but it wasn't a genuine edge. It runs to fourth slip, where a certain number 88, Harry Brook, blue bottle-like with his uh, spectacles on top of his cap at the moment, does the fielding. Yorkshire's slips. Well, there's been a change this week with the return of Joe Root, he's gone in at first by the look of it, Adam Lyther as usual at second Finlay Bean as usual at third Brook now shunted out to fourth as this is dropped into the leg side by Bancroft who's going to take on George Hill who normally feels in the slips or can do and uh, he can't prevent the single changing the field from right hander to left hander batting wise Dent and Bancroft four apiece it's ten without loss so, uh, well, at this point, earlier in the day, Yorkshire had lost their first. Finley been out just uh, the fourth ball of the match. Couldn't keep out uh, an in-swinger, bowled by Josh Shaw. Here's Dent. That fairly open stance. Fisher's bowled one short of a length at him and he's dropped it into the pitch. The sun does become a little more prominent now. Shadows cast out there. Has Dent not got a stickerless bat, by the way? Because, oh, he has. I love a stickerless bat. I don't know why, but there's something so pleasing about it. It's, yeah, it's great. A stickerless bat. It's, it's sort of like, a, I don't know, it's a throwback, isn't it? You need a good night out, don't you? <laughs> Here's uh, Fisher, and that's dropped into the offside by Dent, and Masood does the fielding. And there is no run. Harry Brook had just moved to leg slip there to uh, Dent. And uh, so three slips and a leg slip. See if that's maintained in the next over. Ten without loss, though, at the end of that one. And so with two overs complete, uh, there should be, there are 12 overs remaining in the day for Gloucestershire to safely negotiate and for Yorkshire to try and chisel out a couple of uh, Gloucestershire batters. Well, he's testimonial year this year, Chris Dent, and he's batting with a stickerless bat. What a time to be alive. Cameron Bancroft, like a good Aussie, has the manufacturer named after the famous laughing bird of that country. Code bowls to Bancroft. Bancroft plays forward into the offside. It's fielded by Moriarty at point. Do you... Um do you collect stamps? No, I don't. Not a philatelist. Spot trains? That's the right one. No. No, I, I... Even if I wanted to spot them with the service these days, <laughs> you <laughs> couldn't really, could you? You talk to the walls at home? I talk to everyone. Code bowls down the leg side, not taken cleanly by Tattersall, but he's done very well to save himself what... It's going to be signal buys, isn't it? Because it always is. But he saved himself three buys there as Tattersall. Done very well to get a hand on that. 11 without loss. I mean, that one 
just took off. I don't know whether it was one of those where the seam just stood upright. Sometimes you do get those ones, don't you, where it just it stands upright and then it is in a perfect position just to swing further away from the keeper. It seems to happen all the time at Lords for some reason, as I'm sure James Bracey would tell you. But it certainly didn't make life easy for Tattersall there. Leg slip in place, short leg, two slips in a gully. Kobolz and there's a shout for leg before wicket here. There's a movement of the hand there from Hassan Adnan, which doesn't help the heart rate, I'm sure, of the Gloucestershire spectators. But he was never giving it out from that hand gesture. No, he seemed to be suggesting it was missing off stump, I think. Yeah, well, he made Pointed a... Pointed that way. Well, whether, he, he? whether he thought it was outside the line, maybe. Oh, maybe. Yeah. E either way, he made some sort of a gesture like it's, it's off side-ish, didn't he? One way or the other. They've gone with the leg slip again here, haven't they, with Harry Brook? Yeah, well, he's already tickled one down fine. Code bowls, and Dent is down low to defend that one towards point, the bottom of that bat, almost on the floor by the time he'd finished there. Bold, better than his figures of 23 overs, 5 maidens, 1 for 66, suggests last week, I thought, Ben Code. Um, he gave his captain control. Code runs in. Round the wicket, he's there now to bowl to Dent. Dent drives and skews it into the gully. It's very well stopped by George Hill, because that probably would have had enough pace to go to the boundary. But another shot, which Dent was not in control of. Yeah, he's just suddenly living dangerously. And the angle change by Code to come round the wicket is making him have to play at virtually everything here just at the time of the day when you don't really want to have to do that as an opening batter yeah. want some nice easy leaves get used to the pace of the pitch play as little as you can for a little while in runs code bowls and Dent is beaten on the outside edge and then steps back into his ground that's a beauty walking at him a little bit but I was very little he could have done about that one that just looked like a classic right arm round to the left hander where you think it's going to angle in towards off stump, and then it just leaves you. 11 without loss, Gloucestershire, three overs gone. So they trail by 315. Yeah, um, a bit of artistry with the ball there from Ben Code, who, as I'm sure the majority of our viewers and listeners would know, is doesn't have or doesn't bowl at the pace of Matthew Fisher. I think he can probably bowl it uh, a little quicker than he actually does. But it's Fisher now, who's uh, more like an 80 mile an hour and sometimes plus bowler. First delivery just dropped out into the offside by Bancroft and there's no run. Saying last week, I don't think Matthew Fisher was that um, impressed with himself actually last week. But Ben Code is drop, drop, drop. More the metronome and Matthew Fisher Probably not quite as consistent. Until some swing there to the right-hander, who pushes the ball back to him, but he's striving for more consistency, he keeps saying. But what he has got is a bit more pace. He's got he's taller. Benko's not short. He's uh, he'd be six two three, something like that. Matthew Fisher a little taller still. And he's just got, if you like, the sort of flare aspect to him. Some of those deliveries look world beaters. Here he comes again. And uh, this one again, just short of length, played from the crease into the leg side, this time by Bancroft. There's no run. Had an unbeaten double century last time he did play on this ground. Bancroft back in 2017 in his previous stint became just the third Gloucestershire batter to carry their bat for a double century in a completed 10 wicket innings, made about, about 60 odd in the second innings as well, so he certainly left with a, a bang Fisher is in, wide of off stump and going further away he's in very good company the only other two Gloucestershire batters to do that WG Grace who did it three times including an unbeaten triple century uh, against Yorkshire in 1885 and Charlie Barnett, one of the other great Gloucestershire stroke makers of yesteryear, made 228 not out 
against Leicestershire at the Wagon Works in 1947. It's Fisher, a good delivery. Bancroft pushing forward at that one. And uh, has the beating team on the rise outside off stump. Matthew Fisher just beginning to get going here. 11 without loss. Each uh, or both batters have four runs. So it was one of the highlights of last year was getting to hold the bat that WG Grace scored his 100th first class 100 with and his 1,000 runs in the month of May. Fisher to Bancroft who took him up this time and dropped into the leg side. End of the over, 11 without loss. Must have been, yeah. Yeah, Roger I Gibbons mean, brought it over from the, history from the like museum. I, mean, yeah, well, I, I just couldn't believe that he actually allowed me to hold it. I thought this is going to be something that's just going to be tucked away in the museum. Yeah, OK, we might bring it in its case over, which he did, but I never would have thought I'd get to hold that. What? So having done that, what else would it be if you could hold one piece of oh. cricket history, an artefact? Oh, and would it be the Ashes Urn, maybe? Or yeah, pro the real one, probably. The real it would, one? would have to be up there, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. I'm sure there's quite a lot of other, other things you could think of. He says, not thinking of them. Here comes Code and Bowles, and Dent again gets a little bit squared up by that one. And he runs it in controlled enough fashion off the outside edge to Gully, but... Again, Code is going to be quite pleased to see kind of two toes almost pointing up mm. at the pitch at him as he is getting Dent to, to be a bit squared up. What would you want to get your hands on from a Pakistan point of view in cricketing history that you've never yet touched? Gosh. The, World the Crystal World Cup trophy. Yeah, I was, was, was imagining that might be the case. Bancroft, pardon me, Dent even facing up to... Mil uh, I'll, get a, I'll get the names right somehow. Eventually, I'll go through all the names that are out on the pitch and I will get it right. Code to Dent and it's defended into the leg side. Goodness me. Goodness me. So, did Pakistan win a World Cup? I can't remember. Did they, they, can't, they kind of won a <laughs> World Cup, surely. Yes, against some, some other side, wasn't it? I can't remember that. I can't remember which side it was. Ah. Uh. I think I was mowing the lawn that day or something like that. Yeah. I, I don't think I was. I don't think I was born, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Goodness knows I can remember seeing the pictures of it enough times. Code runs in and bowls, and Dent is struck on the pad again. That one certainly did look, even from here, as if it was outside the line of off stump. The ball trickles down to Lithe in the slip cordon. And he's beaten the inside edge. Again, there's code, and that's how Shaw started things off by getting rid of Finley Bean in the first innings by challenging that inside edge. It's a bit, it's a bit like um, the the Imran Khan fight like cornered tigers. He's a bit like when Sir Alf Ramsey was reputed to say, "You've won it once, now go out and win it again." Yes. After the, uh, uh, <laughs> extra, before extra time in the World Cup, isn't it? Well wide of off stump this time from Code and Dent is allowed to leave comfortably, which is not something that he's really been able to do, I think, even once so far. Yes, well, it is, it is all about that second World Cup title, isn't it? Well, I, I think in terms of football World Cups, I don't think anyone... I mean, people care far more about the Cricket World Cup than the... The football one, I think. This is turned away, back on a square on the leg side by Dent. He'll get one. He's quick enough to think about two. But Bancroft did not seem interested in that whatsoever. It was as though Bancroft was quite happy to say to Dent, you can take this next over as well. Twelve without loss. In fact, not going to be the next over. They've done me by the swapping round. Yeah, so... losing it here clearly but yeah it I mean you know you'd have to think some piece of Hammond history Wally that is perhaps his triple century bat something like that code is in Bancroft squares up in defence as that's played back up the pitch yeah 
Marulli's 800th ball. Warren 700th. I probably, I mean, Shane Warren was my hero growing up, so probably do have to say say that. <laughs> Sorry, our stream operator James next to us <laughs> was, was celebrating his 700th test wicket and has managed to punch the wall. It's quite a sight. I wish everyone at home could have seen it. Are you all right? Yes, you're all right. Matthew Fisher to continue from the pavilion end. I suppose you kind of have to be after doing that. <laughs> and he comes then, bowling here to Dent, who's dropped it into the offside. Masood quickly around to field, there's no run. Faisal just asking me if uh, what would my piece of cricket in memorabilia be? Well, I'm not sure about the the England Cricket World Cup winning trophy because. It's too recent. Yeah, it doesn't. It hasn't built up the yeah, maybe. sort of venerability of yeah. time. It's not, you know. it's not kind of tarnished, is it? And you know, from a hundred years ago or something like that. Here is uh, Fisher. It's wide of off stump and left. I'd, I'd probably have to say, if you like, putting a personal angle on it, because I was there on the day that he smashed the ball to all parts at Headingley. Uh, I might go for Ian Botham's yeah. bat. I wondered whether from you might the say 1981 that. test yeah. at Headingley. Um, that, yeah, or or maybe Ben Stokes is from 2019. I wasn't there because I was at Trent Bridge doing Which another one, game. Which one, though? The day. one that George Hill took out to him uh. or the original <laughs> one? <laughs> mm, good shout. Here's Fisher in again. That's dropped into the offside. There's no run. I do have a helmet from that test match. Um, it, <laughs> it was one that... Um, was discarded because it was hit by a short ball so I got uh, Manus Labashain's ah, Australia that, helmet signed by Manus in a gold pen now wow as well. that's very good so there you go before you I put it on eBay what's your offer <laughs> <laughs> oh I, I I don't want anything from the Australian team I've, no I've already, <laughs> I've already I've already put Warren out there I can't say that <laughs> Warren's different though Fisher to Dent, who drops it into the offside again. No run. I don't it's think it's if not Shane worth Warner's much, Australian. is it really? Because the Aussies won't want it because they lost the match. And the Brits won't want it because it's an Aussie helmet. So um, <laughs> probably uh, probably offer it on a, a free <laughs> free website. Show it back to record speed oh, really? delivery. Yeah. Might, might go on to a subcontinental eBay then with it. Meanwhile, Matthew Fisher turns again. Yorkshire looking for their first wicket here. Gloucestershire 12 without loss. A ball that shapes in towards Dent. And again, it's pushed square on the offside and George Hill is in to do the fielding. The man who took that bat out to Ben Stokes. I was quite pleased to see, actually, that because that used to pretty much be his lead kind of statement on his Crick Info profile and it is nice to see that that's gradually getting buried by his on-field exploits. It is, it is an entertaining footnote but I'm sure that's not particularly what he wants to be remembered for. Fisher sure again once more shape in towards Dent but he's solid behind it and I think you've got to give the two batters here credit for being watchful. It's not been easy and uh, they know all too well from being out there in the field when Yorkshire were batting, it will get easier as this ball gets older and as this pitch continues to dry. A couple of dry days, day and a half, dryness could make a fair bit of difference here. Yeah, the forecast looks pretty much OK for the next couple of days. Maybe the outside chance of a shower. Probably a bit more cloudy than today, though. Monday, potentially a bit more of a chance of a shower or two. His code running into Bancroft, it's on leg stump, it's tucked away, but it's not going to get a run for Bancroft as it's fielded by Milnes at mid-on. So it's been slow progress, but it's been, I guess, really more the kind of the progress is in terms of the remaining overs ticking down at this point rather than the scoreboard really moving along at a pace. And Bancroft is somebody who certainly is not afraid to dig in there so he looks to drive this one but not forcefully goes out towards backward point now there is no run time 
is of zero consequence yeah. in the in the match situation at this stage, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And especially with the weather forecast, apparently pretty good, barring yeah. barring Monday. I think day four. Yeah, could be some issues by the sound of things. Yeah, who knows? As I say, always it'll probably change another five times before we get there. Code balls and beats Bancroft on the outside edge. Tattersall went to throw the ball up in the air but decided against it. Nobody else had a well, inquisitory appeal. That certainly beat Bancroft fair and square there. Only two matches which have got into the second innings. Just this one and the game at the Oval where Somerset were bowled out for 285 having been 196 for one Code is in and bowls and this is off the inside edge of Bancroft's bat into the ground and fielded a short leg 4 for 50 for Cameron Steele get a leg spinner on in April that's what I've always said and uh, Surrey 15 without loss in reply Warwickshire <laughs> 437 for one with Alex Davies approaching a double century and Rob Yates falling just nine runs short of his double ton. 4-3-7 for one in 88 overs. Code, bowls, Bancroft defends again on the bounce to short leg. Hampshire 278 for six against Lancashire with Tom Prest top scoring with 85. Fairly similar score in the match between Notts and Worcestershire where Joe Clark's made 100. Nottinghamshire 284 for six. Essex 396 for six. Dean Elgo made 120. And Matt Critchley approaching a ton. Code bowls, it's full. Bancroft drives, doesn't time it. And it's stopped by Code. Uh, there is no run. So 12 without loss are Gloucestershire. And I think once that board ticks over, that's half their work done for this evening. Yep, they've... Uh They've stuck in there, just like Yorkshire did, um, in the face of some good bowling, both Code and Fisher. They've produced some uh, good stuff so far, beaten the bat on a few occasions, but haven't managed to find that all-important breakthrough. I'm going to have to excuse myself to go off and do some more chatting to BBC Radio Leeds. Continue running down those Division 2 scores in a moment as Fisher bowls to Dent from the pavilion end and Dent leans forward and defends the ball to mid on Glamorgan are almost all out now at 235 for 9 and Alex Thompson has claimed 6 for 63 the off spinner so spin continues to be dangerous Kieran Carlson top scoring with 74 He's had a magnificent season last year here in Carlson, so to a good start on his home debut. This is short. Dent pulls it in the air. It's safe, and it's over the top, kicking on towards the boundary, but it won't get there. Good sliding effort from Milnes to pull it into Moriarty, and it will just be the two for Dent. I actually went a bit further than I thought it did. I, off the bat, I thought it was only just going to loop over the mid-wicket fielder, but it went a bit further than that. 14 without loss, and Shah Faisal is back alongside myself, Ed Seaborn. I think Dent got himself into a tangle with his feet. Just his hands literally bailed him out. He went away from that fielder. Not a confident stroke at all. 14 for no wicket. Three slips and a leg slip. Fisher bowls to Dent who defends into the ground and it's trickling back towards the stumps and it's gone into the stumps and the bail has come off. And Dent goes. It's a mode of dismissal that is quite a common one for Chris Dent because he does play the ball very softly it went straight down at his feet and backwards and he tried to kick it away with his left foot but not in enough time and there was enough force behind the ball that the bales were removed and Gloucestershire have lost a wicket this evening Dent departs for seven they are 14 for one they always say play with soft hands but on that occasion it was just too soft the ball ricocheted off his blade of the bat and it was just too quickly for him to react and save that ball from hitting the stumps. He literally watched the ball yeah. hit the stumps. The agonizing worst, worst way to go, mustn't it be, pretty much? So Dent goes 
And Gloucestershire lose a vital wicket this evening. They must make sure that they don't lose another one. 14 for one, still 312 runs behind Yorkshire. And Ollie Price strides to the middle. So two right-handers in now for Gloucestershire. I haven't seen a huge amount of that because of Shan Masood batting with Yorkshire's right-handers in the middle order. They have a lot of right-handers until you get right down to Moriarty. But because you had Shan Masood in there, it was basically a constant right-hand-left-hand partnership. Now, for the first time, Yorkshire can maybe really settle into their lines and lengths with Price joining Bancroft at the crease. But you'd have to say they bowled really, really beautifully to the left-hander. The typical, which we can easily now call Stuart Ro Broad strategy today with Warner, that angle in and seeming away. Yeah. They really executed it really well and made life difficult for Dent. Here's Fisher bowling the first ball to Ollie Price. And this is defended calmly enough out into the covers for no run. It's again a very important passage of play because Ollie Price is one of the main batters for Gloucestershire and like we discussed just before lunch in this stage as a batter you don't have a lot to gain but you have everything to lose yep. and that is the kind of pressure in Yorkshire are attacking four slips and a short cover catching as the sun breaks through again still six overs remaining after this one Fisher runs in and bowls to Price who drives on the bounce it's knocked down by Fisher it is follow through and there's no run England Lions call up this winter for Ollie Price went out to the UAE for a training camp and then took on India A at that humongous stadium in Ahmedabad he said it was as you'd imagine a, an incredible experience playing there not a huge amount of people but I can't remember how many hundred steps it's supposed to be from the middle back to the dressing room Fisher in and bowls. This is turned into the onside by Ollie Price. He won't get off the mark, though. Not quite wide enough of mid on. And that's the end of the over. The first successful over for Yorkshire with Fisher breaking through to remove Dent for seven. Gloucestershire 14 for one after eight overs. But yeah, I mean, what, what an experience to get oh. to go out. And this is, I think, one of the things which has come out recently in that there need to be more Lions tours, the ECB have decided. So getting the opportunity to play against what is still going to be a fantastic India A side for Ollie Price and his playing of spin is something which has been one of his strengths from pretty much from the off but just the chance to hone that craft in the subcontinent and you know you you, you have to play spin differently there don't you exactly oh there's a, an appeal I think for bat first, it was a close strangling, strangle there from Cameron Bancroft. But yeah, playing spin subcontinent way is completely different. Like in my stay here in England, I, I was involved in some coaching and I just found that the way the youngsters approached playing spin was completely different to the way we were raised, obviously, me being in Pakistan, pretty close to the way we do things in India as we watch the next delivery once again great areas there this is a real test this little session there's no freebies everything seems to be on the money and they're making them play but yeah coming back to that topic of playing spin and now you see England players playing spin the way they play spin they're not scared to just leave their stumps open they get their feet out of the way and that way even if it's quite full they still are able to bring the hands down quickly. Beautiful delivery again there. Good length, good line, a little bit of movement. That new ball has been used properly here by Yorkshire. He's gradually dragged him across the crease, hasn't he? Bancroft's playing at that one, and that is what got him into trouble last time he was in an Australia shirt. He nicked off to the likes of Anderson and Broad quite a bit in that. 1718 Ashes series and just that tendency to get dragged across a bit and if it's going to be nipping about as it is at the moment then you're going to end up playing at balls that you don't have to play at Sean Masood has come into the slip cordon three slips and a slightly wider fourth slip there's a leg slip and a short leg in on the attack 
our Yorkshire is this one another tentative prod there from Cameron Bancroft Yorkshire are really giving it a good go and look at Sean Masood and I actually do like that short leg fielder because I think for some reason that has gone out of fashion but the ball jagging around and they're hitting good areas and Sean Masood like I said he spent a lot of time there has been that spongy kind of bounce they're really banking on that fielder as well alongside the slip cordon which has been even strengthened now next ball once again a tentative push this time away from the body dragging him further out and you could tell that Cameron Bancroft is not comfortable yeah another one which was well wide of off stump in the end but having bowled that straighter one to him he's yeah he's just not quite sure whether it's going in with the angle or moving away and he's just losing that off stump at the moment and he's got to find a way to battle through it for Gloucestershire's sake battle it is for Bancroft at this one is slightly straighter a bit closer to him and he was able to play it back not confidently just enough to negotiate that court over and he'll be pretty happy about things that he wouldn't have to take strike in the next over to begin with really good from Yorkshire 14 for one Gloucestershire really nervy and tentative closing to the day and if they got unscathed I think they would have done pretty well and come back tomorrow in pursuit of that 326 yeah and come back tomorrow yes you'll have the potentially first thing moisture to negotiate but the ball will be a little bit older as well so yeah you'd rather from Gloucestershire's perspective they hadn't lost a wicket at all but yeah if they if they could just be the one down then you know, you'd, you'd certainly feel as though it would still be a confident team talk at the end of the day here comes Fisher bowling to Price who defends with an angled bat towards backward point but he's not able to get off the mark and the stranglehold continues. As I say, Bancroft, 4 off 27, he's not somebody that is bothered about being aesthetically pleasing. He's somebody who does grit out his runs. And that's exactly what they need him to do in this situation. And for Ollie Price, it's just another good test in his young career. It's a quality attack. Here's Fisher bowling for defence from... Price looking robust as he plays the ball towards wide mid off. There is no run. Once again, with the angled bat, just pretty similar to the way Ken Williamson would be playing, just almost behind him. Mm. And that's exactly what Dent did. And on yes, that occasion. that's the thing, isn't it? Is that balance. I mean, you'll see Williamson whenever he does decide to get out, which isn't very often at all, but that is a way that you can get him. Maybe even in the World Cup final, I'm trying to think if he was out like that. This is left alone by Ollie Price as he lifts the bat out of the way. I, th I th seem to... I, well, maybe it wasn't the final, but I'm remembering Plunkett bowling to Williamson. Hard back of a length ball and it, it just went off his bottom edge and onto the stumps. Might might have been that World Cup final. But anyway, it's, it's, it's a tight rope that you walk trying to play the ball as late as possible but in general you'd like to hope that it will pay off more times than it will cost you and unfortunately for Dent it's cost him in this innings Fisher runs in and bowls and that's looped up in the air from Price is that off glove or is that off leading edge it sounded a bit thuddy like it was potentially glove they were screaming and yelping around for Fisher to try and launch himself towards it I'm going to try and get another look here ourselves. Not sure. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I'm looking at it in about 360p and <laughs> I can't really see it. The way that they were interested led me to think that it might just have come off glove. Perhaps just a fraction of extra bounce there for Matthew Fisher. Here he comes once again to bowl to Price and a good leave outside the off stump on about fifth stump. Let's it go through to Tattersall. Yeah, that spongy bounce. I think they've got rid of that short leg fielder that I was talking about in the previous over. There was an example where Holly Price was into his stroke. It seems like a bit too soon. Yeah. He had the wits about him to just 
stop that bad flow from going through. Otherwise, he could have hit it straight back to the ball or inside edge onto the pad, looping anywhere close to the pitch. And you also wonder about the psychological effect of having that short leg in as well. Fisher in bowls, head over the ball from Price, plays a textbook defence out into the covers, ends the over, it's another maiden over, back-to-back -back maidens. So Yorkshire are at least making sure that Gloucestershire do not get away from them on the scoreboard. And after 10 overs, Gloucestershire have managed 14 runs. One wicket down though, probably being the most key number on the board at the moment, along with four overs remaining. Exactly like Doji was saying earlier, time at this stage is not of any consequences, especially like the last four overs. Survival is the order of the day. They can come back tomorrow morning, have a whole day, and I think it, and I'm pretty sure it will be another testing session. Yep. So they have to keep, keep goods in place for that loss that they might be, and then they can recover later. So if they lose another wicket here, their stock will be thin starting off this m tomorrow morning. And you've got to rest your bowlers as well. You've got to bat for long enough that they get a good rest. Court starts off a fresh over. Bancroft. See that Bancroft, his feet are not like in textbook style, but this is where he's comfortable. And this is where his troubles can be as well, because his foot looks like just goes right across his off stump. And that's where sometimes he, his hands go wider and plays at the deliveries that he doesn't need to. Four slip. Five slips rather. They're pretty close tied together as this one is fuller. Bancroft punches it to mid on. Fisher stops the ball and no run. Yeah, and you know we can well, I can say all I like about the fact that he doesn't mind gritting his runs out but if he's not scoring any runs at all even in this situation you have to feel there's got to be a part of him that is getting itchy to at least score a run just try and find a single somewhere maybe between point and cover or something like that coach next delivery walked right across Cameron Bancroft there's a big shot look at Tarasol he was jumping up and down I think he saw Bancroft come right across Hit him on the outside of his pad, but because of that movement that Bancroft did, I think he got in line. Must have been very, very close. Close. Somebody's got their finger up next to me. I'm sure you can <laughs> imagine who might. <laughs> yeah, it was dangerous, wasn't it? it? It just it felt as though it was one of those where the finger might have gone up. Code once again to Bancroft. This time he just pushes out in front a little bit almost a leading edge to backward point this is good stuff from Yorkshire really really testing and like you were just mentioning in club cricket we always do shout every now and then when we see some batters in this kind of mode that where's the next run coming from and that's exactly what well I'm like the kind of player it, he is I don't think Bancroft will be thinking that way but generally gets frustrating if you can't move the scoreboard too much. Bancroft once again gets right across, gets his head on the wrong side of the ball, but his bat came through quickly enough. Yeah, That's I mean, exactly shadow practicing, trying to keep his head <laughs> in line. <laughs> yeah, Code will be thinking, you know, you, you, you can target bowling at middle and leg. There's nothing wrong with that. If you think you might get somebody out that way, runs in once again that's why they have that leg slip in place as well and it has been then there since the beginning another very very testing over has come to an end Bancroft survives only just 14 for one yes only just I think he's very much right so you wonder now if Codes bowled six as sturdy as he is he might even bowl through to the end. He's got his tail up. Code is somebody who can bowl long spells. And he might just say, you're not getting the ball out of my hand. I can give you eight straight. Are we playing 14 overs or 16? 14, sorry. Yes, So just straight. the one over from that top end, yeah. and I'm sure he'll bowl it. You're not going to take that ball away from his no. hand, the way uh, he's I mean, bowling. You'd have had to have gone maybe at four or something. But the way that these openers have bowled, 
You wouldn't necessarily, well certainly code anyway. We can understand why Fish is coming out of the attack because he's somebody that has had too many injuries for his liking in his young career. Although he always seems to manage to be fit for Gloucestershire. <laughs> it's amazing that. He played two games I think in the 2022 season. They were both against Gloucestershire. But it's Matt Milnes into the attack, fresh off his half century. This is edged by Ollie Price in front of the cordon. It's going down towards third man. They're coming back for a second run. This is going to be fairly tight if the fielder could actually pick the ball up. <laughs> but he didn't. And they get back for two. It's not a long boundary down there. And Price just looked as though he, he turned and just assumed it was going to be two because it was fairly close to the boundary. But it's not a long boundary. Anyway, he's underway with two and the first runs for quite some time 16 for one Milnes bowls to Price who plays defensively and late again towards the gully it's fielded that fourth slip you're talking about the dismissals playing late and I can remember a high profile one and that was Barbara Azam in the World Cup against India at um, that Ahmedabad yes, stadium he's another one isn't he who, who gets yeah, who that shallow bat angle and yeah. you can get him played on like that that triggered a huge collapse and Pakistan slid it from a very good position. And that's a big game, you know, India-Pakistan World Cup. 120,000 people big. watching. Yeah. Here's Milnes in and bowls, wide of off stump. No stroke from Price. There it goes to Tattersall behind the stumps. Yes, I mean, you could probably do nothing in the rest of your entire career, but if you win a game for Pakistan against India particularly so I don't know why is it more so that way round somehow than the other way round perhaps not probably isn't is it do nothing in the rest of your career you will always be known for that I mean the, the games are so few and far yeah. between that the significance has increased in recent times Milnes runs in bowls Price tries to flick that one off his pad and it's got it's got stuck in his pad no it's down in front of him thought for a moment that, that was one of those ones that had lodged in the pad where you used to be able to try and take a catch as a fielder but not anymore dead ball yep dead ball as soon as it lodges into those pads speaking of lodging in pads it's how ollie price got his maiden first class wicket at cheltenham year before last james bracy trapped the ball between <laughs> his two pads and reached down and plucked it out of there as Milnes beats the edge of Price this time with an away mover. Through it goes to Tattersall by hook or by crook. Gloucestershire have got to try and negotiate these deliveries. Yeah, just counting down the deliveries, I guess. But at the beginning of the over, I was going to make a comment that out of the two, well, he prices look more secure, but a couple of very <laughs> nervy prods in this now, over. I'll just hold on to that for now. Yeah, Milnes has come into the attack. No looseners. He's just picked up right where Fisher had left off from this pavilion end. It's a fielder being sent back at deep square now, deep forward square, they've decided on. So two back on the leg side with him and long leg. Milnes is in to bowl, and that's going to allow Price to get a run as it squeezes off the inner half of the bat towards where a square leg would have been. And it means that... Price will keep the strike. He's got three. Bancroft's got four. 17 for one are Gloucestershire. And there are two overs left. You'd have to say it's a gorgeous evening. It's been a beautiful day. And we've seen some great cricket all day today. And the excitement is still there right till the end. There's a lot of action in those 12 deliveries I can tell you that the importance of those 12 deliveries is immense and Yorkshire are just looking for one more breakthrough as Oli Price settles in just walks just a little step down the pitch trying to play around with the length of Ben Code it was something he developed the confidence to do more as he grew into things last year got 500s including his maiden first class turn against Yorkshire at Headingley last year 500s across the championship and the one day cup and it was just it was noticeable almost as if he you, know, you could see him effectively coming out of his shell and coming out of his crease he was happy to walk at 
the bowlers more and particularly play that sort of bottom-handed flick through mid-wicket. It was a shot that brought him a lot of runs. But Yorkshire are now going to stop him from doing that because Tattersall's <laughs> reached for the helmet. I was going to say he's not going to do any more. Tattersall's up to the stumps. Need bit of grab on that one as this one was way outside the off stump. Easy leave there for Ollie Price. Yeah, right on the button, Yorkshire. You'd have to say their preparation in that innings break was meticulous. No looseners. They look sharp. Coach Otis Gibson has really got them ready for the little session. I mean, no blemishes. Yep. And I suppose in some ways understandable in that it was the bowlers themselves who took the confidence from their batting innings. Is Nice punch down the ground. Found the middle of the bat. Will be hauled inside the fence. Just a couple of runs, but a very, very confident push. Anytime you hit the ball straight down the ground with the full face of the bat, as a batter, you just get a lot of confidence from that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not generally a scoring area that you see a lot of runs in at Bristol because it is quite slow. You tend to see a lot of runs square of the wicket. So if you're driving the ball straight on this, then that is a good sign. Immaculate lines and lengths once again from Code. But Price, having done that movement, got the wicketkeeper up to the stumps, but now he's going back. A little bit of mind games going on between the fielding side and the batter. I mean, this is, as a, as a neutral, uh, it has been a wonderful spectacle today. The battle has been very, very exciting. Once again, he does the same as the keeper goes back, just takes that little step down the wicket. And what is Tertzal going to do? Pick up the helmet again and go up to the <laughs> sums again. <laughs> yeah, back and forth and back and forth he goes. And it's sort of the question of sometimes you actually do want the batter walking, especially if there's somebody who's quite fidgety. You kind of think actually you would, you would rather them do those exaggerated sort of movements. Cod's next delivery knocked him over. The front foot defensive shot wasn't good enough. And the stumps have been rattled. The intense pressure has worked finally. And Ollie Price has to walk back. This is a huge wicket. It is. And who knows, maybe it was the movement of Tattersall just leaving him a bit more leaden-footed than he might have been trapped in his crease. And it has snuck through, and that is a huge moment, as you say. Somebody who had such a terrific finish to last year in Price. It's beaten him on the outside edge. It's just taken that off stump. Pretty much the perfect seam as delivery from Ben Code. And that was his last ball of the day. And now Gloucestershire are going to send out a night watchman as Josh Shaw comes to the middle. However... He's not going to be on strike because Milnes is going to bowl the last over and there's a chance that the night watchman could come out there and not face a ball. Yeah, a bit bizarre to be honest. But really credit to Ben Code for that delivery. He went wide at the crease and made Ollie Price think that that ball was coming in. He covered his stump, so he thought, on the inside. But that ball beat the outside edge and knocked the off stump back. Terrific piece of bowling. And a just reward because he's bowled a seven over spell. And yeah. right at the end of that, he got his reward. Seven overs, four maidens, one for ten. And not a bad ball in there that I can remember, that is for sure. Dent, Dent flicked his first ball fine. That was probably it, really. It was the one delivery he allowed Gloucestershire to play easily and get runs it's been the only boundary so far Bancroft doesn't have one and it's him on strike for what will be the final over of what has been a pretty captivating day's cricket try and recap it for you once this over or less is done but it has been a great watch and watched by a good crowd in the sunshine at Bristol as <laughs> Milnes was running into bowl but then Shan Masood has decided that he might not quite have his fielders in the position that he wants them in. There were three slips, but now they've decided to go for four of them. And they're going to leave a gap at point. 
perhaps almost even trying to tempt Bancroft into taking the single and letting Shaw face the rest of it. Here's Milnes bowling to Bancroft, and this is pushed to the one fielder saving the single in front of Square on the offside. So there's no run. Also, they, you've seen Bancroft just feeling for the ball outside the off stump, seeing that gap, he may just get tempted into playing and mm, get exactly. edging it to the, that court, and which is very strong. At this stage of the day, Yorkshire doesn't, meet, doesn't mind conceding a couple of boundaries if it has to be, but just to get him playing outside the off stump and feel tempted, that's what they want. Milnes runs into ball to Bancroft. It's inside edge onto pad, and Bancroft is going to get off strike. So somehow Gloucestershire have got what they would want. They've got Bancroft up the other end. He is now, surely, unless we see some harebrained piece of cricket that you do sometimes see in these situations, just going to lean on that bat and not move because his work for the evening should be done. Five from 37 deliveries, but he will be there tomorrow. You feel that he survived, but by the skin of his teeth, once again, he was falling over. Clever piece of bowling, having got four slips. He went for the straight delivery, full straight, attacking the stumps. Nearly caught him off guard. Milnes bowls to the night watchman, Shaw, who's playing about as good a defensive <laughs> shot as we've seen anybody <laughs> play, certainly in this inning so far. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Plays it out towards extra cover. I mean, he's certainly somebody who, Josh Shaw, as, as we mentioned, he falls very much into the bracket of somebody who is more than handy with the bat. And I think he's probably overall got better with the bat as his Gloucestershire career has gone on. He's still got three deliveries left to face tonight though. Here's the first of them and this is nudged by Shaw and that will go down for just the innings second boundary down to the vacant third area and Shaw gets off the mark pretty deliberate and it's 24 for two. It the edge cam but there was slightly funny run up there from Milne because he started to run straight and then went zigzag a little bit, trying to just distract Shaw. But to his credit, he watched the ball all the way onto his bat and just played with soft hands, although it was an edge, but it was pretty controlled, went all along the ground. And one more ball ticked down for the evening. Two left. Of course, if a wicket falls this ball, it'll be the end of the day anyway. Milnes runs in and bowls a bumper, it's down the leg side, it's just past the diving Tattersall between the keeper and the leg slip and four fortuitous runs for Gloucestershire, fended off down the leg side, he didn't see that delivery coming from Milnes and he's got away with it somehow, Tattersall just needed to be a couple of inches taller, the wingspan just couldn't get him there, it's 28 for two. Action and drama right Till the end, that was very, very close and Tattersall moved really quickly before he pulled the dive out. He did take a step to his left, which is great keeping because he used his feet and then he dived just slightly out of his reach. Last ball of the day, Milnes bowls to Shaw, inside edged into the leg side for some reason. <laughs> they don't take a single, but it doesn't matter a whole lot because the important thing from Gloucestershire's point of view, no dramas off the last delivery but there was plenty of drama in the day as a whole but particularly in those 14 overs Gloucestershire have lost two wickets I think that's probably what Yorkshire would have been aiming for really get rid of a couple of Gloucestershire batters tonight attack them tomorrow morning Dent bowled by Fisher for seven Ollie Price bowled by Code for five Bancroft still there on five crucially for Gloucestershire Josh Shaw the night watchman will resume his innings on eight and Gloucestershire Trail Yorkshire by 298 runs with eight wickets remaining. It's been a marvellous day's cricket, it really has. We've seen a fantastic 100 from Yorkshire's captain Shan Massoud, 140 from 184 deliveries earlier. He was given a life on 127, but the century itself was pretty flawless. And he was the one man in that Yorkshire star-studded top order that managed to make some serious dents in the Gloucestershire bowling attack because for Zaman Akhtar in particular this is a real day to remember his first first class five foot finished with five for 89 including the wickets of Joe Root trapped fair and square LBW and then Harry Brook who pulled one up in the air 
But what a day that is for him. Gloucestershire, they had their moments where they seemed to lose it a bit in the field. Overall, though, the morning session especially was a, a terrific team session for them. Yorkshire were 90 for five at lunch. And then things just got away from Gloucestershire in the afternoon session. Tattersall with the counter-attack. Shan Masood with the 100. And Gloucestershire dropped three catches. They could have had Yorkshire 190 for seven. As it is, they've gone on to make 326. And it's very much all to play for tomorrow. Sum up your experiences of your finally your first day's county championship cricket on commentary i couldn't have asked for a better day absolutely enthralling beautiful weather very good crowd as well great atmosphere in the ground thoroughly enjoyed calling this game and it just lived up to the billing right till the end no shortage of drama and thrill there some high quality skill on display as well on a very very good pitch that offered a little bit of something for everyone didn't see much spin that were trying to spin, but the batters, when they got settled, they could play their strokes. We saw movement all the way till the end for the bowlers. An absolutely enthralling spectacle, and it's just day one, so plenty yeah. more to come tomorrow. And yeah, we can't wait for it. Shah Faisal, Jonathan Doidge, myself, Ed Seaborn, will be back with you tomorrow morning, bright and early for the 11 o'clock start. Doidge and myself will go off and get some reaction to this opening day in a moment but thank you very much for your company on this opening day the bare bones are that Yorkshire were bowled out for 326 Gloucestershire are 28 for 2 in reply trailing by 298 runs thanks for your company again we'll speak to you again tomorrow <laughs>